What's up to the Shark Tank? What up to the Shark Tank? What up? What's up? Appreciate everybody coming out, hanging out with us on this Talk Shit Tuesday. Big shout out to my man. ODG Bulldogs in the house. Stepping in early tonight. I was checking y'all, fam. My man, Mr. Vernon Dash is in the house. What up, fam? Yo, yo, my man. Fat Farm Ray in the house. What up, fam? My man, Dreadlocks in the house. What up, fam? My man, the one and only. Mr. Dickie Foster's in the house. What up, fam? Yo, 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 Benny. Yo, Benny. What up, fam? My man representing Elevated Kills in the house. What up, fam? The one, the only, Mr. William Torres in the house. What up, fam? The one and only, my man, the professor, Richard Garcia, hanging out in the Shark Tank. We will be special guests tonight as we talk Bulldogs. House. 
big shout out to my bra hanging out. But before you to stop by tonight too there, fam, my man, walk them down, ram, big steppings in the house with a bam. Showing your love, fam. To my man, Styles, Kennels in the house with a bang.
Shout out to Gully 1927. What up, fam? Yo, Brian! Brian! What up, fam? Big shout out to Black Heart Kennels in the house. What up, fam? Shout out to my man, Mr. Jason. Ghost is in the house. What up, fam? All right, now let's see all my sharks out there. Y'all don't forget to hit them like buttons. Y'all don't forget to hit them like buttons. Last time I checked the super chat buttons and the super sticker buttons are working. Appreciate everybody hanging out with us tonight on this Talk Shit Tuesday.
big shout out to my man, Mr. Harry Hayes in the house. What up? Bam! Yo, yo, so low, but connected. Kittle's in the house. What up, fam? My man, Richard James. What up, fam? My man, Yorok, so rock in the house. What up, fam? Shout out to my peep styles. Kittle's in the house. What up, fam? My man Cash Mirigotti in the house, what up, fam? To my man, Reckless for Shizzo in the house. What up, fam? Everybody showing up tonight for this talk shit Tuesday. Big shout out to the Shark Tank. What up, bam? Y'all don't forget to hit them like buttons. Don't forget to hit them like buttons for all my peeps on the back street. Welcome to the show. Appreciate y'all showing up. Don't forget to hit that like button while you're hanging out. Don't forget to participate in that poll. Thank you.
Shout out to my man, Old Man's in the house. What up, fam? My man, Mr. Larry Wallace in the house. What up, fam? My man, Jay Jones in the hills. What up, fam? Shout out to my man, Andre, what up, fam? What's up? What up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Talk Shit Tuesday Night Show. Appreciate everybody showing up. Yeah, look here. Don't forget to hit them like buttons. Don't forget to hit them like buttons. If you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, Checking out the poll. I know there's a lot of people who don't know what we're going to be talking about as far as the poll is concerned, but that's a good thing about it. Because that's why I put that down there. If you don't know, it's even better. Because, you know, without the don't knows, you've been answering to something that you really don't have any idea of what the, the poll question was really about because you just don't know. That's why I put it there. So that keeps everybody honest, you know what I'm saying? But don't let that uh, prevent you from taking the poll because if you know, you, you know. If you don't know, it's still okay. 
One of the big things I wanted to do before we started the show tonight is give a big shout out again to all the people in the Shark Tank. You know, I'm a Shark Tank people. Again, I always... Why do I hear that out there? You know, when I, cause you know, the Shark Tank is what is makes this show. I always wanted to make sure that I always kept them as part of the show because they really are. There's so much information. If you're just really paying attention to what's going on in the in the chat, you know, you'll notice that there's a lot of information that's in there. And it coincides with what we're talking about main you know, most of the time that you know, on the show. And you also see a lot of debates going on in the Shark Tank. And that's another good thing about it because it's okay to agree to disagree here. Everybody's not on the same level. Everybody doesn't know the same thing. Everybody has their own opinion. And that's the sole purpose of representing the Shark Tank because they use that to inform and educate not just the people out there watching on the back street, but all the other viewers who happen to come in and happen to pay attention to what's going on in the Shark Tank, they get a lot of things that they might have been thinking about and not knowing or see things that they didn't know pop up in the Shark Tank that wasn't actually bought up out here live on the show. That's why tonight, you know, I wanted to start that off by, you know, giving my shout out to everybody who represents in the Shark Tank because, again, without them, I don't know where the show would be. Because to me, they make the show better. That's why I am always going to represent them for what they are. That's a tank full of bull sharks, and they do bite, you know. But there's a lot of knowledge, and it's actually very educational for viewers, new and old. So, big shout out to you fellas out there. A thing that I want to talk about is... Uh, the pig picking for all those who's gonna try to show up and be there. You know what I mean? We're gonna be there. We're gonna try to you know Get a chance to get around and see some of a lot of y'all faces. So y'all know us So if y'all see us, you know make it a point to get to us so we can find you know so we can represent you and Put some faces to some of these people that come and enjoy our show Big shout out to my man, Solo Butt Kennels coming in, kicking the dough down with a five piece. Appreciate the love, fam. He's coming right in. Let's do his piece. Like, like he paying his tithes and shit. He didn't ask no questions or nothing. That's just a brother doing it from their heart. Appreciate the love, fam. Yeah, but I wanted everybody to know that, you know, find us, see us, come up, because we're trying to get as many people as we can, they all get together so we can have our mem memorabilia photo with a lot of the Shark Tank members, a lot of the old vets, a lot of the people who just show up. You know, that's an event that, you know, you want to be able to check off your bucket list. You know what I'm saying? And it'd just be an honor for us to just meet a whole lot of different people on that special day. Because, again... Who knows if we ever be around long enough to even be able to enjoy one. So that's why you have to take advantage of these opportunities as much as you can. I mean, especially at our age and in our situation, that if we hadn't probably been in these type of situations, we wouldn't probably be doing it. You know what I mean? But considering that we're doing what we're doing now, it kind of pushes you toward that. You know, try to suck it all up as much as of it as you can while you still got a chance to do it. So we take them full advantage of our opportunity just to get out there and hang out with some of our people, some the big, you know, the fraternity, and just do what we do. And I know I see my brother out there in the chat. I'm going to see if I can get him on right quick here because let me see if I can get him in here right quick. Let me see here. Ram. Let's see here. Hold on one second, fellas. Uh, 
Mm. Big shout out to my man Green Team in the house. What up, fam? My man Dirt the Felon in the house. What's up, fam? I wanted to see if I can get my brother, brother, well, Ram, if you're out there, man, get a chance, man, give me a call, man, call in, man, need to get you on it, get you out here, go over things, because it was a funny thing, just to give y'all a little small insight, back in the day, we used to have us a little record company, and a production company, we used to just actually produce music, and a lot of shows, promote shows, a lot of shows. And we had so much fun back in the day doing that. We was um, actually with Jive Records at the time, <clears throat> hanging out with E-40 and the entire clique. Short, Spice, just to give you a couple names, name dropping, Cube. You know, and that was just another thing that we was doing back in the day. And I had an opportunity of meeting the young Ram. Yeah, the young walking down ramp. I was in Vegas at the time, and I had a lot of my friends, you know, a couple of friends we had out in Vegas, and they was telling us about this young rapper. And they, it, being that we was there, they wanted us to meet him. Now, you know, at the time, I didn't know Ram as Ram. I knew him as DJ. Can't remember, but he was a DJ something. And... They was having a party. Now, this party wasn't like on a Saturday night. I think this party was like on a Wednesday and a Thursday. But my boys down there, they kept talking me into coming into this party. And because they wanted us to meet Ram. <clears throat> they was trying to get him, you know, it was Ram's friends. But they knew a Ram, but they also they knew us real well. So we get to the party. I get in there and they, they introduced me to this young guy. And this Ram, and the first thing that came out of his mouth, you know, jokingly, he was like, you know, I used to have two big herring bones, you know, like the, the Pac herring bones. And, uh, and then I had my little brother with me, uh, Snake, he was with me at the time. And <clears throat> he's a little short guy, almost like tattoo, but he's real short. And um, first thing Ram come out of his mouth was like, Who's a uh, wannabe Tupac dude and a tattoo over there? First time meeting him. You know, I laughs it off. But my boy that was with me, the little dude, he gets kind of upset with it. You know what I'm saying? And so they was go, like going back and forth. But Ram was like funny with it. And then, you know, we got a chance to enter, you know, this is who, the, this is who these guys is. The boys tell them this is who they is. And my man just ran, just, you know, he was DJing the party at the time, too. And he just turned the party out. I really, you know, I was amazed that this party was on a weekday and there was so many people around there. And we was having so much fun. I mean, kind of wound up having a little bit too much fun because, you know, one of two of my boys was with us. They ended up falling in love. You know, because Ram was the one who supplied the chicks. Ram went to calling chicks from everywhere. Y'all take care of my peeps, and, you know, doing all this. And my boys went to falling in love with these chicks going back and forth, carrying on. But it was just one of them things that I was sitting back and I was telling Mo. I said, Mo, you know, I seen Ram. I done, I done met Ram before. And he said, when? I said, when I was in Vegas. Remember that party I told you I was hanging out at? I think that was Ram. And Mo was like, you sure? I said, man, I'm pretty sure it was him because he still, he was talking shit back then. But I seen a picture of him and that, that is him. You know, because for him to be a young boy, he was still a big boy. You know what I mean? And I never forgot him because again, he, he, was, he was supposed to actually meet us at the studio on a Friday and, and his boys was mad because everybody was at the studio and Ram didn't show up. So when that happened, you know, it kind of like, we never got back in touch with him because they felt, you know, I felt like if he wanted to do something, you know, he would have been there. So we just kind of, you know, blew that situation off. But it was funny because I, I happened to ask Ram, I said, Ram, I don't know if you remember this, but you had a party in Vegas. 
and you know these people, these certain people, people, and he was like, yeah, them is my people. And I said, yeah, well, I was with them people that night at a party. Remember, I was the one that walked up to it, and you called me a Tupac wannabe, and called my little, you know, my little protege, little, little tattoo, and he was like, yeah, yeah I remember that, because him and my boy, they really got real, real close. Hold on one second, y'all. What up, what up? Hey, what's up, bro? I was trying to get you in because I wanted, you know, I told you I was going to bring up this story and shit because I was trying to let people know that at one point you was a real known rapper back in the day, wasn't you, man? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I had them bars and shit, man. Yeah. I ended up after I met you, you know, and ended up, uh, you know, getting in trouble and shit like that and, you know, getting out of trouble and starting the record label even after that. That was pretty successful, bro. So, you know, uh, the plan still went into play, just not on that day. Cause right. I told you I was supposed to meet you the next day, but dude was supposed to come grab a couple of them bowls and was taking all day. You know, nigga was chasing that money more than than you know a uh, record deal. <laughs> so I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, but it was funny because you know when I when I was telling them all, I remember when I seen your face and I was like, I know that guy right there. And then when I, me and you talked about it, I said, you had, do you remember that night? Because I remember you telling me, you know, who this Tupac wannabe dude? First time we met each other. And you yeah. talked about my little dude. But you you and Snake wound up being real, real cool after yeah. that, that situation. Yeah, because was cool, man. That was a cool ass little nigga, man. Yeah, he was. He was, yeah. Y'all hit it off real tough because he, he always tried to get back with you as he was running back. Because, you know, he fell in love with that chick you hooked him up with that night. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shit tripped me out, man. I'm like, bro, what are you doing, man? These ain't the ones for that. Like, man, how these bitches outside? These fun girls, bro. Yeah, shit. Don't do that. Look, they was, look, they were fine as hell, but you know, he was from Carolina. He was really originally from Carolina. So, you know, he was already out there. You know, that 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 fast life was just like yeah, that. The West Coast living got him, boy. That West Coast got him hooked, and she had him hooked, man. But Hell yeah, I yeah, just, they were uh, there were some cool chicks too. Man. Yes, they was. You know, you they were some fine ass women. But I would just oh. wanted to get that out there because again, it's a small world, and it's funny that for me to run into you at your young age when you was totally doing something totally different and you were still talented because again, your people brought me to you, and they was one of the reasons I was at the party anyway. So it was yeah, hell yeah. to hook up and, and realize I'm still running around with the same brother all these years later. That's yeah, that shit was crazy, bro, because I had forgotten all about it till you brought it up. Dude. I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I remember that shit like it was yesterday, man. Like, Wild ass was, party. Middle of the week party. Like, it shouldn't have yeah. been no party that time. That's what <laughs> I was that saying. Day, that bitch was jumping. I think I'm up with like on a Wednesday or Thursday night. It had no business being that many people hanging out on the middle of the damn weekday, but that party was something else. And, uh, yeah, I used to always throw them cracking ass parties like yeah. that. Like, most people be thinking I'm just an old mean ass nigga running around with the high eat ass face all day. Well, I'm, I like to have fun, man. And the lady, ladies love the nigga, so that's always there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, you was, um at that time, you know, we was running with um Jive Records at that time. Yep. Doing shows with Spice. I actually had uh, E40 and a whole entire clique Spice. One, Too Short, um, DJ Quick, DJ Quick DJ you know. Yeah, I had a whole lot of people on the roster. Uh, Cube in the Lynch Mob. Yeah, then we had we were doing shows with the Lynch Mob. That was later, though, remember? Yeah. Because he left L.A. and went up to New York, New York. or something. So it was a whole lot of people that we were already hooking up with, and it was just funny for me to be like, damn, if I had Ram had it got on, Man, we would have had a bomb at because all of them people we, we did, we that was the people that was on our tour. Yeah, and shit, that we had dogs too. Man. Oh my I didn't god, even really think about talking about dogs with y'all. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> if we said something about dogs, I probably would have pulled up and said, Fuck the balls, nigga. I'm right, dog man, tomorrow. right, because then you know, if you had a really got hooked in, because you know, everybody. Even while we was doing that, like when E40 and the boys the whole bought the whole click to Akron and they did our birthday party, you know, they we we hung out all night, so they got a chance to actually see the dogs. 
And Hell yeah. And they was just kicking and talking about, you know what I mean? Damn, what 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 don't y'all do? You know, cause we all getting drunk and you know, back then it wasn't nothing to have a quick roll going on, you know what I mean? And they just, exactly. you know, it was, just, it was just one of them fun moments. And to know that you was in the dog, I would have loved to have you with that click because, you know, that E-40 click and that lynch mob click, they was wild, wasn't they? If you know them personally, yeah. if you know yeah, them they personally, turn up. they turned they up, with me and they turned up. That, that gin and juice, whoo, Lord knows, man. They would have that shit on point. But yeah, hell yeah. they was one of the reasons why we got into traveling out that way you know and, and and getting a chance to meet some of the dogs out that way so i just wanted everybody to know that you know when you and ram you know that person that we know as ram to be the guy now he was a young ram with and very very talented because again remember for me not to know him and for people to bring us together and I actually spent a night at this big gigantic party with all these people and he was DJing and he was doing his rap thing. I was so disappointed that he didn't show up at the studio that Friday, man. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I was still wild, man. <laughs> and, and his boys was mad too because they were at the studio with me and they called him like 30 times, like, man, where are you? Leaving any messages and shit. But it's Hell funny. Yeah, I'm chasing that fucking yeah, bread. To think back <laughs> on there to be able to talk to this man now and know that he here we are, all these years later doing dogs. So we have so yeah. much in common, fellas. But we fucking made it, bro. Cause yes. the homies naked, acting them ain't naked, they, bro. That's right. The people that I'm talking about that introduced us together. The, the tragic thing behind that, this story is, five of my people really six, five from there and one of my homeboys, they all got murdered, you know, out there in California. They find all, all of all their bodies out in the San Fernando Valley. All yeah. of them have been murdered. And that was just one of them things that kind of like, it was a shocker because these are people that we knew personally and that we had fun with. And it was just and, one of them sad days. And they wasn't them type of people right. who deserved that, bro. They yeah. wasn't no grimy people. They no. were some straight up they street business dudes, you know? Straight business, about their business. And it was just a shocker. Bottom behind that right there. You know, just a shocker say. for that to actually happen and, and for it to turn out the way it did. Because, again, my boys didn't make it. You know, I had to get, a, get it through a phone call. And the funny thing about it, when I was talking to Ram, I was like, you know, I spoke on it at the bottom. I said, you know, my boy Ant and them, you know, they got, they were the ones caught up in that, that big murder thing that's still under investigation after all these years. And you say, yeah, that's Ant and them. They was my people. And I said, yeah, yeah, they didn't make it. They really didn't make it. Fight. So that's what I'm saying. Look at the, this is the reason I bring this up because life is like that. You know, life is one of them things that you don't know what you're going to be running into along the way. And see, these were good, good people. These, I mean, depending on the circles you run in, you run in with, you run into a lot of people. We have met a lot of people in our lifetime. So it's always good to be good with people because look at all these years later. I'm here meeting a guy in the dogs. The knew me, you know, that I knew long time ago that I wanted him on our record label. And it's funny that's how the crazy part that's the right crazy there, part man. right there. It's come all the way back around. And I, yeah, I'm sitting here talking circle. to him. And that's why circle. it's always good to do right by motherfuckers because you never know. Years, that was what, 20 years ago, bro? 20 what plus years mean? ago. 20 yeah, plus. Yeah, bro. So, you know, if motherfuckers would have been assholes or fuckboys back then, they would, the shit would have been coming back on the motherfucker now, bro. So would have. So. But motherfuckers being straight up and honorable men, motherfuckers meet each other 20 plus years down the road and it's still honoring amongst the men, bro. Still honor amongst the men, you know what I mean? And that's the glory of the conversation and why I wanted to have with y'all because we press networking so much, you know, about that fraternity thing getting together and get rid of all the bullshit and the riffraff and and bring 
the fraternity part, the loyalty part, the the networking, because the only time you're networking with anybody because of something that you want or something that you're looking for, you want to be able to get into that, that network of where them people at and you want everything to be real. This dog game is like that. It's a real serious situation and you not any and everybody deserve to play in it. So you got to always be careful of the company that you keep. You see, my boys got messed up out there because of one person and one person ruined that because if it don't be for the company of having him in that situation with them people who are good people, because the only reason I think they would have been with that guy is because he was already cool with Ram. He was They was already cool with us and they were just looking out for him. And in the process of looking out for him, he took them somewhere that they didn't have no place to be. Because outside of that, it was no reason why they should have been caught up in anything he was doing. But, you know. Exactly, because that wasn't bro thing at no, all. No. You know, he was out there just trying to live life and see something other than Carolina's that he grew up in. He yep. wasn't on that type of time, bro. Yep. So, this, this those are them little situations where things go bad all behind one person. Because the five other people who were good people, who wasn't dirty, they was just good businessmen actually investing in to Ram. Cause again, they didn't have to bring me to Ram. They were actually trying to get Ram on. You know, look, I, yep. they knew me. I knew them. They wanted him on. And I was with him all the way. But it's how Ram took care of us that night at the party, which made it kind of unforgettable. Because, again, out in Vegas... He was handing out women like he owned them and shit. <laughs> like I made you, bitch. <laughs> right, like I'm telling you, man, it was one of them funny things because there was so many women there and so many people. And, you know, two of my boys wound up falling in love. One ended up having a baby by one of them girls. I mean, it, it was just... Yeah, it moved out no, like, bro, yeah. I left. I went back home and came back. Like, <laughs> what you still doing out here? <laughs> like, oh, man, I don't know who I Bro, come on, man. I ended up leaving him there. I went on. I had to go. I had to get back home. I ended up leaving him there. He didn't get home for like three weeks later, and then come home, yeah. spend a week, and he was back. So I always look at you know that night there because all that whole situation happened behind me meeting this guy walking down, big stepping Ram, my brother to this day. You know, and it's just funny how that big circle comes back around for us to run in each other. I always thought that was a good story to, sh to share with y'all because he was a good person back then, even though he was young, he was a, still a good person. And he showed me one of the best times of my life. So when y'all hear the Ram of the day and y'all know, how can y'all not remember Ram? Ram's different than everybody who gets out here and talks, but this is the same guy that same mentality, that same attitude that I met that night, there was DJ and then there was rapping and there was handing out women like a wedding shit. <laughs> so Hell yeah, I'm always be that. Even when I get full gray around the face, I can only be me, bro. I love being myself. But, and, me, bro. and I just want them to know this is the real, this man is real. You know, the realest that I've, I've heard and seen over the years simply because he's still the same guy. You know, still the same guy to this day. And that's how we try to be. You know, after you get to a certain age, you know, there's really no reason to change. So. Hell no. Be comfortable with who you that's are. That's right. If you a genuinely good person, that's, be that. You, you got know? to be that. I'm trying to be what everybody else wants you to be or think you should be. Be who you are, man. And you'll be well paid for that in life, bro. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And it brings, I mean, and it's a lot that you can have and you can, the knowledge that you can gather in, because again, remember the people that I was hanging around with, it just in this, the music industry, because I come from a music industry family. So we had a lot, we could open up a lot of shortcuts through doors that the average person couldn't get through because our family members. But it was just one Hell of those... yeah. I think well, I probably would have had that same situation two years prior or after that, I probably would have been more on it. You yeah. know, which is at that time, I was moving that weed and robbing banks. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> that's what the homies were trying to get me off of. Like, bro, you tripping. Like, 
he got all this like then fuck that there's money in the till I'm on it yeah so that's what that's the funny part about it because they, they, the way they was calling him that you know that night that evening we were supposed to be at the damn um, studio it was almost like they had broke he had broke their hearts you know what I mean? It was yeah, like, they got locked up. Right. <laughs> he wasn't answering. He wasn't returning no calls. And then the same thing that they was they they feared that you know he done got in trouble after the you know that night he probably went and got wild and did something crazy and they was trying to explain it away, but um, it was just funny because kind of it didn't like turn me off. It just turned them off to a point to where you know they was upset. And we still dealt with yeah. the whole yeah, 840 bad, thing. But yeah, yeah, you know, nothing the little bread couldn't fix. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't even the bread, though. They didn't want to see me do better. That's, you know, that's, that was my opportunity. They're like, bro, you know, we don't want to see you go down the path. They yeah. knew I was going and ended up where I ended up at in the feds. Yeah. They're trying to, you know, stop all of that. And that's why I be thinking when you tell me about, you know, because you told me this story before I knew exactly, man, you had this conversation. I knew you was the bank robber. I knew you was a thug. I knew you was a, one of them, a crip or a blood. I know you wanted them. So it was just one of them things back then when I met him and the way he, you know, we started out with the conversation, the way him and Snake just became boys. And then Snake, you know, wind up going back and forth down there hanging out with this dude. It's just funny how life can change based on certain mistakes and decisions you make in life, you know? Because if I had got him out of this situation he was in, I think he still would have, you know, we would have been talking about Ram the DJ, the rapper. Uh, Ram the MC. Like, you know, oh, big yeah, ass MC. <laughs> I think you and our the guy that we had out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, another good guy, but couldn't get him out of the street life. I mean, actually had a couple of them. One of them died. Actually, one wound up going to jail and the other one wound up getting being murdered that was on our record. See, that's day. the downside that's that the downside. successful street dudes don't tell you is that you get in trouble too. Like, yeah. you know, the more successful you is at it, the more trouble you get into, man, you know? And it's, that is a very true statement because then, remember, these guys were young and we wasn't that much older, but we, we had advantages at that time. So it was just crazy to see after I've lived that life and I look back on it and think about, okay, if, how bigger we could have been if we had a had Ram on our label, how bigger we could have been if we had uh, my boy e EMC get his stuff right. My man, big shout out to FLOC, The Flock, Flavor Loose on Contact, Mike Jones, another one of my good boys that was on our label, wound up being murdered. I mean, these are things that kind of changed what we were doing at the time. And to see Ram going to jail behind some bank robbery shit, uh, E going to jail behind some drug shit, and then my boy Mike Jones being killed behind his street activity. Those are changes that even though the, all these guys were young fellas, there was an opportunity there for each one of them, including us. And because of the decisions we make and the things that we do, can change your whole entire life. And that's important. And the reason I bring that up because we bring this same conversation into the dogs, you know, because that dog fraternity is it's no different. You know, you bring the wrong person Thanks. in, you're going to have the same type of drama that we fell into in our music career. You know, yeah. now you're looking at, at one person can cause your dogs being stolen and maybe even your life or you winding up in jail. So it, that fraternity thing is real. Just like any other business that you do, be careful who you're around, you know, but at least bring something to the fraternity that's going to make it better. If you're going to be a part of something, be better at being a part of something. Uh, contribute to it, shit. Right. You know, come to the barbecue, at least bring some napkins, nigga, damn. Right. Or, or at least bring something to drink. Yeah. It don't spice something other than some lips. Right. <laughs> but whatever you do, don't bring trouble. And that's a yeah. key. 
You, you know, if you can't, ain't got nothing to bring, the last thing you want to do is bring trouble and your problems. Exactly. And don't nobody want them. Don't nobody want them in this fraternity at this point in time. In these these years of today, you definitely don't need it because it's already enough bullshit going on out there now. What we're trying to do is clean it up. Let's get back to the networking part of it because, again, it's all about bringing up, you know, saving the fraternity, saving the dogs, and making things better as we continuously grow. And, that's and have a little fun while you're doing it. You oh, yeah. That fun you is always in my... Fun oh, in yeah. Here. You know, again, all, and everything's in fun. You don't think I ain't had no fun when I was out there dealing with that music. I had the best time of my damn life. Yeah, living that rap life living is something that, else, boy. Something, <laughs> something totally different, different than these dogs. I mean, totally different, but again, it was a fun part of my life. Actually, more than half of my life has been between these dogs and that mu music industry. So along the way, we've had a chance to meet a lot of people and have a whole lot of damn fun. But that was just my way of opening up the show. You know, because I know y'all hear a lot about Ram, and Ram was always talking about dogs. But see, there used to be another part of Ram's life that he was very well known for for out there on the West Coast. You know, yeah, hell real yeah, long. Man. So. Really successful at it. Won awards with the shit all yeah. that, man. Yeah, that's that Ram. Yeah, that's that Ram right there. You know, for those who are out there on the West Coast, big shout out to, yeah, that's the same guy. Yeah, I knew that guy way back then. He fucked up a record deal, but again... That's all right. He's still a cool, yeah, he's still yeah. a cool brother. If I'd have known what I knew now, I would have been there bright and early. Yeah. Shit. And actually showed me one of the best times because that's one party, my first time actually being in Vegas. And it was my first time, you know, actually being out amongst the people. And then it was just a lot of other stars that was up in that party that night, too. It wasn't just yeah. me. It yeah, was a whole, yeah, it was some, uh, some, some well-knowns in that motherfucker. Yes, it was. Like we just kicking it with nah, nah, this nah, this wasn't no house party. This was a party, party, party. party. You know what I'm saying? Mansion <laughs> party. Like, well, you know, bitches around the pool, like, party, party shit. Yeah, it was like a rap video. Yeah, like, a, yeah, a all, like a, almost an all-nighter. Well, it was an all-nighter, because Snake didn't make it back until the next morning. So yeah, hell yeah. You and him you, you, you fell asleep on some bitches. Yeah, you and him without that whole damn night. So yeah, I I, I it was just one of them experiences that did, you know, and it's funny because I bring it to y'all's attention simply because, you know, it's a part of my life that I remember so well. And here's a guy that I just knew once I seen his face, I said I know that guy. But I was taking a chance by asking him, I know you you from Arkansas or one of them places out there, but I knew he wasn't from Vegas. But at that night, I met him. The people who put me in touch with him, they had him there in Vegas. And that's the reason yeah. he was at that party. Yeah. And I was meant to see him. For a long time. Yeah. Because it's not that far from Phoenix. It's just far yeah. and drive. Yep. Take one street and I'm there. <laughs> yep. Nate, you, was a, you was the reason why I was there. It was You know, you was actually hosting of the party. So... They just wanted me to see you in full go. And it was just amazing for me now to know that I know that guy right there, personally. The first time uh, he taught me. When you link up again, it's going to be the yeah, same. Call me a Tupac wannabe? Oh, my like God. Bootleg Tupac, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I grab that chain like this shit, I don't know. Like, oh, no, it's heavy. It, this is all my right. Yeah, he's all right, all right, all right, play it. real. Yeah, so uh, it, was, yeah. it was just funny. That's how we got into Introduced to each other, and, and from that point on, he went to women from everywhere, and but we end up having. Yeah, real, cool real nice time. My party is your party. Yeah, yeah. bitches for everybody. Let's go have fun, shit. Now, he talked that shit, but he was about that. He was about it, about that shit that night. Cause I told you, two of my boys wound up falling in love. Wound up even having a baby by the chick, and the other one. He didn't have a baby by her, but hell, he damn near moved in with her. And well, he got stuck, her. too. Yeah, and the dog part, they weren't even the bitches I was looking for for y'all. I had some better <laughs> bitches than that. But I, I ain't see him when I see him, y'all. <laughs> Yeah. I was going to put the bad, bad ones on y'all. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I was all right. I, you don't hear me complaining about what I had that night at all. You know, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm always keep it bright and light. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> but it's only the best for my guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you kept, it, you kept it good and you kept it real. 
But look, fellas. Yeah, hell yeah. And the party still go down like that. Just not as frequently. Exactly. When got kids and responsibilities now. Yeah. But I still be known to have a whole party week out of nowhere. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure you haven't changed a damn bit. I think you would get as you get older, you look back on them things. You know, we don't take the risks that we took back then nowhere close to having now. But it was just one of them things that I know how it is to have fun with that guy. You know what I mean? That guy showed me the best time that I ever had as far as being somewhere for the first time and having the ability to just make everybody happy. And actually, I was mad that he wasn't on my label. You know? Because again, everybody fell in love with what was your name back then? It was uh, DJ. Man, I'm trying to remember too, bro. I can't remember her name. I was calling her Cookie because he came from Oakland. Okay. And yeah, her and her homegirl, uh, two of them that came from Oakland. Then they got with two more uh, cute little bitches from Vegas. Okay. So I was put the two on you. I was trying to put the other two on y'all, though. The ones they got with that were from Vegas. They were way better. Yeah. Well, what was his rap name? What was your rap name, though? Trey G.K. Yeah, Trey, Trey G.K. Trey Game for Killers. Yeah, Trey G.K. That was his name. Highly upset he wasn't on the label, but he was, I mean, he it was one of the best times I've ever had that I can always look back on life because after all these years, I can still talk about that. Because even You can't never forget the whole situation because it, it's almost one of the reasons why we got out of the music industry because that was a big loss. You know, a lot of our friends, you know, that kind of like shook things up, kind of made you have to worry about how you moved around, you know, because... Yeah, were, and that shit that happened with Snake and Abney, like, yeah. it was some other people who, you know, right. they were connected to that wasn't feeling that shit, so... Right. You know, was out, you know, with the searchlight out looking for shit, and it's yeah. definitely get real, real bitchy. Yeah, shit got real, real hectic after that, you know, because, you know, that's, that was a lot of good people who didn't have no street life in them that wound up. Yeah, they didn't deserve that. They didn't deserve that. Right. Right. Like, Doc T, if you gonna rob them, you know, go right. ahead. Right, right. You ain't gotta fucking, you know, get out on them all the way, because they ain't even like that. They wouldn't even like that, right. And that's kind of one of those situations that, Hey Ram, I'm a send I'm gonna send since y'all talking about it. I told Mike don't let that fuck boy go down there by himself. <laughs> yeah, that girl. but yeah, you know yeah. grown man gonna be grown man. Yeah. You when a nigga grown, you can't tell him shit. Can't tell him <laughs> not. Chased behind that girl and got and then got them boys all down in that madness. So it was just it was just a sad moment because you know they were good people. And I tell you what, when 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 they first. When the first went down, I know this shit happened on when it actually happened. They left on a Friday and and shit went down on a Saturday morning. I had people knocking on my door up in Akron, Ohio from Vegas asking me, do you got somebody down in Vegas? I said, yeah. He said, you seen me? You heard from me? I said, no. Then he told me Aunt Nell was just found. And five of four of the people was found down there in in the Fernando Valley. San Fernando Valley, yeah, in the mountains and shit. Yep, it was like two days later they found found that fuck nigga. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I don't want to I don't want to call him you know God rest his soul, but he did some more foul shit man, and it cost a lot of people their lives. Cause you know, cause I told Mike don't let him go down there, man. I didn't trust him anyway. You know, that's still an unsolved mystery. Cause they still, I don't know if they yeah, ever it's found still be out. On TV. Yeah, they, they, if they ever found still be on what TV, led up to that whole mystery. situation, but it was just a sad moment for us. So yeah, yeah, that shit was rough, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. FBI scanning everybody. After everybody. That, they scanning everybody. But then these are things that happen in your life that you can always say, okay, I don't wish that on nobody, but. That's the bad, and it goes to show that it only take one person to hurt a whole lot of good, people. innocent people. One person. Because that's all it took. One yeah, person. One motherfucker who ain't know what they was doing. Yep. Mm -hmm. And got all of them, I mean, just took their friendship and you did them wrong and put them in a situation that they didn't have no business being in. And wound yeah, up getting them, them all killed. Yep, yep. yep. So, this is the things that I tried to explain 
on my point, because, you know, I'm always on the business side of things. I'm, I'm more the guy who wants to see the fraternity like this, you know. That's why I don't let Mo read the chats. You know, I don't let Mo really do too much when it comes to dealing with people anyway, because, you know, he's the bulldog all the time, you know. Not that he can't do business, but then he's not a really what I consider a, a people people person. Cause see, yeah, he ain't too user friendly. No, he ain't user friendly. Uh, no, it, well, it's easy for Mo to be for somebody to mistreat Mo because Mo is real kind. You know, he he's open and being a lot more kinder. I'm the one that's always sitting back, like, don't Mo's friends. They ain't my friends because when something go wrong. I don't, I don't have no. You're going to be the one at their house in the morning right, collecting that money. Right. I, I don't have, <laughs> you know, no remorse for whatever happened. I'm like, you got the good side. Now you're going to deal with the bad side type of situation. But it was, was always good to just, you know, we run in packs. So understanding when we try to get people to come together and, you know, first of all, stop the back and forth. First of all, you know, this is a dog community over here. This is not like this is a very big community. What we do here, and I know I go to a lot of chat rooms and I see a bunch of the same faces. You know, we all might talk shit, have our opinions and do different things, but it's almost the same people. And if you got that kind of camaraderie going on, I mean, that this, that bunch right there can create something big. But even in that bunch of people, you can't sit back and then fall off into the nonsense that came with the bullshit, you know, the shit that was going on, you know, people talking back and forth, people getting personal. We all together as a group should automatically be working to get rid of the bullshit. You know, this is why yeah. I don't look for bullshit in the shark tank because these sharks over here are supposed to bite and it, how am I going to be up here trying to preach to the choir if I can't even get my vicious ass sharks to deal with the bullshit? You know, that is one of the reasons why what we do here, we duplicate in other people's houses. If you don't do, let them get away with it here, then that means you won't go somewhere else and help entertain the bullshit because the bullshit ain't good for none of us. And even though this is upstairs, Again, that basement ain't closed to nobody. So don't act like the basement don't exist because it has existed all these years and it still ain't been closed. So just keep that part in mind. We do a lot of shit upstairs. We don't talk about the basement because the basement ain't meant to be talked about. If you wanted to get in the basement and you wanted to, you in the dog game, don't worry about it. You'll find your way down there just like everybody else did. We can talk about our basement days because guess what? We out of the business. We can talk about everything upstairs now. This 20 something plus years later. All we try to do is not try to promote dog fighting. What we're trying to promote is the unity of the fraternity that ain't never gonna go nowhere as long as the dogs are still exist and do right by the dogs. By living by the disclaimer, but taking care of the dogs and still being able to produce good dogs that means more than to us than anything that's why we do these shows i'm pretty sure that's why you still hang around and you talk on all these shows you get a chance don't you ram hell yeah because even though i'm off the field i still love the game man and I, I love to see it progress forward from the time i was in it until now that i could just talk about it and seeing different pedigrees and different kennels pop up with different names and you know, that shit is still good to see that motherfuckers is still pushing the same line, going hard for the dogs, man, and making sure that the next generation of dog men will have a good batch of dogs to select for them when it's their turn to get over that wall with one in between their legs, you know? That's right, because nothing like it when you climb over that wall, you'll see. It's a brand and new the closest thing to that is, is like, like yeah. you feel a bust or nothing. You know, just that anticipation you feel it, you feel it your stomach, like you come over that wall with your dog. If you got a crazy one, you got that towel over his head so he can't see you looking around like, oh, I'm going to kill these motherfuckers tonight. <laughs> That's the, you feel like fucking king of the world, bro. Well, I was going to let you say it because I didn't feel comfortable saying but that's why you, that's why you, you say what you say because you don't have no filter at all. <laughs> Hell no. Uh, no it is, it is. God damn it, raw sex. Butt naked, balls deep. 
I've been like that. I'm gonna die like that, bro. Real yeah. life, modern day cowboy. Well, look, fellas, look. I just wanted to open up the show, but tonight we're going to have our special guest on. Rami, I don't know if you want to stick around for this, but it's going to be a great show. I got my man. Yeah, I'm going to go back in the chat, OG, because I'm still at work. I was just waiting on this fucking radiator to cool off so I can pull it out. All right, bro. Here right quick. All right, you go ahead and do that, man. Appreciate you coming in. I just thought I wanted to bring it, bring you in. We gonna get that out the way because I wanted everybody to know I know this guy and he ain't changed a bit. I thought it was just a good story because again, we grown older men now. Remember, look at all the years in between that and all this shit that happened based off the people that we happen to be running in that circle. So, Big chaos chains right. could have been us, you know. We depending on the moves exactly, that we had been bro. making, it right? Any one of us in that car with them that day. Yes, sir. So just as a little reminder, you know, we have lived that. We have lived life, and that was just one of them situations that I just wanted to bring out there because the decisions we make in life do make a difference, including in these dogs, fellas. Yep. It's good. You ain't never lied, OG. So you know, just take that as a thought. And just take this experience that two OGs is sharing with y'all to go way, way back when we were young and the things that happened and we can still talk about it today and give RIP to our friends that we lost through a tragic mm -hmm. incident. So we made it, man. We did. You know, we, we made it. We still all that shit, man. All that's that just shit. one instance. You know that Ooh. we I'm pretty sure you had other problems. Oh my gosh. Like oh my gosh. Yeah. There's so many of them. But you know, that one there, me and you shared together. That's what brought us back all yeah, these exactly. years later. That's what brought us in joy and admiration and right. fun and the pain of losing some good motherfuckers. Like we share all of that, bro. All these years later to know that we you know, that we still have that part in common. And that's what the part I was bringing back, fellas. The fact that all these years later, we share more than just dogs in common, you know? And it still had the same yeah. aspiration and still love. And then it's the brotherhood, you know? It's yeah. always going to be that well, brotherhood. Shit, uh, thanks for having me up here, man. I appreciate that. It was glad we was able to... Uh, Tell that story too, you know? Oh yeah, brother. You know, always, I'm glad you came in and helped me because, you know, I pushed this, you know, I pushed that togetherness and that loyalty and the honor thing. You know, if I don't say nothing about the dogs, you know, y'all are going to hear me talking about that part, you know? Yeah. Always. That's you know? the easy part, yeah, you know? Yeah, for me, yeah, it is. That's why we got a shark tank. Everybody else might have chat room, but I got a goddamn shark tank. Now what? Uh, ha! Full of Google's ass uh, white <laughs> sharks with a rose full of sharp ass teeth. Damn right. Well, yeah, salute to everybody listening and shit, man. I got to get back to work because I'm trying to get my ass home. All right, bro. Appreciate the love, man. Already, OG. Salute. 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 Big Stepper. My man, Big Stepper. Coming in the house. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this show started here. I'm going to get J-Bo up in here and I'm going to get Schoolboy up in here and I'm going to turn this show over to Mo. Hey, Mo, you go ahead and take over this while I get the boys on the line. Okay. What's up, y'all? What's up, baby? All right, y'all. What's up, man? Thank y'all for coming out on this Tuesday night. Talk to you Tuesday. Yeah, man. We're going to be on some shit tonight here, y'all. Hold on, y'all. I got to grab my book here. got to grab my little bookie. Okay. Just to make sure. Damn, I got my drink, man. I got to listening to them, man. I was like, damn. Let me chill out. Dude. Yeah, that's crazy. See, I didn't, I didn't go down there. You know, I, I was at, I, I stayed in. Yeah, I gotta stay back. You know, stay back in the wind. You know, hey, had my little crew hanging out there, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm good. Hey, man, I really appreciate you doing this for me tonight. I'm finna get, uh, hang on yeah. a second. I'm gonna get on and we gonna go ahead and get this thing started. Yeah, we gonna get this thing started up, fellas. <laughs> 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 no, man. <laughs> like with that Louisiana talk, man, he just flexes me up because he's funny with it, man. I love that shit, though. <laughs> hey, y'all. Uh, how y'all doing out there, man? Just well, tell me, y'all. Y'all checking chains and stuff. We don't even talk about that shit no more. You know what I'm saying? But we need to, you know. 
I, I want to make sure. And then they got this little, uh, got to watch out, y'all. I heard that they got this, uh, this, this shit get going around. I forgot what it was, but yeah, y'all check your yards. Because my boy, he lost, he lost two dogs. Maybe it was just something on the yard or something. But yeah, he lost, he lost two dogs. And he don't know why, you know? The one looked like it was getting sick, and the other one just, you know, after the one got, okay, he was going down with something. The other one, he just dropped dead when the other, after shortly after oh, the other Lord. one died. So, Hell right, yeah, I'm just and, and they're and they, they they're over there in the Midwest, you know, in the Orleans, they're in the Cajun country. This happened in Cajun country. My nephew. Okay, I should have both of y'all on the so, line now. Timbo. Schoolboy. Okay. Here we okay, he got, he got my pics in. I got in. my peoples on the yeah, line. Yeah, man. Hold on. Yeah, I'm going to just let y'all know tonight. It, 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 it's, 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 uh, you know, it's not. It, 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 it's not. I can never see man It's not every day that you can get two legendary Professors all up in the house at one time, you know what I'm saying? You know, just, these are two saw that guys, you know, they can they can pop up on anybody's show and we will all go and sit down and watch. You know what I'm saying? And and, and it's a privilege and a pleasure. And you know, I just hit the I just hit the triple lottery with this. Me, schoolboy, and J Bo in the house on the line. Oh yeah, y'all gonna hear some shit. Now I can guarantee y'all. The things that y'all hear tonight, it's going to give you a lot of views on things because some of the things that we're going to be talking about, you know, because I'm going to be throwing curveballs. They don't know what I'm going to ask, you know, because they don't, they don't, they don't need a, they don't need a, a floor pan. You just ask them. So if y'all have any questions, y'all have any opinions, y'all know what to, y'all know what to do. Hit that chat. You know what I mean? Like Mike said, that super chat, you know, y'all want to get saw and heard and shit. This is a, this is, this would be a good time to, to get in there and, and really enjoy it. Hey, thanks for showing up there, J-Bo. Thanks for showing Screwboy. I'm going to just jump right in and, and, and really, and just really start off with some serious shit right here, you know, and it's going to be something real, a little easy, but a good one to talk about. Okay, the first thing I wanted to bring to, to it was... We hear these guys talking about lines of dogs, okay? I hear it a lot, but see, there's there's line of dogs. Now, what line are you talking about? Are you talking about the breeder's line or the bloodline? Can y'all help these people? Because I think they're getting things confused. See, you have a Boyle's line, right? But then you have, but see, that's a Boyle's dog. You have Boyle's line, but that's Ronnie Boyle's. You have Carver dogs. That's Maurice Carver. See, that's a total difference than a yellow dog, a Jocko dog, a Jeep dog. Am I correct? Gentlemen? Anybody? Who you have to hurt? Uh, I, I mean, well, J-Bo, you want to start it off? Uh, I, I know I don't think I deserve to start anything. Oh, you deserve yeah, man, come on now, man. Don't, 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 don't you dare try me, man, on that one, man. You already know. I try to ground after you finish talking. Okay, we can do that. Oh yeah. Okay, then. We... Oh, uh, okay. So I'm gonna tell you what, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get you warmed up, Professor. Can you help me with that? Because me and you talked about that. That's why I wrote it down, and I'm gonna make sure it was gonna be a topic for tonight. Yes, sir. Uh, generally, dogs are uh, bloodlines or families of dogs. They're either named after the breeder or they're named after a particular dog. And if they're named after a dog, then that bloodline should be influenced by, by that dog himself, his offspring, grandchildren, like that. But he should be where the focus is on the bloodline. You're trying to capture his traits, mm. right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And and if it's a breeder, that means if the breeder has developed a family of dogs, which that could be 
several different bloodlines. For example, kinds of dogs come from, they came from Tudor, Corvino, uh, Corcoran, Hemphill, about four or five different, you know, bloodlines, right? And the same with, with Carver, Boudreau, anybody else, that the bloodline is named after the breeder because they're infusing dogs, they're tightening them up, outcrossing them, using this, using that. So that would be a Carver dog. Whereas if it's a Bully Sun dog or a Bolio dog or a Mayday dog, then that particular dog's influence is, uh, you know, throughout the pedigree or throughout the offspring. But you're looking to capture those particular traits of that dog. What is that dog known for? And mm -hmm. hopefully you capture them and hopefully the dogs you use, that you're using him or her, uh, you know, are, are retain the traits you want. They're able to pass them on and on down the line through its offspring, grandchildren, like that. The original term for line breeding was when you, when you, uh, when you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When you concentrate on one individual, right? Now that, that's been expanded uh, throughout the years to mean you can concentrate on one individual or you concentrate on a particular bloodline. That's line breeding, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what you're doing when you're, when you're, when you call a bloodline, name it after a dog as opposed to a breeder who's putting different bloodlines together. And, and even that, you know, the breeder, what are his dogs known for? What, what do they do? How do they perform? What, what, even their structure, their, their, uh, temperament, you know, how they think, how they act, all that. So that's basically what the difference is. Like Bo Boyle's concentrated on Dirty Mary, but he used different bloodlines. Mm -hmm. to make his dogs. So, you know, if you call it a boiled dog, it should, it, originally it should come from him. And then somebody else that uses his stuff, they're boils bred dogs, you could say. Right. Because they weren't bred by him. He might not even have bred the way someone else did. Now, someone can take that, improve on it, or they can screw it up. It just depends on the particular person or, or person. Okay, so now J Bo, now where we at on that, right? Say, let's talk about guys in their breeding programs today. We have a lot of guys, you know, that they they're, they're adding things and they're trying to create that name. I don't know whether they're trying to create a particular type of dog or are they trying to create a particular kennel name. What do you think? I think I think they're trying to protect, they're, they're, they're trying to create that same thing. Cause half the people don't follow the blueprint that stuff that works. Everybody mm. want to say that's day shit. Yes, that's where we're at. Yes, sir. Yeah, everybody want to say that's day shit. Now nobody follow what works. Somebody can have twenty two chances over one dog, and they go breed it, go back and find somebody in a pedigree. Uh, six generations and bring to that so they can say that it's better than it, it's better than that. Mm -hmm. so everybody, they, everybody, they're chasing that fame now, and, you know. Everybody don't find a concept for the pedigrees no more. They won't, it won't be just as famous as, as the person that wrote the song. Thank you. That's right. That is very true. Go. There you go. Now, uh, uh, now, what, what, do, what mistakes do you do you hear when you hear these type of conversations? There aren't there's mistakes just being made, and then it's like they got the two mixed up. You cannot join the name, the kennel name, and the line, the blood together. I, I, I found out the best thing to do is don't tell them nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because if they like it, I love it. That means I ain't got to worry about them in my way. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I wish you everything that happened to me. Mm-hmm. And, and these dogs, I don't want to teach you out of anything. I want you to get all the curves. 
I want you to have all the ups and downs. I want you to meet all the people that you shouldn't mess with no more. I, I want you to get the whole experience. I want you to, to work on this to get your ass whooped. I want everything to happen to me to happen to you. So at, at the end, when I ask you a, a, a question, you can give me a true answer of this shit. And, and, and stop beating around the bush of, of trying to do something that somebody else hadn't done. Right. You know, everybody, everybody, they got, a, everybody think they got a new way of this shit. Yeah, you know, it, 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 it's two, three hundred years passed by. Somebody got a different remedy of doing the same fucking thing that somebody else did. It, that's gonna be better. It's never gonna be better. These dogs gonna stay the fucking same. It always gonna be the same. Only thing gonna change is the people that need dogs. Okay. Well said. Well said. Now look here, y'all. We y'all guys in there, y'all yard up because we're gonna get on the bus. Load your shit, your papers, your dogs. We're going to get on the bus. We're going to go back here to the past. So when we get back here to the past, I want you to get off the bus, get your dogs, and get on the yellow lines because we're going to go down there. We're going to get a little deeper into that shit too, okay? We're going to get a little deeper because we. I want to dab into that my damn self. They're so busy trying to come up with these names and, and, and having all this power. You want to be the next Carver or you want to have the next Jeep. You know what I'm saying? The one thing that y'all are doing that I don't like, and that is y'all ain't testing shit. They, they, they can't afford to test shit. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to be famous so bad, they don't want to look bad. They talk good. So when there's be so much talking, you know what I'm saying? The, the test is out the window. You know, we're seeing so many, I, I see so many pedigrees and I see so many programs. But what I don't see, I don't see what y'all saying. Y you know what I'm saying? So Jeep was a great dog, not because, you know, they was recording his matches. You know what I'm saying? Jeep became a great dog because we knew Jeep was being matched. He was in a, a, a historical fight. You know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of the dog, schoolboy. Been in a lot of historical, his dog's been in a lot of historical things. We know, you know why? Because they, we know he was matching his dogs. I know J-Bo was matching his dog because you go down there in Cajun country, guess what? You don't have to be in the journal in Cajun country to know who J-Bo is. Not at all. And you know, there's a lot of reasons why a lot of us didn't float around Cajun country. Goddamn, that Cajun country, I'm telling you, back in the day was a dangerous place. And you couldn't really keep up on the asses because, I mean, you had lockdown, Rudy. You had all some good, uh, they was bad enough. But the, we, we had kennels out there that wasn't going in the journal. They didn't report matches. You had to go into somebody like us, you know, to report the match because they ain't going to don't don't look for them to do it because they're not going to do it. You know, so that's a lot of that's a lot of ways that the Cajun country really got, you know, out there amongst the, the game in those books, because a lot of us that was dipping down into the Cajun country so was reporting some of those matches. You know, what I mean, and, and, then, and, and then we had Livingston Paris, too. And then ain't none of them people are recording that reports. And they had one man out there had Four or five grand champions. That's right. Go ahead and elaborate on that do, do for me, Jack, Jebo, because I want them guys to really understand how, how dangerous that damn Cajun country was. You know, it was the, the bayou was not to play with back then. Yeah, you had Jimmy you had Jimmy Wimber. The deal with you, you ever met him or uh, what 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 I what, what I what I supposed to call what I told you. Um uh, Schoolboy. You know, literally you call me schoolboy. Schoolboy's fine. Uh, I, 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 I mean, God damn, do we gotta call you Mr. J-Bo? <laughs> if, you, yeah, if, you call, if you call me Mr. Schoolboy, I'm gonna call you Mr. J-Bo. If you want me to, I will. <laughs> okay. well, I hear the girl call me Mr. J-Bo now. Yeah, I just mad enough at that. You know Jimmy Wimmer? Uh, no, I didn't meet him. I know Floyd Boudreaux. I met, uh, Let's see. I went down there. The first time I went down there was a show in uh, 1983. Ronnie Anderson's Brutus, uh, Captain Buck, and a dog named Freebie. Uh, I met a lot of, Yeah, I met uh, Raymond Holt was there. That's where I first met Danny Burton, Ronnie Anderson, Michael Boo, 
the Curry brothers, Tommy and Sam. Uh, Mike well, Kimono was there. Yeah, a lot of people in your generation, you know? Yeah, yeah. I met yeah. the Bagels, you know, Paula Shirley. Yeah, yeah, we met Paula Shirley. We met Paula Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, as far as, you know, like, Mo was saying about Louisiana. I think we see one of your dogs. I think we may see one of your dogs down there. Uh, uh, that damn, uh, Little Bill, maybe? Little Bill? There you go, Eddie Jr. Yeah, really had it. Yeah, Little Bill, I think, uh, Mississippi Mac had him that night. I think right now, yeah. right now, he's on the dog. I think they found out that night. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. They both just said he yeah. fouled out. I didn't fall out. He, I think he didn't hear the dog right in about the time of the turn. Well, I'm not trying to tell you. They didn't remember that he was down there see if a lot of was happening that night. Yeah, I think he had a little bill dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I sent him that dog. Yeah. Yeah. See, the Cajun country with people, maybe they don't know, maybe they do know. It's hot and humid there. That's one oh, thing. Man. Yeah. No, no the other thing is, yeah, the other thing is, is a lot of them people are country. So they have a lot of experience with dogs, not just pit bulls, all kinds of dogs, a lot of hunting, fishing, you know, the, the, the areas where they live, you know, some of them live in town, but most of them did, they was out mm-hmm. in the swamps and bayous. Mm-hmm. So they have a lot of knowledge about just dogs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. You ever seen this good thing that they used to keep their dogs on? They kept them tied. It was, uh, something that they had built. They got a sled on one end. They got a chicken on it. They got an extension on it. You could put a harness on it. They leave the dog in it, in the yard, in the backyard. And every night, you know, I didn't use a chicken and it slides. Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. You know, when I was wondering, you know, everybody was kind of old. I know it was nothing. I already couldn't wait to walk no damn dog for no two, three hours, you know. I was wondering how they yeah. were doing it. And I think of this small ass, uh, can't be any hands, you know, but one day I, I went to the, to the chicken barn, and you know, I, I seen the dog in it on the backyard where he had left him on it. He come running out there for, uh, and got him out there for everybody seen him, you know. Right. But I, I ain't never seen nobody else there ever use that before. I wish I could have got a picture of it, man. Yeah, that would have been cool. Hey, tell me, how, yeah. now tell me, how that go again, j What were they doing now? Man, they had uh, something built. It looked like it was made of tin or something. Mm-hmm. It's rags. But on one end of it, they, if they had a stencil from it, the way you could put the dog on the harness, mm-hmm. and he sit, on, he sit in the middle of it, and they got a cage with a chicken in it on one end, but the sled part of it, and when the dog takes the chicken, it was flat. He couldn't right. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that's yeah, just what they did. Yeah. That's how they were working yeah. the dogs. You know, they were raising, they were raising, they were raising man working the dogs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I knew they were getting kind of old. They couldn't really do that walking like they used to, man. And I said, well, they were raising. There you go. They were raising man yeah. working the dogs, you know? Because now, now, yeah. Well, people figure out, you know, how do I get the same work in or close to it in less time and less effort on my own, you know? Walking dogs is good, it's great, but if you're doing two, three, four at a time, or you're doing, you know, one, one month, one the next month, you've got to come up with different things. That's why all these contractions were invented. Mm-hmm. Treadmill. Treadmill wasn't originally invented for what we did with them, but they took that and incorporated into conditioning dogs. Cat mill, surf bowl, all that stuff. So you get the work in, but like you said, lazy boy, you don't you don't have to put a lot of effort. In fact that's what Tudor did. He he had a chair on top of a mound, he had dogs chained around that mound of dirt. He sit in a swivel chair and just surf pole them, go from one to the other, like that, you know. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's just, you know, for me it's you get more work in, less amount of time. Yeah, and then you remember that little train meal? Yeah. 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 Did it work for you? I, well, I, I mess with it a little bit. I've used a slap meal, a little bit electric meal. I don't, I like a natural work, you know. I, I, but if you can't see, 
You must be the master, goddammit. If that let the pyramid work for you, you must be the master. Well, well, I don't like them. I don't like no contraption. Honestly, to tell you the truth, I use them a little bit. I prefer natural work, road work, trans work like that. I love them. I, I love them. It just, it, yeah, yeah. But, That's, you know, it's, it's all about matter of how you use it. Mm-hmm. You know, how, how you you got to learn how to use it. There's different things about it, you know. And it, it, for me, my dog preferred the natural work. They like being out, fresh air, mm-hmm. you know, natural surface. You know, when you have a hard surface, when they start getting a little bit tired, the surface don't give. Their joints give, right? But when you're on dirt or grass, dirt gives a little bit. The grass gives, sand gives, you know. So it's just, you know, I don't knock nobody's, you know, regimen. If they're successful, yeah, if they're well, successful, then you know. Sorry, you know, it looks like I wasn't been in number eight with it. That's why I come back around. Well, all the names so many, my dog just yeah. fall out and shit. Yeah, but, but you know, yeah, it, it, yeah, it, yeah. Doing it, for, I, it was good on the door for, but it just, it, 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 it was, it was, it was, it was you know, it wasn't strong at all, man. I don't know, but I was resting it and shit, no. you know. It's, it, it, the it, way it, I learned to use it was basically. After a workout, just to cool them down, you know, so you don't have to be out there walking. It's more for people like they live in the city or something, you know, they don't have a lot of room. They don't want to be out in public with their dog. So they do their work and then put them on the, on the electric mill to do their walkout to cool down after a workout, you know. Really? Or like you said, they do endurance work. It's like hand walking kind of, but, you know, it's kind of poor, you know. You make the dog work, you know. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm hey, J-Bo. Yeah, yeah. Hey. L- let me give you a little insight on that. And, and I'm, I'm, I know that some of the guys out there in the Shark Tank, if y'all heard me tell you what I use the treadmill, the electric mirror for. I, and I tell you, I don't take off the weights through my whole keep until I'm peaking. So whether they're on the electric mirror or the slat mill, what I say, I say I do my stress work on the electric mill, right? I do my pace work on the electric mill. But I also tell you, I test my work on the slat mill. Do y'all understand what that means? If I'm testing my work on the slat mill, what do you think I'm doing when I put that dog on the slat mill? You you see what I'm saying, fellas? Yeah, PDK did the same thing. He didn't really use the mill as a workout per se, but he used it to see where his dogs were as far as the conditioning went. Exactly. Because and I, ha- I had a buddy who did that too. He had a treadmill. And I ain't kidding you. He used it, the whole the whole belt. Uh, you know, the rollers for the belt. All of them were roller skate size. Mm-hmm. You know, they, he didn't have big hubs at the end, and it pulled real hard. And he used to angle it up, and it was real hard for the dog to pull. So he used that as a measure to see how good his dogs were in shape. Exactly. If they could run that, that funky-ass mill, you know, run it good for a certain amount of time, then his dogs were there. TDK kind of did the same thing. He didn't really use the treadmill as a conditioning like that every day, every day. But he would use it periodically to see where his dogs are during the conditioning. Right. And I'm just you know, you know, and I never I ain't never heard it. I ain't never heard it. I ain't never heard that put it like that before. Thank you. Yeah. But that's why, yeah. you know, yeah. you, and, and, uh, guys have seen me guys have seen my dogs in condition. And you know, I've showed you pictures. And and guys, I just don't do the electric mill in in the slat mill. I get out there on the bike and connect my dogs to bikes and be gone. I get out there and put them on a four wheeler and be gone. But if I'm gonna build a pace, remember this is one thing that you know I use to my advantage. Remember I always said I do. I try to do things where the next person I don't expect them to do. What you always heard me say that. Twin is going to look for the edge that he knows everybody's not going to be doing what he's doing. And the only time I caught somebody 
following behind me. I ended up going three hours and 17 minutes with him and didn't even get a turn out of his ass until 3.15. You see? And that was because they had my keep. Everybody else, they did never survive that storm because it's hard. I, I used it because don't everybody condition that way. What I'm telling you guys, everybody did not do. And you hear these two great dog men telling y'all that. See, they all they're doing is validating something that I told y'all. Everybody's not going to do what I'm telling y'all. I'm just spilling the beans. But that was a advantage that I always had. Always had, because I would come out there in a hurry. They'd be like, twin, why are you rushing the door? Because I know he didn't do this. I'm forcing a pace to bring to speed up the fight because that's what I've conditioned for. And I conditioned hard for it. Remember, I'm using roids. I'm using weights. Imagine a dog just running on a treadmill, on an electric mill, and I I I I there's a few people out there. I put a, a little thing out there showing a dog on an electric mill. And as you were paying attention and the way that treadmill, that electric mill was running, you, I had showed you the screen. And when I showed you the screen, if you were paying attention, how I had that electric mill set, that dog was running at a nine. And I'm trying to show you all why I can run 10 miles in an hour and a half with a dog. Full of weights. Okay? And so when that dog comes off all that shit, how do you think that dog is going to feel? You know what I'm saying? When he is in peak condition, yeah. how do you think he's going to feel? Now, when I get inside that match, get, trust me, people, I'm rushing my dog because I know you ain't put your dog through what I put my dog through. Everybody want to get a certain stress level on their dog. You understand? I just had a little bit more understanding as a Marine because I know when the Marine Corps, like I said, when they threw that backpack on me and gave me that rifle and told me to run, I thought they were stupid ass crazy, my little ass out here. I ain't gonna make it. But guess what? You think they broke off and said, no, twin, you ain't gotta do it today, man. I know it's just too hard on hell no. I, I did it until I got used to doing it. And if I'm on steroids, damn it, I should be able to see what the goddamn steroids is supposed to do. You understand what I'm saying? So if I'm going to stress my yeah, dog that's out... That's how you, go ahead, sir. That, that's how you implement it. You know, you take... You know, a lot of people take... Well, they might have been in sport. They might have been in military. They might have been through labor, hard work, you know. They might have been an a athlete, whatever it is. You take that and, and transfer that to your dog, so you can implement her. Tell so, you, yes, so, right. But if you if you haven't been through something like that, then then you don't know what the limits are, and you don't know. There you go. How to how to, how to build them up, cross that line. And keep them going. Damn right. That's uh, right. I try to tell them that. I try to say, you have to know what your dog's wall is. How you going to know if you ain't pushing him there? Yeah. Yeah. And see, for me, twin, I, I found all that out way before I put him in key. Yes. Because the way I raised them, what I did with them was a lot different than most people. But I put them through. So my dog, well, you know, something I said before is if I borrowed a dog, a lot of times they couldn't go through my key because they weren't raised like my mm -hmm. dog. I'd have to I'd have to back off on them because they, they just couldn't take it. Yep. And because mine were raised a certain way, it, it was no problem. My key form. It was a hard key, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and like you said, you know, I like that pace too. I wanted my pace to be faster than my opponent because in my mind, if, if my pace is faster, their condition's going to run out because they're not used to that pace. So exactly. they're going to have to hurry up. They're going to have to move faster than they normally would. They're going to have to try and keep up. That's right. From getting smacked. That's right. So, so a lot of times, they just, you know, I didn't have to go that long <laughs> because, you know, they just fall out or they quit, you know. Thank you. Yeah, but I say you definitely got to have fucking the the kick that 
trying to keep because you cut her in half. What do you to keep? You know it. Yeah. yeah. But you know what, j yeah, you You're right. Yeah. You will see. Yeah, you, you you, but you, but guess what, j You see that. You see You see it. You get a chance to see it. In the key. In the key. Yes, you do. It ain't like you're overworking the dog. I want to know how many times we've seen a match, y'all, where the dog is doing good and he run out of gas and he turns into a totally different dog. Because he can't recover. Or he's then got yeah. tired and he done lost the interest because he didn't did all he could do. Well, what you get what you got better results out of a big dog on slaughter now? Well, I never had any big dogs. I, the, the biggest dog I ever had was a forty two. Man, that's not a big dog at all. I thought that no many dogs wouldn't be. Every dog I I, I never mastered dog I got I, like I said, I never had a dog over forty three pounds. Pretty Mom was the biggest dog we had out there. She was a 42. Buck Rogers was a 40 pounder. That was her. It's amazing to see some of the big dogs so over two hours. I'm like, I wonder what the hell they did. I can hear them six weeks. Well, I can tell you. I, I can tell you by. You're making a chip chip. Hey, look. I can tell you about Yellow Buck. Remember, Yellow Buck was a 55 pounder. Barracuda was a big boy. These were big dogs. I can tell you why these dogs was winning, man. They was winning because, remember I told you, man, a lot of things that those kennels was doing that everybody didn't know they was doing, even STP was doing it. Y'all, they was doing, what you hear me telling y'all is what they were doing. Mayday, Angel, all of them had them dogs on them electric mills and them treadmills. All of them had those dogs with them weights on all of them used to run those dogs and, and, and run them on that, that pace. And then take the dogs, and then when you got them on a, on the slat mill, and you pushing for the same damn thing, you're getting a totally different run. Because now it's him running instead of the electric mill running. You know what I'm saying? So you go and you put them on that slat mill, and nothing changed but the damn floor. When he's kicking his legs out there on that slap mill and driving his driving it, yeah, I guarantee you, you would have had a lot more forward shoulder muscle, uh, uh, J Bo. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, that back end is gonna go. They get tired back there on that back end, especially when you got weights on them on that electric mill. But you have to understand, I'm running everything at a fast pace. If I start at nine, believe me, I'm running six minutes at nine. I'm running another six minutes at eight. And this is just at the beginning. Okay? I'm starting at nine. Six minutes at nine. I'm talking about that two minutes on the damn long slap mill. Oh, oh, but I put them on the slap mill. It's, there is no time limit. It's all out go. There's no, so, I mean, this is where I get a chance to see my work. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't have control over it. All I got control over is bring your ass on. Let's go. We dig, 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 dig. I'm going to see what he's getting out of that slap meal. So if I'm starting off at nine, six minutes, and then I'm starting, I'm going into eight minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, six minutes. Look, what, look, what, look at the time and the pressure I'm putting on him. By the time I get to five minutes, this dog is in trouble. Do you hear me? Look how many minutes I did by the time I'm at 30 minutes out of five. Now, imagine me starting off that way. So that means... Yeah, you're down there at the pre-keeper, dog. Hey, hey, man, I come right in. I'm already pre-keeping ready. I just pour some... They body's going to get used to it. I'm on steroids there, J-Bo. How you can get the steroids out your damn dog? How do you know how good steroids is that you ain't touching them limits? See, that's what made Stone City good. That's what made McNasty and them good. That's what made the Abrahams good. That's what Hardcore and them was doing. I'm telling y'all, y'all, that's what they were doing. STP was doing it. He all, John Beamers ain't walking out there walking no 10 miles of the dog. God damn it, James Crenshaw wrote in his book, he walked 10 miles. The man could damn near walk straight up. Now, come on now. You really believe he was walking 10 miles? 
Okay. Hell no. So, but I guess what? I bet he had an electric mill and a slap mill in his house. I bet you John Beamers had an electric mill and a slap mill in their house. I bet you every one of these guys, you know why? Because I seen them. I didn't learn this on my own. You know what I'm saying? I did not learn this on my own. You hear the philosophy? Remember, everybody don't know that secret. Well, I'm, know. If you know now, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know now, but that was the secret. We was beating people on the pace. We're going to come in strong as hell. If I rush you, your, your muscles going to get real tired with all this punching I'm doing on your ass. Not only am I going in on your ass at a pace, I'm making you a better dog and got more ability than me. Guess what? You're going to use every bit of that ability in your air to stay ahead. You're going to use a whole lot of energy to stay ahead because I'm steady coming. I'm steady pressing. And guess what happens? Them goddamn lactic asses is going to start catching up because you weren't trained to do all that. And I'm going to catch up. And then I'm going to take over. And I'm not going to never let you recover because you were not put in that position during your keep. Game as hell, but you're going to never catch up with me. It's just a matter of time when you give up. And that's how I won a lot of my matches. But that's how a lot of Stone City, that's why Nico Jr., with the, with the, he was one of the weakest goddamn dogs that Stone City had, y'all. He was a good dog, right? But the dog, is he outlasted everything you put on him. That's how he made champion. He was not no great dog. You cannot keep up with them. They pace you out, and then they take you out. You understand? That's what that's how Grand Champion Buck. And you know who else? You know who else was pretty good at doing that shit? Ricky Jones. He was real good at that. That's what he. That's what the whole thing was. You get a killer. Guess what? She's gonna go on a hundred miles an hour. So what they gonna do? Go ahead. You, 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 you ever seen any dogs out of Blue Hole? Blue? I, I missed the last part. You, you ever seen any dogs out of Blue Hole? No, what's that? Oh, uh, Blue Hole Dogs. Yeah, Blue Hole Dogs. You know what they call them? Uh, they call them the Blue Hole Dogs. Yeah, they call them the Blue Hole Dogs. Now, how was Blue Hole bred? They were from Bobby. From Bobby Hall? Yeah. No, hey, no. They had him off a champion Mario and champion Shelly. They had him bred that way, read the Bull Dog out there. But but they had used a son of Blue Hole on us one night. Uh, we had pissed out Red Little Mate Brother. Pissed out Red Little Mate Brother. Yeah, we had one of them. We had one of them dogs. We got it from Gary Carey. He said um, he was using it for a stud dog, but he said he had enough mouth for him, and he, he sold it to us when we bought some dogs from him. Mm. He, he was a hell of a game dog. <laughs> he was a hell of a game dog. He was a dead game type dog. Fuck my Missy Bad and goddamn son of Boo Hole. And one of the first time I seen one of those Boo Hole dogs. I was like, God damn, I have seen one or two more after that, but then they was all the same. You talking about some fucking children. Are you talking about Boudreaux? Uh-uh, Bluehole. Bluehole. Okay, I'm trying to find Blue Bluehole. Okay, I, I got pissed out red up. I'm trying to find out who, I'm trying to locate this shit because I want to see how it was bred. Because if you said it was a fast pace, had it was a killer. Oh, uh, there, there was some fucking fast rain ass dogs. Okay. No, I got, I, I'm, and, I'm, and I can see you putting something in, in, in him, man. I mean, God damn, I'm talking about you. you he wrote him. He was riding him when he bought him, man. And he was riding him when he took her out of him. Right, right. What, no slowdown to that shit, was it? Man, say, boy, he ran through us like a hot knife. But he was a, I mean, that pissed out red was a red boy, dog. I mean, heavy red boy. Oh man, he was gang with they cub, bro. Oh, my. We, had, we had we we had one we had a buckskin back now, back now. We had no red nose, dog. We had a buckskin dog. Mm-mm. Okay, let me see. Let me see some offsprings here. Let me see how they bred him because pissed out red. 
I'm, I'm, I'm looking at some offspring and see if I can work myself down there where you at, bro. Because I'm trying to find this killer shit. <laughs> he got three damn pages, though, y'all. Yeah, but that grew over from Bobby Hall. From Bobby Hall? Yeah. What was Pit Stop to uh, Boo Hall? And uh, uh, the Jabo, can you? Can, can, mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to get to Boo Hall. I mean, how do I spell that? Cause I want to see. I'm trying to look it up. I got pissed out red up on here though. But uh, what y'all were using the pissed out red stuff? Yeah, that's what I was using. Yeah, you hear me? Boo Hall is Boo Hall is B R U J O. Okay. I'm just gonna go back in and, and, and put it in that. It's got a whole bunch of that shit. Let me just go back here and boo. Yeah, he was. He said it was off a. Of was he right off a of pit stop red? No, we were right off boo. We we had to pit stop red. They, they had to pit stop red. Oh, 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 oh. And I'm about to tell you, it was a game up. Yeah, B R U. J O, so that would be Hall's yeah. boo ho. Okay, Hall. Yeah. B R U J O. Yeah, call it enough. Oh, Hall's yeah, I got it. I got it. Yep, yep. Cadena's and Hall's boo ho. Yes, sir. You, you, know, you know what boo ho means? I, I no. <laughs> It means which? Okay. Yeah. Oh, he but got a lot of them. Uncle Gucci and uh, Maya. Yeah, he was bred to bite. Yeah. Hmm. Also, Yeah. Also, Where would you see that, Mike? I'm, I'm, I'm looking here. Got the shorty and Maya. Yeah, I see you hard. Yeah, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I got him right here. You see that Howard, Howard Barber, Howard Barber, Barber? Your yeah, Barbie girl? I see Barbie girl, I see Howard Barber, I see the other Howard Barber. Yeah. Yeah, I got him on here, I got him I up. Seen the I, see, I see they had a Barbie too, dog, I see her. I see that go right there. Yeah, but I ain't gonna lie, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's in there. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I see him, I'm, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna, which one you want me to pull up? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up that one uh, Hall's Barbie girl. Up at that uh, Hall's Barbie. Yeah, that Boo was a four-time winner. Yeah, he was a champion. Yeah, yeah, one of the one at all. Uh, he, he was a two-time winner at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a four-time winner and he was a one-time loser. It don't say if he lost the game or not. I'm going to pull him up and see. No, from Boo Ho. Boo Ho was bred to, it's Hall's, you know, Robert and all that stuff with the Maloney. Mm-hmm. That's what made Barbie. Oh, he was a black yeah, and white they dog. Were, they, were bringing, they were bringing it to the Devil Bread 2 stuff. Yeah. And that's what they were getting the out of. They yeah. were bringing that, 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 that uh, Boo Ho dog to her. Too, yes, right. I got it right here, y'all. Right here. That's him right here. I got him. I got his pedigree up. They got a picture of him and everything. Yeah. Yeah, but he was throwing killers, bro. Yeah, he was off of that shorty dog. Another four-time winner, registered and married. The Morphins. Yeah. I mean, he was, he was Boudreaux. He had, he had grand champion Arden in Java. He dog had he had hard biting dogs in him on the yeah. dog. Shit, this dog was yeah. This dog had hard biting shit in him everywhere, top and bottom. You're right. He had he was crossing it with the Mahoney stuff, the tooth stuff. Mm -hmm. Crossed with the Boudreaux stuff. Well, you already know that shit's biting the, the bully. The, the Eli shit gonna be biting the shit out your ass. Oh yeah, I can see where these dogs was biting. Yeah, man. With, with, with the Dipsy dog, uh, Hall's Dipsy. You're calling it with Dipsy. 
kills the Malone and stuff too. She was double grand bird. The victory bitch. She was the Malone and stuff. She was double grand bird. Damn, me. Was one of her all up and I was throwing killers too. Man, I, I can see that. Wow. I never, man, y'all turning me on to some new type of shit. I bet you ain't too many guys heard of this shit. This some of that Bible yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I also seen another uh, son called Boa going out of the Miami dog. And one of his sons, matter of fact, we bred him one of them dogs. I was almost some hell of a dog. Yeah. And he had the big old giant ass teeth in his mouth. Yeah. Yeah, you see a pattern when you get down that way. Texas, Mexico, all that. They love hard biting dogs. Yes. They live by them. You know. Yeah, I see that yeah, hard you know, victory. You know, part of, you know the second part of what they live by, huh? Hey, hey, what's that? With that hard biting man dog, you didn't see till December. <laughs> <laughs> I got a pedigree up. Is that her victory? Yeah, look how she, yeah, look how she's bred. They man, these dogs is bred to be biting, man. What? Yeah, man. Yeah, all the best from bred dirty dog can't scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Somebody was talking to Carver, talking about, I forget if it was a male or female. <laughs> And he said, he said, man, that dog could bite. And Carver said, well, it's got a license to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, no wonder, that, hey, man, now this is some new shit to me. You did, this, I, this is some new shit here. I, I didn't, I, I, I'm i tripping on the crosses, too. I see that Mahoney's, I see that bar and that hard champ, uh, that, that uh, champion sugar. Can you take, can you take back with Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've seen you hook. I've seen you hook. Off of Barton Sugar. Yeah, I've seen you see Black River Bills. I've seen dogs off of her break the grand champion sport. Yeah, I got her. And all the male, all the male folks to change. She all them ain't had no fucking teeth in their mouth and they made a yo. She won one and was voted best in show. So you already know what that yeah. means. She was a killer. Y'all, yeah. y'all, I got a yeah. picture of her up here. I, I got them here sitting up here. I got a picture of her. And she breaks yeah, pretty boy. good. Damn. Yeah, on the dog. See, that's why them boys were scared. There's another, pa- there's another pattern that goes with that too, twin. Okay. You see all that? You see all that? Boudreaux, all that Eli art, Bully Son, Hall, all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Hard biting dogs, right? Right. Then you see, then you see the Fontenot's booger, Maloney, all that stuff, right? Right. They put that in there so the dogs don't quit. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta have that balance. Well, that's one of the reasons why the boys. <laughs> was, that yeah, was, yeah, because the Cardinals dogs just by themselves, they, 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 they were twenty many dogs. But it's like when they had the Zach Alive stuff with them, they 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 made made them kill but the better dogs was all from the Maloney stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You'll see the Maloney, Maloney added. Yeah, you'll see the Maloney added, Fontenot's Booger added, O'Leo added, where there's handicap or Mendocino and all that. They realize, you know, it's like anything else. When you when you when you add something, there's a chance you might lose something. You go too far in one direction, you're going to lose something in the other direction. So you got to have a balance. And, and uh, you know, that, that's, that's just breeding. You, you can't, you know, you, it's, it's hard to have a whole ton of them that are, that are all around balanced dogs that do everything. It's almost like a fight, you know. 
You got to counter this with that. You add this because you you need that. You know, kind of and and uh, that's just part of breeding. It's like you were mentioning in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. About the difference between the past and today. And and I'll put it this way: the the reason that the American pit bull terror was developed in the first place was for what? For sport. Right? Yes, sir. Competition. So real simple, when you don't have that, then 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 the breed is not the same. And that's happened with every breed. We all talk about it, you know, German Shepherds ain't the same, Beagles ain't the same, you know, uh, anything. They're not the same. Rottweilers, all that. Because they stopped using them for what their function was. They stopped breeding them on performance or on work or on whether it's protection or whether it's, you know, herding cattle, whatever it is. When you stop that, that's where the breed declined. So that would be, I'm not, you know, encouraging anybody to do anything illegal. I'm just saying that that pattern has followed throughout the history of any breed. You keep it for what it was, it's going to stay it's going to do what it can do. You don't, you lose it. And it don't take long to lose it either. Okay, guys, before we go any further, let me just tell you, let me, get, let, me, let me tell my guests the rules. When we get on that bus and we travel to the past, right, and I tell them to gather up their dogs and their paperwork, when they get off that bus, they back here in our time. So this is for the entertainment and the educational purposes. You know what I mean? So we're taking yeah. the dogs yeah. now and we're back here in the back time, back here in our time. So everything that we speak on is strictly fictional because we're not in the now. We in the we in the then. Okay. So speak freely so they can get the point. Yeah. Okay. Feel, right. I want y'all to speak and freely. To be honest, you know, to be honest, everybody knows I don't handle dogs. I ain't done shit in years. That's right. So, so I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know anything about no current dogs anyway. Exactly. But just as a general rule, just as talking about history throughout history, up to any time. I don't care if we're talking. Uh, 2130, if the animal is not used for its intended purpose, it, you're going to lose everything. That's right. No matter if it's racehorses, no matter if it's hunting dogs, no matter what it is. That's just, that's just the way it goes. And including the clue the pawn that is your key <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 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 J-Bo. J Bo, hey. tell me something, man. Hey, hey, you know you took me somewhere. I ain't never seen this shit here before, and I thought I've seen it all. I ain't never <laughs> seen this shit here. This is some of that Cajun shit that I never seen. This is why they were, we was getting our asses. Didn't nobody want to go down there in the, in the Bayou. Because I ain't well, seen these shits. Go, 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 go to Blue Home uh, siblings. I mean, yeah, siblings. Okay, go to the siblings. I got you. Yeah, I ain't, I, 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 man, this the first time I ever heard of boo I ain't, I ain't never seen these dogs right here. Yeah, I, okay. okay, I'm there, J-Bo. Eight full brothers. He got eight full brothers. He got eight full. Rock Crusher. He got Rock Crusher. He a registered mayor. You got Beauregard. Okay, all right, 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 see Beauregard. Okay, I see champion nickel, uh, yeah, nickel, nickel. Then I see another champion. Okay, I got him. Oh, yeah, this is a, uh, this is Bogard right here. I got him. Yeah, we had that. I see him, I probably had Bogard. He got it from Dark River. And we had Dog Dog from Bogard, one of his sons. Okay, I'm pulling up his offspring. And, and, and that, that stuff called good as hell with the Jeep stuff, bro. Uh, the line of G dogs that we had, mm -hmm. that shit close like Peter Burton and Jerry to them G dogs. <laughs> I can tell you why. I see Booker T. I'm pulling up Booker T. I'm pulling up Booker T. Oh, uh, they got Shady Bill on here at the bottom. I don't know. We had that. I've seen a lot of Shady Bill dogs. I was going to beat the Shady Bill one time, but, uh, I had my 10 phone calls at the same time, but telling me the same thing I had just seen about 
Uh, I may have not wanted to breathe the shade of beer. Yeah, they got that. Everybody had a yard of dogs off of them. I don't know if it's a cross that they made. It didn't work for them, you know? Uh-huh. Okay. Saying it that's a different way. Yeah, I see some I see shady lady in there coming off a of bill. Then they got Bill uh you got Bill being bred to that war child off of that little rascal Petey, champion little rascal Petey, off of that Charlie B and was that Duprell's Jill? Registered Merit? Yeah, Chico. Okay. I right. I see this Washington Chico. Yep, that's what I'm on. Yep. Yeah, we we also bred uh Lewis as outlaw. To the Chico dog, uh, I think they got um, Outlaw Junior. That that side dog I had, mm-hmm. it took his his gang, it took his dad and bred to this Chico bitch. These, these, these people in the same area that wants to do with the Chico dog. Uh huh. I, I think uh, I think uh, 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 what's his bitch name? She won one. Uh, lady, somebody she was off of the Chico dog, bred to the Outlaw dog. I've seen a couple dogs off the cheek. Yeah, okay. I got Lewis Outlaw. Her name was uh, Sassy. Uh, yeah, Sassy. Beastmaster, yeah, okay, Duke, Lewis Duke Sassy. Sassy. Yes, yeah, sir. And yeah, Duke Sassy was a one-time winner. Yep. My son had dogs off of Sassy. I, I got had, a picture of I had one of these dogs. Yeah, Duke Sassy. Can't see Judah one-time winner. Matter of fact, I refereed the match. Now, damn, coming back, huh? I refereed the match. I'll just make the bitch. There she go. I got her up, baby. I got her up. Let's get this package. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep, I got outlaw bread to Chico. Yeah, that, that's the stuff I had right there. Damn, it, it got some hundred red in there. Uh, it, and it's got that lock shit. I, I see you keep lock up in here. I see Tommy up yeah, in here. Yeah, that's the stuff I had. What pedigree are you looking at, uh, Twin? Uh, I'm looking at Outlaw Beastmasters uh Lewis Sassy off of Lewis Outlaw bred to Washington's Chico. Okay. Yep, Beastmasters Lewis Sassy, one time winner. I'm gonna click on this outlaw dog. You know I wanna dig in with him a little bit. Uh, oh, oh shit, okay. Hey, hey, got that Jeep in there. Okay, now I see where you was at now. I see where you was at, Bo. I, I, hey, I see where you was at, J-Bo. Now, this is a pretty pedigree here. Mm-hmm. See, it, it, you know, I couldn't see it until I, I, I went straight to Outlaw. Yeah, Jerry Cannon gave uh, my partner the Outlaw, though. They had this bitch called Molly. Uh, they matched that bitch when she was pregnant, and they didn't know she was pregnant. She ended up seeing her quitting. And he took her back to the man, and the man told him that that bitch was pregnant. And he was telling her no fucking way she could be pregnant. The guy told him, well, if she had puppies, uh, I forgot the agreement that they made. He brought her home, and two days after that, the bitch had three puppies. Wow. She got yellow John too. This dog got yellow, yellow in her, Hunter Red in her, G in her, Spike in her. Damn. I had dogs out of that sad bitch too. Rebel Kennel ch- Turtle. G. Man, this shit. Hey, how much of this shit was hanging out in the bayou, man? Give me a reason. Maybe that's why we wasn't well, running I, down I, in I, there. Okay, okay, you don't see that pedigree? It got Jabo name on it. N- no shit. Yeah. Look at this. Now, this is some shit here, man. I ain't never seen this kind of cross. I mean, it's got yellow being crossed with Jeep. I mean, it's got Bob, and it's got turtle in there. You got rubble kennels. I mean, this is a nice cross. Bailey's bingo. I mean, got straight up Bailey's bingo. I mean, this is a real nice cross here. Ain't this some shit? Hey J Bo, is this is that is this some of that hard biting shit that you was talking about? Cause it looks like there's a whole bunch of gamers in this shit right here. The hard biting stuff was the bottom side of the other bitch I had for Billy Stevenson, that rain bitch. 
Okay, Thunderdome Kennels. Yeah, she was down from uh, Rain because she's mad. The top was the same. The top side was the same. She was also Reaper. She was also Reaper to Barry Stevenson's uh, Rain. Rain was also as to the I think that was also Black Jack. So Thunderdome Kennels, Black Jack. <laughs> so, so the other side of the hand was the same top side of it, but it was, it was all rascal at the bottom. The other bitch I had was, was the Militant Manning dog off of Bayless Mingo to, uh, I guess, Miss Rooster. It's the same stuff on the bottom side to the temple of Miss Rooster. See that guy, Juicy Bitch? Okay, yeah, she right there. Okay, which one you say? Lucy? Like Juicy right there. Yeah, that bitch. Oh, yeah, Juicy, right yeah, I got it right here. Yes, sir, I'll pull it more up. Had, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it basically like it was like juicy stuff on the bottom because they always off the chance in this roof. This shit was down there, bread like Bosco in them, wasn't he? But he, Bosco had Rascal in him, yeah. I see that damn Shady Hill Kill Jeep. That's that Miss Nico shit right there. And then like juicy bitch was a hell of a bitch too. Yeah, this is the same shit. This is the same shit down there that created Bosco, Mike. And in the bottom is the same shit you'll find the same dog and Miss Nico. Cross with that buck, yellow buck to them shit, you know? Okay. Wasn't, uh, wasn't Blackjack off of Bosco? Yeah, he's off Bosco. Mm, I had yeah, a some of the tactics they rap that was in the world from that that ten or so. Yeah, I had a I had a dog I had a dog off of Bosco. Brandon Shirley. Shirley and Bosco, the uh Black Jack's grandmother. They bred Shirley to Bosco. I had one of those pups. Right, that guy that you was Shirley to Bosco that made, uh... Yeah. Uh, that was made a bad Yeah. I yeah. might be a little bit of them, though. Let me check this. Let me see where we at. Okay, I remember Locks Missy. We got one of them bred into a going hard shit, bro. That Locks Missy? Off a of, off a of spook and gold nugget. Yeah, we had one of them off a of, and it was bred to a uh, sunny. Uh, actually, it was bred to yellow. And it, we had uh, had it was a champion, champion outlaw. A sunny yellow bred to that Mitzi shit. Watch it, watch me hit to bring this bitch up. You gonna bring I follow you gonna follow this bitch right to us from going hard shit. See, I used to have some Jeep dogs, man. I used to have some Jeep dogs. I, I really did like that keep lock shit though, y'all. If you look at BJ and Charlie, you're gonna see that lock shit all over the place. Check out Mayhem and them boys down there, the, you know, the Louisiana, Arkansas boys, right? They that cool buck shit, you know. Come on now, you know what I'm talking about down there, J Bo. Yeah, I had some of that cool buck stuff. Okay. Yeah, man. I had the bubble stuff, I had the bubble stuff with it too. Okay. See, I am I'm way up in the house playing down in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look at that shit. Y'all see it? Bayless is trying to die. But well, they always told me to, to breed more to the Eli side with some Jeep dogs. I get better dogs. I keep breeding the Jeep way. I wasn't gonna get nothing but game dogs and and and, and dogs that lay around the right. Look at that pedigree. Look at that pedigree. Going hard, goddamn China Red, bed the locks messy. Yeah. You had that shit too. <laughs> I sure did. Yeah, he's the one that China that that China Red, he lost the lock and load. That's the one that got punched in the chest like Gus did. Yeah, we were going for our time and shit. We lost the uh we lost the crossroad with him. But yeah, look at that shit. That yeah, that's us right there with that shit. I can tell you that shit was game, man. That shit was game. Okay, I mean, I mean, it too, huh? Yes, sir. I mean, that's a wild time stuff. All the different words but other stuff was Grand Captain I was on stuff on my time. See? 
Yeah, man. I'm, and, yeah, and then you like uh, cool buck. We had cool bucks. We went to went and got that cool buck. Then his little mate brother James. And, and and we came up with uh, we bred into that Satan shit, and that's where BJ and Charlie and them come from. Champion, that was the dog that we were gonna go into Tyrone with before Tyrone died. I, I like how cool work though. I, I, hey, Jay I, 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 I called him cool. Hey. And he was a natural, bro. Hey, Jay Bo, I got, I got mm-hmm. Rainy, I got Rainy up here. I'm gonna put Rainy up here right quick. Off of Jay Bo's fly and Harris's muffin. Jay Bo's a two-time winner of a champion reaper. Yeah, I got to get the. Hold on, man. I got to pull that up here. Hold on. Let me get that up on the screen here. Like, what's that number? Cool boy. Yeah. You, you, you like your dog's better bread? I mean, you had the juice up, didn't you? Yeah. We all had some like juice. You like your stuff better uh, close? You had bread or uh, uh, bread back? You had bread on the juice stuff. What you got better dogs off of? Well, I like, I like, you know, I started with the, it was a, a heavy Jeep female. Then I had a uh, Jeep red boy. Bully son. So throughout the throughout the years, that's what I like. That kind of that three weight cross. But I tightened up on the deep dogs, and then add Bully son, add uh, my buddy. Added you know, after I got out of dogs, I gave my best dogs to my friend. He kept it going. So uh, Bully son was added. Uh, skull Skull bred to a uh, red boy, Jocko bitch. Kind of like that, that same pattern. I used Rascal, you know. And he brought some dogs out the head. He brought some dogs out the head. Say that again. He brought some dogs out the head. The most my dogs out the head. Here, yeah, buddy. I have one head dog. Yeah, that's all he was, was a head dog. Uh... I won an hour 39 and 243 with them. But I like them more rough, you know? Yeah, I figured they made more, more, more combat dogs. I do. Yeah, just my style, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't like them stupid either. I don't like dumb dogs, you know? I don't like slow dogs. I like them fast. I like them strong. That's what I try to keep going. And, and uh, that, that same pattern is, you know, went on for years and years. I want to give a shout out to my man James Jones in the Shark Tank coming up with these. Uh, uh, he's the one that, uh, he's sending out J Bo's pedigrees. So he's Shark Tank doing their job. They doing they at, they at work right now. <laughs> hey J Bo, I got you, I got I got her up, man. I got uh, I got Rainy I got Rainy up on the board here. Man, somebody stole that bitch from me. Uh, I just brought it to the front of Canada. Ooh. And somebody stole that bitch from me, man. I, I had already had that out of dogs, and I was in my pocket to keep them. And every time I breed them, if they have 10 puppies, well, I get him five, and I keep five, and you just let him sell them, you know, just for saying thank you, you know. But I think I got three little out of them before somebody stole them from me. But I got that, that sugar dog out of them. That they bred to his own fish dog to make a champion Leonidas dog and a champion those dog. Oh no, hold on, I'm, uh, I'm pulling shit I think, out. I think, I think, oh yeah, it was uh, Charlie Brown to, to rain. Man, he's a little that bitch, man. I fuck around and got my partner to bring it to me and I bred her and the same time I got that stuff to my stole from me that, that night. That bottle, that bottle's rocket came off that breeding too, didn't it? Yeah, by the way, the red land, the sugar dog. Yeah, I got, I got, I got, I got sugar here. I got raggedy Ann. I got bottle rocket. I got J Bo's Goldie off of Grand Champion Thunder. And the Thunder Dog Grand on the fly. I'm going in here. I'm going in on th- on Goldie. I love Goldie, man. That was one of my favorite dogs, man. I had just stopped the daughter bone crush and some of that high cat stuff. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, Jay Bo, one t- now that they- now we have hey, not- J Bo. I don't know if Matt Rose Domino. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, my, well, my partner, my partner got this, the Domino doll from, uh, and that was a boot camp doll. He went to his little mate brother in church for it. Already follows Boogaloo. They went to uh, each other at, um, Little mate? And that 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 wild chest dog was a two-time winner. Hey, J Bo. Uh-huh. Now we we've heard you on many years, you know, we we've seen you do a lot of interviews, right? We've heard mm-hmm. a lot. Tonight we're actually going in and we're for the first time that I can truly say we're going in looking at J Bo. shit. Okay. J Bo. You the man you've been, you been doing some shit, wasn't you? <laughs> I, 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 I ain't who I'm talking to, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell. I can't tell. Stop playing your hand down, man. This is some good shit. I'm telling you, this is. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, I'm down for a reason. The rapper got the gun. Okay. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 hey. We got jack rappers on this phone, right there. Man, I can put my hand down. Damn right, okay. Look at that, Mike. You got that Lejeune's Gardeners China. I mean, shit. That grand champion Lejeune, Benny Buck, Benny Boy. These are some nice ass crosses, man. I, I, I mean, they're new to me. They are new to me. And you say he went into his litter mate brother? Yeah, yeah, in church, I already saw him moving him. Okay, I'm tagging in on that one. J Bo. Uh huh. You remember the Church Point Cajuns? Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. All they follow. He was one of them. Yeah. Leander Dagel, Horse Dagel, all them. I, I, I heard of the Dagel people. I remember we used to go to, uh, you ever heard of Jim Bay? Yeah. <laughs> we, we used to do the dogs by his pipe when we didn't go to Black Falls. Oh, we went to rain. We went to rain and we found that oh, we did that. Yeah, we did by. Oh, we went to Mr. Wimberley. Place down that way. Right. Mr. Right. Wimberley got kind of dirty, but his sons, his sons, they took over, you know? Right, right. Got that black ball, the Dable, good people, man. They go to the first point Cajun because they, mm-hmm. they, uh, one of them actually, uh, was the, Groundskeeper, caretaker of the Catholic Church there in Church Point. No shit. And he, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're right, right. And uh, yeah. it was one of the Dagles, the, the, the oldest one, I forget his name. And uh, he even used to keep his pit bulls on the church ground there. Well, goddamn, J Ball, I'm sitting up in here enjoying this shit. I bet you y'all. All these damn shows he been on, y'all even know y- y'all know why the Cajun country ain't nothing to be fucking with. For y'all who you know, we've been wait I've been waiting to get him on here to show y'all some shit. Cause I'm gonna di- I'm gonna pull up some shit. Yeah, we gonna go looking. And listen, look at him and schoolboy. I I'm the one that ain't saying shit. You talking about Cajun country. You see that grand champion Rand though? That was Cajun country. Okay, grand champion Rad. Was it which one is that one? The missing. Yeah, no, go, go back to that page because they love that rag song, bro. They love uh, Terry Como. You, you, you know him? That's who was? Who's that? Yeah, Terry Como. No. Uh-huh. He had that big about dog, the grand champion rag song. Oh, shit. This dog, okay. China Man, look at that bread. God damn. Damn, I mean, he's a he's a gardener dog, China man. Cross with Bully Son Junior. And and Stomper, this is a match dog. There you go. There's a formula here. I, what I tell y'all, I always tell y'all when y'all just throwing shit together out there, you ain't putting that real shit on. You ain't gonna get shit. Here's a, here's a point. <laughs> There's a point I'm making. There is a formula right here. 
This is how you get grand champions. This is why, this is why shit works. They're not talking about pretty pedigrees. They're talking about match dogs. Match dogs. Don't get that shit twisted. Yeah. Like I said, you know, like we talked about before, the, the breed was based on competition dogs. And throughout the history, those are the ones that were used, not just in competition, for, for most of the breeding, too. Mm -hmm. so for mm -hmm. you know, you know, yeah, we have them. exceptions. You know, you have exceptions, but that's what they are, exceptions. Mm -hmm. You know, you're called for the first dog? No, but... Uh, uh, that big red dog of mine, he was crossed with a, a daughter of Chinaman. Mm -hmm. It didn't have the Frisco in it, but it was Chinaman. That's what yeah, he made. Was from out here for, Frisco was bred out here, Chinaman was out here, and then, then he sent him to Tom uh, later, you know. Yeah. I like the Chinaman, I like the Frisco stuff to the red ball rascal stuff. That, and, and it didn't work as, as well with the Jeep stuff, eh? They make some more for the just red from the last or so. Right, right. Yep. Yeah. Chinaman, I saw him. I didn't see him match, but I seen him rolled out here. I called him the eviscerator because he gutted the dog in about 15 minutes. God damn. Yeah. He was evil and quiet too. But he looked through you like like you wasn't even there, man. Like, Who are you talking about? Frisco? Chinaman. Chinaman? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I heard he was a nasty yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. yeah, I heard he was a badass. Yeah. Oh, I want to give a shout out to my man, Solo Black Connected Kennels, coming in with the five piece. Appreciate the love again, Solo. Now, now Frisco was double bred Chinaman, right? So, where in the yeah. hell did this buck shit come from? Buck skin yeah. shit come from? Can, can anybody help What's me that? on that? Where did this buck shit, this buckskin shit come from? Red. Where does red shit come from when Frisco with all this black? Frisco is red. Yeah, that's what I said. Where did all this red shit come from? Well, the Bolio stuff is bottom side of Bolio. Yeah, the, the Commander Whitehead stuff. You're right. True? Yep. You, yeah. Okay, that's where it come from because they, they, they was definitely red. That's right. Yeah. Uh, y'all got to admit, Frisco was a bad, bad motherfucker now, y'all, while y'all playing. <laughs> 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 Shit. Y'all bullshit. Like you said, it's that, it's that same pattern over and over. It's you know? that formula, man. You, you can look at it and tell there's yeah. a formula there. It, it, that's just bottom yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, the, the the patterns are the same, just the names change. Yes, you know? yes. So, that's all it is. If you're smart, you follow what was done before. They ain't gonna invent nothing new. They're not new to invent. They just they're different dogs. Yes, sir. They're different. Yeah. Everybody wants their thing. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, they try and they tell you they do, but that's because they don't know how to read a pedigree. I got to make one crack about Frisco, y'all. We They talk shit about Mayday and all that shit, right? But come on, y'all. Y'all see this? 26 goddamn pages. 26 pages. He got 1,298 offsprings? He has 1,298 offsprings. Come on now. I was just talking about Mayday, though, but I didn't know he had 1,200 offsprings. Okay, come on now. Now, you know, and then, you know, they forgave him. Because you know the damn ADBA went off. Not only did the ADBA go off, goddamn Jack Kelly went off. Come on. You know, it, it, you know the years has passed, but I remember when they all had put that dog down. You know what I'm saying? They were, they were discrediting a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> I, 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 I was told Frisco didn't make another puppy after 95. Hmm. I was told the same yeah. thing. I, I was told the same thing, J Bo. And and, and 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 like Jack said, all these damn dogs being shipped overseas and, and they loading up the journal. Yeah, that's a foul because 
he's getting points from overseas. That's why we had to put the asterisks on the shit. You better, you, you, if you're going to a kick pin, you better take that over there. Because <laughs> he, he gets personal about that shit, though. He do. with some yeah. friends. Better not walk off with him. We might be coming back hey, to Virginia. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Go ahead. I'm, I'm a, uh, what, during the week, if I remember I'm going to give you a call. If I don't remember, before you go to the pig picking, I'm going to give you a call. I got something to talk about, okay? Just make sure you make sure we get them. Okay. Yes, sir. I got a question to ask you. Okay. I don't want to do it on, I don't want to do it on the chat because it's, it's a, uh, personal <laughs> we'll do. We, we'll do. That's for sure. Okay. I, I thought that said, look, I'm really uncomfortable, my bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, you know, I'm you know, in up day, Jay, well, people use all kinds of words. You know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. I've been called, I've been called every, everything under the sun. And when people use a slur or call me a name, I just tell them I've been called worse by better people than you. <laughs> Yeah, that's that we're trying. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a question for both of y'all. Here's a good here's another one, y'all. Let's dive in on this one here. Export to import. The dog that was exported out, right? Back in the day. What we're noticing, the dogs that are being imported back are better than the dogs now. Do, would you agree? Yeah, I definitely agree. The part about the ones that I, I had seen back then, because if you know it or not, I had a partner getting dogs from over there in the 90s. Wow. He was getting dogs, he was getting dogs from there in the 90s, and he was getting dogs from Mexico in the 90s. So I've been really seeing them dogs for a long time. And, and to be honest with you, just because he was getting them, I wasn't trying to think that they were good then. It wasn't shit. Hmm. And, 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 and now, man, every single one you want them to get, you, you get exactly what you see on the tape. I, I don't understand how they can take these same dogs, these, these same curbbred ass dogs from over here, and keep on inbreeding on that same dog. And now they get better dogs out of it. I can see they cook them, but goddamn. <laughs> well. <laughs> Back then, we're talking about you know 60s, 
moving forward, 67 back that was Monterey, Mexico, Morphine and all them, right? Rodriguez, Diaz, mm-hmm. Morales. They got most of them dogs from Texas dog man, Louisiana dog man. And then on the other side, Baja, most of them dogs came from California. So you have you have those dogs yeah, coming mostly back from, from there. And that's right by the California. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Arizona, all the uh, all the border states, basically, up to the Gulf of Mexico. That's where they got most of their dogs from. And they're gonna be the same, pretty much the same dogs, you know. They they might somebody might have got some from, you know, up north or way east or something like that, but not not too many, you know. I've seen May Day dogs in Mexico, one here and there, you know. Uh but mostly it's it's all the same stuff. Uh-huh. What, what, what about the Diego? Yeah, that's the stuff in California. I mean, Baja. Baja, California. Little yeah. Gator. What's that? You ever live with it? No, I went into it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> go, go, go ahead, my ear business is yours. <laughs> yeah. They, they crossed some of my stuff with it. It worked good. You know, I, 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 I won't hear about the other part. <laughs> One other part. When you went into it. Oh. Yeah, no, they're good dogs. Oh. They're good dogs. They, they yeah. just, uh, you know. Yeah. You're, you're not kidding, you know. You're not kidding, huh? Yeah. Well, I, I don't yeah. like to brag. I'll put it this way. Vince <laughs> <laughs> can verify this, right? He ain't never beat me. No. You know, there's people calling it, there's people calling it talking and shit. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, you ain't Brandon, you ain't Brandon, you went off tonight, you're light-skinned, 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 you're some of them top guys down there, they just they just couldn't beat me. Mm-mm. Yeah, I heard there wasn't a, the only ones that couldn't beat you. I heard they had a couple white guys that wasn't really liking your ass too at the same time. Yeah, well, you know, I say this too. You know, some of, again, not to be disrespectful, the top guys, you know, where you hear the names, whether it's Smith and Walton, Scratch and Stitch, Benny, you know, Chainsaw, L.A. Green Team. Uh, yeah, you know. It's been around the time, right. man. I heard, I heard yeah. the game of making it up time. Right. I beat all of them and didn't, didn't generally take too long. Mm-hmm. You know. And yeah, not that they didn't have, have a good dog. dog. Maybe, I, maybe I just dropped the luck of the draw and not their shitty dog, but whatever. <laughs> you know. <laughs> they found you the same thing they found me. <laughs> Yeah. Some of them guys, they wanted my blood. In fact, we beat Champion Jesse Jane, LA Dream Team Champion Jesse Jane, and with Bill, and Bill was my son's dog. So after we beat them, they wanted to buy my, my dog. I told them it's not my dog, it's my son's dog. So they went, I said, You talk to him, it's his dog. So they went and talked to him. He told him no. He told him, I don't care. You give me a million dollars. I ain't selling my dog. You know. It's just, you know. They were funny. They were funny. They both thought they were right here, so. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. They be thinking you be flattered. No, I ain't flattered. I'm not selling my dog, though. Yeah. So they offered, him, they offered him money, money, and and a pup. And he didn't want, you know. He just wouldn't do it. So, but you know, people could if they wanted to breed my dog or something like that. I had to do it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember reading your math report in the journal when I was little. Since you're going to be by ninety five years old, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Years old when he was born, he, but he is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
hey, schoolboy. <laughs> while we on the conversation, and, and J Bo's in this mood of being being wild with some shit. Tell us about Angus and Ruby. You did a show okay. on that. Give us some insight. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to, uh, what, what tripped me out is I talked to Jim Stinson because if you read the report, it's just Stinson and Steph, Stinson and Steph, Stinson and Steph, right? So, uh, Stinson and Steph, according to the report, was supposed to go into Ray Carter, right, with Angus. Angus forfeited. They didn't bring him. They brought another dog. They just called him a black dog. It's supposed to be a son of Zebo. But Ray Carter, he forfeited, and Prince on them took over the match with G. So it was Stinson and Steph going into G. That's the, that's the Chief's third match. He won in two hours and five minutes. Then they match again, Stinson and Steph into, into, uh, Crenshaw and Garrett and them, right? They brought G. They were supposed to bring Angus again. That's what they made us believe anyway. Angus didn't show up. They brought Homer. That's the famous Homer and G match, right? Mm -hmm. But after all this, when I talked to Jim Spencer, he said, I had nothing to do with that, Richard. I, 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 had nothing, you know, I don't know why they put my name on there. I had nothing to do with it. But Supernat, when that thing with Ruby happened, Supernat owned Angus. That's right. And he had bred the Ruby a couple of times. I think they bred them together two or three times. Yes, several so times. He, several Angus litters. got off the chain, went to Ruby. He bit him up. He put him back on the chain. He kept him because he figured it was, a, it was an accident. You know, he wanted to breed to her, and she wanted to fight his ass. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't fight her. Okay, right, right there, right there. That point right there. Now I, I I spoke on that when we when they were talking about calling Angus a piece of shit and he curled out and all that shit. Remember I I know Supernat, right? And I and Supernat clearly told me he had Angus on the yard, and he told me right. that he was breeding Angus to Ruby. Now we have verification coming from Schoolboy. See, I like to validate shit because I know it's going to work itself around. And it did. Right. So for all you people, who, the first thing you hear is some crazy shit and then there's no explanation. The explanation I gave you sure wasn't good enough because you still kept saying it. But here's, a, here's right. the final straw right here because it's been validated. We, we have validated it again. Right. Angus was being brave. They, 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 you know... You hear people say, well, they, that, that was the end of Angus. They, they killed him. They called him all this. He, he didn't. No, they didn't. He didn't call. He didn't call. He bred him after that. Yes, he did. You know, and, and the thing is, the people talking shit, this is what I don't like. How many of them people talking shit had a six-time winner? That beat one one-time winner, two two-time winners, two four-time winners, and a three-time winner. How many people had a dog like that, whether it was a fucking cur or a dead game dog? It's probably less than half of one percent. Yes, sir. The whole total of the history of the breed. It's true. So people like to talk shit about dogs, man. You know, when you have one like that, then then we'll, we'll hear your fucking story. It's bullshit. He didn't call him. He bred up. Now he produced a champion after that. He, 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 you know? he produced a bunch of good dogs over there on Super Nash Yard. Yeah, he did. Back he did. Just take us back to eights. Yeah. Back to eights. And he produced, right? He produced for Big Brad. He was owned by, I think. I'm pretty sure he was from California. That's what the report says because he's off of Steinberg's Heidi, which is all that math stuff, all that California blood. Yes, sir. Right. So either they had the bitch over there in Ohio or he was he was born in California. I don't know. But Big Brad owned him. Uh, after that, uh, Billy Step owned him. You know, Supernat owned him. Mm -hmm. Now, even Bobby Love in one of the reports... It was Bobby Love handling Angus when he beat Champion Freddy. Yeah. He beat Champion Freddy with Homer's brother. He was a four-time winner. He beat Champion Otis, Crenshaw's Champion Otis. Bobby Love's Tiger was a three-time winner. He beat Tiger. He beat, uh, Frank Rogan told me he seen him beat one of his first matches. I don't know if it's the first or second. He beat Walter Komisinski in less than 20 minutes. So the dog was all over the place. Several people owned him. 
They must have thought enough of him to say he's a bad son of a bitch, I'm going to use him. And then they bred him. He produced several good dogs, you know. Yeah, he was Super Nat Angus, STP's Angus. Who uh, we he, he got carried a couple of different names. Super Nat's Angus. Uh, Steps Angus. Steps and Angus. Just, when you go back and you, and you read the reports, it's different than what people talk about. It ain't, that ain't what it was. All these years we thought Jim Stinson had something to do with it. He had nothing to do with it, according to him. You know, he, he, nothing. The way so Super Nat was telling that got in there. Right. What's that? I was saying the way Super Nat told me, and I, and I honestly, I, did, I thought he was trying to tell me that the uh, the Ace was off of Angus. I mean, he was drunk and he was on that goddamn, you know, that moonshine. You know, he up in the the hills, man, and he, that moonshine right. is he on that shit. But he was yeah. trying to. I thought he was really trying to tell me that because I asked him. I'm up here. I got my bitch up here breeding the Ace. You know, and and you signed in the paper with Charlie on it, so I'm just wondering why yeah. you know it's a drunk night. And now you're telling me that, you know, you know I had Angus. No, I didn't know you had Angus Super Nat. You did, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was bringing we... Angus to Ruby when he got loose, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he got loose and, and and Ruby ate his ass up, and I came out one morning. He was over there on the front porch, huh? Yeah. 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 But see, he, he was breeding to her. He was in heat. She was in heat. She just wasn't ready to be bred. That's right. So she got it there. You know? As y'all can but, see, you know, see, there's, there it is right here. Grand Champion yeah. Angus, the Steps of Ruby. See that Super Nets right. Champion Butch? That's the one off of him? Yeah. Champion Mac? Yeah. yeah. And Butch, Butch was a was a fribble dog too, and he was like a six or seven time winner. That's right. And racehorse, you know. And don't forget racehorse. Off of Ruby. Racehorse too. Seven time winner. Off of yeah. Angus and Ruby. Yeah. So you know, if he was that bad of a dog, you know, terrible of a dog, why the hell they breed to him? That's right. He dog went off Angus, he was off of Charlie. Know? And and here's the thing too, you know. You hear people say all the time, well, you know, this, right. this male, he don't, he don't fuck with pups. He can run loose in the yard. He won't fight bitches, this and that. Well, when Angus does it, I he's a piece of shit. But shit, Grand Champion Ace, when I was there, he was walking through the yard with us. He wasn't even tied yeah. up. He was walking through the yard oh, with us yeah. when we was out there with, with yeah. he's showing, yeah. he showing up the so, door, Ace walking right through the yard. He ain't on no chain or nothing. Right. Ain't jumping on shit. Right. Sure it was. Right. So there's a lot of dog, there's a lot of dogs like that, but you put them in the box, they know the difference. Now it's go time. Yes, sir. They know the difference. They ain't stupid. You know, they don't see a challenge from a pup. They don't see a challenge running around the yard. They want to be loose. They start fucking around, they might put them on the chain. They want to be on the chain. They want to be loose. They want to be with you. That's right. So it happens all the time. They see the same thing with, uh, what's that grand champion, uh, Virgil, right? Didn't he do that? Yeah. Run loose, play with puppies and all that. Yes, okay. he did. So it, it, whatever good for the dude is good for the gap. You can't talk shit about one dog and then not about the other. There's a lot yeah, of dogs that would like that. Burger you some I heard you from the big people. Could be. Could be, but mm -hmm. that, that's that's what they say. You know, you that, that he run loose in the yard. Even G. Yeah. They said G yeah. run loose yeah. in the yard. And then dogs are insane. You know that. Yeah, crazy. But, but you know, even my big red, I could put him in a pit. When he's 10 years old, I could put him in a He screamed without nothing in front of him. He knew where to work, but he was okay as long as, you know, we were there outside with him. He wouldn't fuck with no bitches. He, you know, if the dog pulled up on him, then, yeah, he'd go. But other than that, if they were cool, he was cool. He wouldn't do shit. When he was younger, he was different. But when he got older, he just, you know. He didn't fuck with them that way. But irregardless, you put him in that box with nothing there, and so they start screaming, looking for a dog with no dog here. I used to, I used to do that with people just to show them how he acted. You know, they trip out. He's crazy. He's crazy. They ain't even a dog in front of him. He knows where to work. He's been in this motherfucker 20 times. Yeah. <laughs> from second home, they call it. Yeah. You know? So it's just, you know, sometimes we don't give dogs credit. You know, for their intelligence, 
Now, our little red brother is champion. They don't know what they're doing. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 We don't do shit. We just stand there and watch them, you know. Right, exactly. Okay, y'all. I got, I got. Yeah. Yeah, I got, I got. Uh, I have pulled up uh, Miss Wooly. I pulled up Miss Wooly. Super nice, Miss Wooly. When he right. crossed it into with Zebo, oh, no, she was off of Zebo and Tom's Spider. Yeah. Now, that's so, uh, that's Ace's mama, ain't it? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got him up here now. Okay. I tell you what, Super Nat very rarely lost. He sure did. Hardly, hardly lost, and you know everybody loses, but you go through the. And, stuff. and that don't mean every one of the shows was reported either. So, you know, Me. he could have had a bunch more that wasn't reported, but the ones that are in there, one here, one there, most of them he won. He had multiple winners. Multiple. You know. And this is this one right, here right. is Ace's Little Mate's sister. She was champion hunting. She was a full-time winner. Then you had her little mate brother was grand champion, Ace. But you, but it, look how it, look how the shit was bred. You know what I'm saying? The shit yeah. was bred. Yeah. It was bred to win. It was definitely bred to win. Tell me about the confusion. What confusion? Well, didn't you you bred the ace, right? Yeah, I bred the ace. But that's when I was when we was breeding the ace. He was telling me about the damn uh, you know, he was telling me about the the um the Angus shit. You know, he told me about Angus getting loose. He told me about, you know, you know, is, you know, is Ace really off of Charlie? And why was why would you put Charlie on Ace if he's off of Angus? Well, the reason why he told me about Angus and Ruby is because everybody was frowning over that incident. Right, right. Makes sense to me. You see what I'm saying? Why did you breed the Ace? Why did you breed the ace? Because he was a six-time winner that ate up stifles. Okay, that's, that's the same reason TJ bred to him. Okay. Because he was a six-time winner and a stifle dog. That's right. And so was Angus. And so was Angus. Guess what? Angus and so was, was Angus. And so yeah. was Angus. Yeah. And so was Ace. And yeah. so was Ace. All right. And so was the going hard dogs. All stifles. So I was wondering, you know, if it, but then you put the story together, it makes sense though, right? Yep. Because yeah, it makes sense to me. Charlie it's ain't no, you, you know. That's a genetic. That's a genetic that went a long way. That genetic stuck with our dogs. That that grand yeah. champion A shit stuck real high on our dog. And I know yeah. Angus was a back end dog because he made that very clear. You Angus got in your ass, you was through. Well, I talk about that too. You can keep them traits going almost indefinitely. You breed to the dogs that have them traits and can throw them traits. It's going to pass on. It's going to pass on. Over and over and over again. So, yeah. That's how you breed dogs. You know, the, the, fuck the pedigree. And I'm not saying the pedigree ain't important. It is. It's important when the dog proves himself. But True. as far as traits go... Again, it's just the names of the dogs changing. The trait's going to continue forward. Right. My shit, that, my, my shit that my friend has is 38 years old. It's been going 38 years old. They perform the same way. They even look the same way, even when he throws crosses in there. It, you, you can do that. 30, 30, 30 years apart, the dog looks the same, and they go to the same spot they're supposed to. Just like you like the stifle dog, I like the throat dog. Right. And you could you continue with that. So you breed the ones that do that. They're gonna throw it. If they can produce, they're gonna throw it. That's true. See, I had this, I got this picture, I got uh a uh, Tommy Spider. I just noticed that she was a brindle bitch. There you go. Hmm. Yeah. I just noticed yeah. that. So that that uh, convict spider is that the the 
He had uh, the head trick stuff? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Frank Roca had Cherry Bomb, right? Yes, sir. Two time winner. That right. Was it. Yep. From that blood, too. She, she brindled, too. So apparently, them dogs just brindle. They got Kobe in them. It's basically Kobe, you know. Yeah, because Red uh, is, yeah, what well, Red is, she was a red Brindle, but we know why, because of Ace. Right, well, so was uh, the one I just mentioned, uh, broke a cherry bomb. Yeah. That's why I call her cherry bomb, she's, she's red Brindle. So it's all old, it's old Kobe Lightner stuff, right? Yes, sir. But you know, you know I mean. You, you see lot. You see, lot to say in there, lot to say the old stuff was Kobe Lightner stuff. He just putting the same shit together, just different dog. That had to shit, like I, like I said, old Sheriff Paul, remember Tornado? Remember Tornado? Remember I told you, I said them dogs we bred? Right. Them dogs, they yeah, were. We they, talked about that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That oh. had to shit, and he uh, yeah. loved that shit. Yeah. Same pattern. Different dogs. Same pattern, same dogs. Sure the hell he is. Sure the hell he yeah. is. Yeah. The only difference is, if you don't do shit with them, it don't matter what that paper says. They ain't worth a shit. And that's, that's harsh to say, but it's the reality of it. Man, you so if, 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 if we were, if this was a market, like, 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 uh, agriculture or, or livestock, where it was your livelihood and you had to make money on it, most people going today would be broke. They wouldn't make no money because they don't have no standards. Mm-hmm. I know David Tan, <laughs> David, 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 David Tan called Supernat when he wanted to go beat Barracuda. It didn't work, but he sure did. And 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 Supernat <laughs> called and, and Supernat called Triple M. Yeah, that's, right. I'm telling you now. You, now you know Barracuda got to be a bad motherfucker. You would. Harold Mason and Supernat and David Tant. They they got together. David called Supernat. Supernat gave the dog to Harold. And then Supernat refereed the match. Right. And and that's the one that Barry, when Barry Cooter won. But it was a good show. It was a, it was a good show. It was a good yeah. show. Yeah. You know, yeah, but I think I think TJ was there. He told me basically. Exactly. That's where he saw me at. That's where he saw us at. Oh, we had a ball, right. man. We had yeah. so much yeah. fun that night. Twisted yeah. beat. Yeah. Uh, Twisted fought that night. Uh, you know, that was a hell of a night, yeah. man. Yeah. The only thing he couldn't, he tripped on. He still can't get over. It. He thought Supernat was black. All these years, he talking 20, 30 years, whatever it is, man. <laughs> and and he talked to he talked to Crossroads, right? Uh -huh. And he told him, no, he's white. No, no. So that's when I that's when I asked you. Right. I'm gonna get the ball to he, he gets swore he you know, he couldn't believe it. He still can't believe it. But he got verified different, you know, different people all these years thinking he was black and he's he was white. <laughs> well, he, he saw he was there when we did Brad. He was there. He went to his yard. I don't know how many times. Bred the ace, you know. Yeah. This shit. Yeah. How you gonna make a mistake like that? For you know? real. <laughs> and, and and if he drink, you know, Super Night gonna grab that goddamn sunshine. He gonna grab that yeah. moonshine like right off the back. I'm talking about. I took a yeah. gallon of that shit home. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, yeah. I he, that's probably yeah. why he called him black because he kept on drinking. Body came in there drinking. <laughs> Shit, I mean. Hey, and then, then check this out, Twist. So I get so some guy because I mentioned, you know, hey, and I'd like to interview Supernat, right? Mm -hmm. So this guy goes, he goes, hey, Richard, maybe maybe I'll hook you up with him. You know, I'll, I'll ask him and this and that. He sends me a picture of him, right? Mm -hmm. It's a it's a white guy, right? So he sends me the picture. I send it to TJ and I said, this is the guy that that this dude says is Supernat. So he goes, I'm going to send it to Crossroads Kennel. He sent it to Crossroads Kennel. He goes, Super Nat White, but that ain't him. And he, dude, so it's all fucked up, man. This kid is talking to him and, about dogs and all that shit. And it ain't, uh, apparently, it ain't Super Nat. So I don't know, maybe he's a mystery, man. <laughs> no, you ask me, you send me the picture, I'll tell you, because I, 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 I bring it to him. I've been in several shows with him. 
And then who is the referee of Barracuda match? You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm so, gonna send you the picture. I'm gonna send you the picture. I know what Larry Combs looked like. <laughs> I, I spent the night at his house. A weekend, matter of fact, I spent the weekend with him. Okay. Yep. I spent the weekend with him, came there, and first I went there and dropped her off. We left, and then we went back to get her, and we spent the weekend with him. And that was the whole time he's telling me about, you know, once he got the sipping, he started telling me about all kind of crazy shit. You know, and remember, he didn't have a lot of champions on his yard. Yeah. You know, he has some, you know, and like he said, and you think Supernat, look what, I'm going to tell you another thing about Supernat. If you notice, Ace never went over 40 minutes. That was his longest. He beat Rocky right. off a Jeep he and, and, his, let's, he beat, and, and he ran through him. Right. Know what he said? I just said, I, I just sent you the picture. What did he say? You know what he told me? He said, pace. They don't know how to handle the pace. You can make a killer even worse by putting a pace on him. There you go. There you go. And he and he didn't. He, and there was nowhere for him to walk. Them goddamn mountains ain't no way. You walk down them mountains, you could believe me. You ain't walking back up, cause you would get ran the fuck over. Or you had to jump off a cliff, cause that was the scariest ride you could. Man, I could never take that ride in the winter again. It was <laughs> man. You made one wrong turn and you going over a cliff. I mean, he didn't have to clean up no shit. He just threw the shit right there in the goddamn... All the dogs was lined up right along the creek. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. you send me a picture? Okay, I'm going to find him. see. Did yeah, come in? That is Supernat. That's Supernat. What's that? That's, that's Supernat. Okay. That that is Supernat. I thought I was going crazy, man. Nope, that's Supernat. So if this kid can get a hold of him to go agree to it, I'm gonna do an interview with him. Yeah. I'll ask him all that stuff, man. Right from here. I don't know if he'll do it, but you know, I just like to know. It don't mean shit to nobody but me anyway. Oh yeah, he he was so proud of us. He was mad that we lost the Tommy boy. He was mad that we lost the Tommy boy because he knew that Ace was a killer. He knew she was a killer. He was like, it's bad that you lost to Tommy. That I saw that. I saw that. And then, but he said, but he said, but that little bitch you got, boy, she sure made up for it, didn't she? Yes, she did. Because he was proud that Ace's trait was, you know, it was Ace's trait. You know, that backstop shit was Ace's trait. But I never known it. I mean, I always said to myself, Charlie wasn't a back end dog. And so I don't see what Charlie would have had a trade in him as far as that back end that was strong as it was in our dogs. Right. But Angus, I can believe that. And I think he did change it because of the incident. You know, a lot of people right. talk shit about that Ruby and Angus being on the porch. Yeah. But I, I kept on telling that. everybody, wait yeah. a minute, y'all. I mean, y'all know Supernat was breeding Angus and Ruby? Shit, I guarantee you, if you let one of the dogs that I'm, the only dog that I know I couldn't let go and and, and, and put a bar of bitches in heat and he wouldn't run over there and jump on her, would be uh, the dog we had named uh, Buck Rogers. No, right. Roger Ramjet. He, he, he didn't, he, you would have to, you know, you had to artificially disseminate his ass. Because right, he didn't right. breed the bitches whether they was in heat or not. He wanted to fight all of them. He didn't, he didn't care about, about nothing. Yeah. You know, you could be in a hot ass heat and he gonna bite you, he gonna bite your shit. You let him go up there and try to sniff it, he gonna bite the shit out of that pussy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that he was the only one. But yeah. I've had dogs get off the chain and run over there and try to get them some ass that they was breeding to a female and didn't care about no other dog on the yard. Right. So, you know, yep. and he really made that point. Like, you know, he was really making a point. The man didn't, look, before I was, look, as we was leaving Supernat Yard that morning, right, I asked him one more time. I asked him, I said, is, is Grand Champion Ace off 
of Angus. And you know what he told me? He said, twin, he ain't off of Angus. He's off of Angus' son. Okay. One of his champion, grand champion sons. I, I don't know who it was, but he said it was off a of grand champion Angus' son. Bred to Miss Wood. Okay. It wasn't Charlie. Right. That's what he told me. But he didn't tell me which one. But the, all that night when he was saying it, he was rocking in that damn rocking chair there, drinking that shit. He was he wouldn't just come out and say it. But as we was pulling out, I just said, man, hold on, cause I want to make sure because he signed my ADBA papers. And he said he's off a, he's not off a directly off of Angus, he's off of Angus son, and he's a grand champion. He said, well, you know, when people get drinking sometimes, the truth comes out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He said it was a, whoever that grand champion was off of Angus, that's who Ace's daddy is. I'd have been, I'd have been racehorse. It could have been racehorse. That's what I think it was. That's what I think it was. That's what I think it was. Yeah, that's what I think it was. Hey, I want to give a special shout out right quick to my man, Jason Dawson, coming in with the five piece. My man, my man, print his car coming through with a 20 piece. He said, can the panel talk about the breeding of Banjo to Jewel? The breeding that produced Lucky Stripes. Okay. Well, I know Lucky Stripes, personally. I am bred to Lucky Stripes. I even had a female off of Lucky Stripes. Yes, I did. Which, which one's that? The one from... Uh... Dead serious. Uh, Dead serious. Here, let me pull. Let me pull up oh, Zena. Okay. Let me see if I can pull her up right quick. She was a daughter that when they read, took my dog on my yard, they took her. But she was off of Lucky Stripes, and she was a bad little bitch. She had a hell of a future. Look at old Gina Jack. We had better to when I look when I went to court. Right, they tried to get me in. Is it Lucky Stripe? Or Lucky Strike. It's Lucky Strike. It's on the, here you go. I got it up here right here. Yeah, y'all see that, right? Going hard, Xena. And if you notice that T. Mitchell again, right? You can go to, you can go to a bunch of these damn dogs. You're going to keep on seeing that T.O. That T.O., that's my, that's my, that's my secret kennel partner. As I said, every dog that I get comes through his hands. I kept t I'm telling you, he is the Earl Tudor for growing hard kennels. Right. But there she is. Yeah. There go Lucky Stripe, and you saw she's bred, right? Look how she's bred. Lucky Stripe. Look how he what, look what he bred. Now Looney is his dog. Remember, they got him down as the breeder, right? He got me as the owner, but look. Look how Looney's bred. He bred, he bred to a, a Cunningham dog, Cunningham's bear, crossed with some bows at, bred the Lucky Stripe. You know what he was trying to get? Killers. He just swore him down and he was going to get a killer. This, yeah. this little female was a young dog. Remember, they took my dogs in 2008. They robbed, they, they hit my yard on uh, April 1st. When they took her, and see she was born, she was born in 2006 in January. They took her in 2008 and put her to sleep. They put her down. I was I was already getting ready to start looking at her during that time. That was a bad ass little dog, y'all. She was to me. She was she was rougher than goddamn Lucky Strike. I mean, the times that that dude put down uh, as far as Lucky Strikes and his wins, them is not right, y'all. I'm still trying to find out where number four went, but I saw him when he won number three. Go to a fairgrounds? Go to which one? Uh, to Lucky Strikes or my or, or yeah. Okay. Lucky Strikes. Okay. Yeah, we seen him go. I seen him win number number three. And it did not go no 
it, it went well over 30 minutes, y'all. I know they had a champion out of there, too. Yeah. Lucky Strike, yep. And he was the one, y'all, that we were trying to put Buck Rogers on. He became my buddy to keep me from doing it. How you gonna have two 40 pounders in the same same city and you we can't make that happen? You know, he, he, he became my buddy and I was definitely his second when he won his championship. And it, it believe me, it did not go no 30, it went well over 30. It damn near went an hour. And 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 they're, and they're making lucky something that he really wasn't. Now you know I don't have no reason to lie. If you're good, you're good. You see, my partner still bred to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Okay, they, but they got a couple. They, they got a couple that's not on here. Yeah, they Yeah, you talking about his, his litter mates? Yeah, I seen. Uh, I seen Martinez and Lil Wayne. Yeah, they go. Yeah, Lil Wayne is in there. He there. I seen him. I seen him. I, I met that guy a couple times. He came by K and S. But we had uh, the brother from DC, the brother Jerry Wiley, he was a Cedric Loco. He was out of this level. Cedric Loco was out of this level. I was reading that he uh, he beat a son of 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 Bob Hackman's poison. It went three hours and twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. He stopped the dog from Hackman in one fifty, and he stayed in hold till he died. And he took him off the dog at, at three twenty. They had another black one. They had a black one in this little with Empire Kills head. I seen him go once, and I seen his match. The match one, he was one time with him out of the same little. And he was just was the. Was the was the Hackman dog off of Bobby Jr. or Boomerang stuff? What was it? He, he was off of Matt Carson. Uh, the okay. dog, dog from down from the Bobby Jr. dog. I think this was off of one of the Boreal bitches that just laid all on him. And, okay. Uh, I had to find yeah. out that was getting these dogs from Bob Hackman on a daily basis. I used to watch them take the Bob Hackman dogs. And my partner had the dogs from Tech. And it went to each other every two, three days. By the time he could come back with another dog from Bob, they, they were going to each other uh, off the chain with these. But I'm talking about this straight Bob having a dog, dog straight from tank. Right. Uh, two or three times a week, Bob having a dog was tan, them dogs from tan ass up. Mm. The, the tank dog would beat the shit out of them and they'll turn, 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 growl and chop. But, but you couldn't stop them from scratching, you know? Right. I seen two of these dogs out of there. Literally, the black one died there uh, when it got cold and boys left him in the water. They had no dogs out there. He died in the cold. When I seen the local mm -hmm. dog die in the hole at 320. And he stopped with the dog from Bob in 150. Yeah, I think Lucky was game yeah. as hell because uh, that's how he won his championship, y'all. He, he out scratched the Divines. He beat the Divines that night. And they got his championship match at 23 minutes. That is a lie. Doing some damn, uh, doing some damn good dogs. Yes, it was. I don't take nothing away from him. But he didn't have the ability. He didn't have the ability to banjo hand. And, 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 and so your partner made that breathing with that with that bitch. So you think that somebody stole? Uh, they, no, they. Uh, that's when I got my case. She was one of the dogs that they took from me. He, he, he was right. That's what he was going to get good to that stuff. Because they took that same dog. I can tell you at least six, seven times when they got a match dog from just the red ball stuff too. Yep. To, 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 the, to the same dog. And then on the champion, he was a brown, he was a brown side to the Cadillac dog. Doing some bad Damn right, that, man. We started breeding that. That he, man, I'm telling you, man. My homeboy was one of the first people that started crossing that banjo shit into that red boy shit. I'm telling you. They made dogs. They made dogs rougher and 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 was bad in the banjo dog. Yes, they were. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, they were. Hey, I got a question for you. I got a question for you, uh, J Bo. This was from my man Prentice Carr with a 10-piece. Appreciate the love, Prentice. He said, which cross is better, banjo 
to Boomerang or Banjo Pat Patrick, uh, the Bushwhack Whacker. <laughs> I I seen the uh bushwhack I seen the bushwhack uh bushwhack the dog bread to uh with the buddy Sunday stuff on buying bread to a Sunday Grand Champion game. Oh, uh, I think the boot camp took Jones, that was a bad ass fucking dog. But see that boomerang bread to the River Frank stuff? Boomerang bread to a dog of the River Franks made boot camps with it. And it led him back to the River Frank bitch made for Pito. And point nine, and I seen some more out of that same little bit down to the cotton mouth dog on the biggest stuff. I I, I kind of like the carver to the carver stuff better than the patches stuff. Mm-hmm. They, they they made more of a solid bulldog. They made you no hole no hole ball type dog. You know what I mean? Right. They, they, they were some bomb storm and, and they had a little bit more mouth than the than the butcher bar stuff did. I didn't see the Rango dog with a lot of mouth. I seen the one down from Champion Penny. The Gringo dog and I hit I see the muscle headed champion white boy dog, the one down from that. Mm-hmm. That that them dog they were rough as hell, but they didn't have no real mouth, you know? Right. I kind but I liked them to the to the red bar. Rascal stuff because they made real rough ass game ass dogs. They got feet, huh? Yeah, they wasn't but the ones bred to the Jeep, but had the most Jeep in them. They, they were more lay around dogs. They wasn't as bad as those other dogs were. Well, we seen um, the dog I got up on the screen now, Bow Wow. You know, we seen him. And, you know, he broke a dog's leg on, on you know what I mean, on, on, on an opening scrap. When I say he broke it, he just bit that mug and it just snapped. And, I mean, when I say snap, y'all, y'all, y'all can hear it like it got hit by a car. Crack! Like, like a car ran into him. I mean, right off the scratch. But we put Sassy's brother on him. You know, baby and their mama, we put her little mate brother on him. Man, let me tell you something, man. I wouldn't have been breeding the Bow Wow, okay? I'm just going to tell y'all like that. I wouldn't have bred the Bow Wow because, you know, some like I said, like his stripes match, they got him going 23, and he did it was longer than 23. They got Bow Wows at one time when, you know, they building a hype on something that wasn't hype, y'all. You know, these, this dog, these dogs is right here in Tampa with me, Okay. Oh, wow. Yep, and he was right around the corner from R.E.P. So, uh, are, are, you fami- are you familiar with the Freeman show? Mm-hmm. I didn't hear what you said. You, you're familiar with the, with the Freeman stuff? The Freeman stuff? Yeah. Uh-uh. I might no, if no, I know back. what it is. Basically, most of them went back to the Freeman butcher boy, though. There was some they, 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 they was reading to the banjo shit. Them dogs, was, they was identical to the banjo dogs when, when they was in the box. They was some bad, some bad-ass dogs. Well, they have some good ones out there. I mean, I know one got stolen yeah. from my partner in Ohio, and he had a bad one. Then he, you know, these people seen it. You know how you put your dog up and then you go and want to go out there and, and, and suck up the pub because everybody want to jock on your dog? You know what I mean? Why he was up there sucking up the pub, somebody went back there and stole the dog. Damn, Bow Go back to that Bow Wow. That bring Bow Wow to a fucking uh, fire. Bow Wow to fire? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where am I at? That need to go fire. Hold on, hold on. Let me go back. Let me see. <coughs> Bow Wow to fire. See, what, what you're talking about there, twin, that's why people like the little gator stuff. Because they can kill you, they smash you, they break shit up. That's yeah. what they known for. Yep. And, and, and it, but I guess some shit, I ain't, I ain't never know this, but it, uh, so, are you saying that dog was right by y'all with a Bow Wow dog? Yeah, Bow Wow and Lucky Strike, they right here in Tampa. I had fired you for a while before, uh, she had forgotten all. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's her. I had, I had a five little little brother. Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, I mean, he, he had a hell of a mouth. He could bite like a motherfucker, but he, he didn't do yeah. shit with he didn't do shit with that mayday shit, and, you know. And, and he didn't that impress me at all, you know. And like I said, my KP he bred he he bred the lucky, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't like either one of them. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, keeping it real. They also bred fine because uh, we were champion friends. I never son of babe, and I, I didn't like none of those either. Okay. Built on hype. Built on hype. Now let me I'm gonna pull up five. Let me see. I'm gonna see what we got on five. There she goes. Because she was a killer too, though. She was a fast paced dog though, man. She was a real Man, I had that bitch man. Hey. And look at the fucking LA bars, they have their role with them they they kept telling me that. They took her back, take her back, take her back, and I took her back. And when I took her back, some of us took two bits and one four times with them that old fucking bits and so still on my eyes, do they? And she was a she was a fast paced killer too, man. She was. She was. Yeah, you're right. There's you go with the slingshot right here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had, I had one of those. No shit. Yeah, I had one of those. Other same chat. Yep. There didn't mount nothing mount in them either. Well, they got one out of him. Oh, Buckshot. It was off the chain. No, he got two off that's the chain. That's one I had. Yeah. Oh, Buckshot? Yeah, that's one I had. Uh, that's uh, one that dog. No shit. I got a picture of him right here. Look at J-Bo. He, yeah, he had this dog right here. He look good, though. Yeah, that's the word I hate. Right before, look, please don't tell me that if you ever see me about to do something. Please don't tell me you look good. You look good. <laughs> 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 yeah, you got to jinx him. You got to jinx him. Damn, I mean, how'd you let this one get away? He bred good oh, he as let shit. Himself, he, he let himself get, he let himself get away. He, What'd he do? He killed it all. He's committed suicide. He hung himself? Yeah. He killed himself, mama. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. That's a nice bred dog, too, man. And he looked good. Yeah. Okay, the boys, they, they, they had no dog house and I ain't no fucking 200 degree days. Wow. Yeah, that's my dog. That's just like my dog, too. He ain't nothing to the bitch I had. But the, the day I sold it to them, I said, we had a little trouble at, at the place, you know, we had to move all the dogs. And the dude was on me about, I, had, I made the breeding. The, the same shot to the five dog, I made that breed. Okay. So I finally let the dog. And they gave me, uh, he, he wanted to sell me this dog for $400 when he was puppies, but he gave it to me. And when he came around, I was all being on this fucking money, but I just sold the fucking guy with a all of it at the same time. <laughs> nice that cross, though, man. I mean, they was, he was bad. They was bad to battle. Well, I had, I had, we had Frank's out on the yard, so I had Frank's out bread to my bitches too, right? So I had, I had the River Blue Champion Frank's out bread to, to the Titan Out Dog. Uh huh. His little mate sister. I had his little mate sister. So I had him, I had him the Frank's out bread to Titan Out Little Mate Sister, Dave Old Whitehead. Yo, look at that. No, look at that. I had Frank's out dog to Muffin, to, to, to the Muffin Dog. Uh, I, I got you right here. I got I got you right here. J Bo uh, Whitehead. Yes, sir. Bred to that mangler dog. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see that. I see that lot blitzing. Man, I had a dog like this right here, right? I had a dog like this bred the mechanic, man. This mangler dog. 
Yeah, he, I'm going to check this dog's siblings because this dog right here was bred the mechanic and I had a little bitch off that motherfucker. That jacko bitch right there. That bitch was bred to mechanic. See what I tell y'all. I had one of these dogs, y'all. That's the one baby killed. I had one of these dogs, man. Her name was Dumb Mechanic. She was off mechanic, bred to that little jacko bitch. That's that's the one baby killed. I had one of these puppies, man, and she was a bad little bitch too, man. Trust me, y'all. She was just like this dog here, but she was buckskin. She wasn't red. She was buckskin. Look at that. I had one that the same breeding, y'all. And baby, if she got off the chain. And her and Baby was right across from each other. She got off the chain and ran over there and ran into Baby. Now, I would have thought she would have killed Baby because she was going to be a match dog. I was going to match that one. I wasn't going to match Baby, but I was going to match that one. And she was a young dog, too. I found her in the morning, laying up under the with Baby, laying, using that as a pillow. And, and that, that tells you she was game as fuck because baby was still on the chain. That little mechanic dog, she wasn't, but she was there in baby. Yeah, she was the yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She died right there. And baby didn't have no problem killing her. But you could tell she sure had a chance to run because she, she was not on no chain and wasn't no chain there to tie her up. You know what I'm saying? But I found her, I found baby laying on top of her, using her as a pillow. And when I went to go reach down and grab her, baby was like, I, I, I fought this bitch all night. You better not touch this hoe. Because she growled at me, and she ain't never growled at me before. She was like, no, I worked hard to kill this one. This one mine. And sure did. But I had one of these, y'all. And this was, this was when mechanic wasn't pit stop mechanic. It was Yankee Boy's mechanic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that yeah, was, we had a couple of mechanics here from good dogs, too. Yes, sir. They, I know that game is hell. I, I'm going to tell you, I wasn't yeah, impressed with the, I wasn't really impressed with the, the ability. And they didn't really have that mechanic body. You know, you know this mechanic yeah. was real muscular. You know, I lost some of that in, in, in that in that, that red boy cross. You know what I'm saying? Because she wasn't bulky muscle like that. But I can tell you, man, it, I don't care. The bitch was scratch. She was scratching as a puppy. I mean, she was game as hell as a puppy. You know? And I used to put her on little young dogs to start them up. And she was a okay. young dog. Go, go, go back, go back to Whitehead. Yes, sir. Some more, some more, the more I got reading, right? Okay, I'm going to go back to Whitehead. Hold on, let me see where I'm at here now. I'm in the right area, right? This should be Whitehead. Let me see. Yeah, I'm, at, I'm back, I'm back. See, but there's a formula, if you notice, y'all, to all these breedings, there's a formula to these breedings. Shit, I had a dog over this prissy bitch right here. That Morgan's prissy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go to the offspring. Is that white head off of Bangor? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's some well-bred dogs, huh? Ain't it dope. It's a, it, look at J-Ball down in there. J-Ball, that's the head, Rambo. You got a whole bunch of shit over there. You bet. Well, I see that cool buck up there. I don't see. I mean, that is champion cool buck, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, look, go to, uh, uh, which one is um, have a strawberry. Okay, tell me when my. Okay, I got it. Yep, thanks. Gotcha. Ooh, look at that hey. breed. Jabo, you breed like me, uh, man. You breed like me. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that,
And that down Rudy T V was a one time winner. Strawberry was a one time winner. Okay. She was a she was a one time winner. Hey you taking that out, schoolboy? Taking it out. Well, that's a nice little formula then, ain't it? Yeah, this bird like my dog shit. That's what I was getting ready to say, man. That this shit look like a little, look like that's some red up in there. Green like that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Y'all believe in that Jeep hilarious. shit, though. Y'all believe in that Jeep shit, didn't you? That Jeep yeah. red boy? There's certain ones, though. That was certain ones. Let's just keep it honest. Yeah, they just consistent. Yes. On their own, you know, Jeep dogs, they, they sell it dogs, but they ain't no killers. Right. But you cross you cross them with some Red Bull, you cross them with some some Rascal, you cross them with some Bully Son, you cross them with Skull, you cross them with the Jocko Red Boy, Red Boy Jocko, you know. Right. It's all different stuff, you know. Now go to her all free. Now, first of all, before I go further, y'all, for you guys that like just looking at papers and breeding shit, let me remind you that these are these are match dogs in these breedings here, okay? Now you gotta keep in mind, Strawberry. What was she? Two time winner or one time winner? What was he? What was yeah, yeah, she won. She be rather recovered. All the same night, champion, champion, smooth and made champion from uh, from Quinto. Okay, this is letting y'all know. See the formula. It, there is an end result there. You bring match dogs and good dogs, you're gonna get results. Okay, go to yeah. offspring. The last turbo, the last blitz, white hair, middle name sister. Okay, so. Which one I'm going to? Debo. I'm in so there. Go to the yeah, the offspring. Okay, I'm in the offspring. Off of the strawberry. Offspring of uh of strawberry? Yeah. Uh, who had it? The bad rules, bad boys, ball building. Yes, that's shit right there. Bad boys, ball building. Yeah, ball oh, yeah, berry. Yeah, ball berry. Okay. That one then went. Yeah, bad boys, ball berry. Yeah, it's got a chocolate and white red nose male. Female. Yeah, female. That's a ball bear. That's that ball bear bitch. Damn. I'm a soldier and strawberry. Yeah, I'm a soldier with a one time one up in there for uh. Yeah. Okay, J Bo. All right, J Bo. All right, J Bo. We hear you, man. We hear you, baby. This is what we need to see. How come? How come you didn't call me back in the day, J Bo? Right. The fuck? You didn't call me either. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> J-Bo got this shit down on the yard. We've been t t talking to J-Bo. Ain't nobody know what J-Bo had on the yard. Damn We're getting a damn good look tonight. Y'all getting a good look about J-Bo. And this is why, this is why he's the legendary J-Bo. I just wanted to, I couldn't wait to get him on my shit. We already knew. We already knew about him. Okay? Like I said, we already knew about him. He didn't tell nobody, kept it all to himself. Well, didn't nobody ask because you didn't have the right people ask. Hey, you didn't have the right people ask, and that's all that was, school boy. You know what I'm saying. That's what it was. I bred a champion bouncer to that Salbury bitch that's on that. This one here? Yeah, I bred a champion bouncer to that Salbury bitch. Okay, I'm going to see if they, they got that one in here. Uh, go, 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 go to her all spring, the ball bear bitch. Oh, ball bear? Okay, go back. Okay. I, I, yeah, I yeah go, to, go to her all spring. Okay, let me go back to ball bear. Yes, sir. I see, I see smoking, Joe. Yeah, that's what the bag was bad, boy, right now. That, okay. Yeah. Look at this big head motherfucker here. <laughs> hey, I know the plow boy. I know the plow boy. We good friends. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I go, go. I remember that. Yeah, go, go. He go to this gentleman. I, I had one of those two from out of stole mine. I think that Willie might have been on the cover of Sporting Dog Journal. Yes, baby. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, they, them, them are some real good dudes. You know, uh, he hooked up with, they hooked up with Triple M and really blew up. You know what I mean? They got some of them nigga yeah. dogs and, 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 and they start feeding them boys down through there and they was kicking ass too, y'all. Yes, they was. Yeah, see, I uh, see it got some of that. Cargo turbo buster stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, boy, the dude champion bishop. You say go to his offspring? Yeah, that's what I, I passed them on. The band was bad boy right there now. They did produce champion bishop. I think they did his literary brother than that same night. Seven years old, we went three twenty two. He lost the champion uh Oh, I put out his hand, Bill Bradshaw, uh, but you know, through that night. Everybody might have seven years old, put the time out. It went through 22. Yeah, these bad boys is pretty good, too. Look at that shit. They're making some good crosses there. I see black girl. Yeah, they got Champion girl. Smoothie. Yeah, they got yep, Champion Smoothie in here. Bridge Black Girl. Black Girl yeah, too. Can you hear that Black Girl bitch from Toy Town? And I was keeping them around by my house. Mm hmm. So, uh, one day my partner, uh, I went to clean some dog shit out of the cage. He opened the cage up. This bitch done a football move. Dug my partner, come between his legs, got away. So I had to call Ken and Ashton tell him that the adventure of two dogs got away. We couldn't catch him. Oh, he was hot. He was all over my partner. Said, but we looked for that hoe for three weeks. We seen her a couple of times. That bitch was running around with a pack of dogs. <laughs> for three weeks, bro. This bitch <laughs> Chris Quinn shot back there two dogs? Yes, sir. That bitch ran in the neighborhood for three weeks with a pack of fucking nuts. We couldn't catch that hoe. My partner one day come home, come up my house, grab that hoe, he threw it in the cage, tell him, call him. Oh, your boy tell him I got the fucking dog. He got the hoe in the middle, middle of the bus station. So he had to change that hoe in the middle of the bus terminal. The hoe went out of the bus, he had to go out of the bus to get this hoe. I called him. Gave him his bitch, you know, he, he was relieved after he got the bitch. But then called him back two days, two days later and told him that the bitch got away from him and ran the streets three months on his motherfucking ass. Chris, how tall and wanted to buy the dog back? The, the back there too? Uh-huh. He told Chris, so yeah, I think I, I sell a three, but I want the same thing that I bought it for. Of course, I told my boy, nigga, you must have lost your motherfucking mind. Slam the phone down there, sweetie. <laughs> 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 the boy, that's what you. I said, now this funny little ass dog that told all these good ass dogs. They ran around in the neighborhood. I'm talking about, she wasn't even leaving with. Mm-mm. He said, she said, Blackjack's pedigree. Yep, yeah, she yeah, surely too down, down there. there. Hey, back there, yeah. Okay. Y'all see okay. Bosco Shirley too down there. You see that, right? Uh -huh. Amber? Yeah. Look, look at the sibling. <coughs> yeah, I had one of these puppies right here. I had the litter mate. This breeding right here. But it, it, mine goes, it, it says Shirley, Shirley 2. Not just Bosco. I'm trying to take his offspring and see if they got her in here on a better one. It should say Pope Shirley dead. There she go, right there. You will definitely find me uh, in that one. Let me see. Let me see if we can find him. We, what was his name, Mike? Little Bosco? Mm -hmm. Going hard as little Bosco. Yeah, but I had. Yeah, it was a little bit burger to black that on. Huh. But we had, yeah, oh, yeah, James Pope had this dog. 
I mean, he's the one that made the breeding. To be honest, he's the one that actually made the breeding. You see that Revs, Revs James and Revs Missy? That's James Pope right there, y'all. You see the breeder is James. That's James Pope. I had a little female. No, I had the, I mean, I had the male. Talking, I had the male. You were talking about, that's the one you were talking about uh, last time we talked, James Pope. Yep. Yeah. Oh, he was okay. a character, man. He was a character. Yeah, he died, but he was a character. Because, see, look, y'all, I used to have these kind of, I had these dogs on my yard. This is what I had on the yard. This is the dogs I was getting through James Pope, y'all. Them Eli dogs. Them Eli dogs. Roscoe dogs, all that shit. That's what we started up with. That's what we started with. Before I went into, before we got Amber, these are the dogs that we had. I was with Pope when he said, man, I'm going to go breed the Bosco. I'm going to breed the Bosco. I said, yeah, okay. When you breed, you make sure I get my puppy. Yep, I had a little dog, little male named Bosco. He, he, didn't, make the, he didn't make the cut. I'm telling you, man, when you got dogs like Judo and them around, what none of them Eli dogs say. Because they sure can't take that head right and shit. You know what I'm saying? No, they couldn't handle that. Because we all didn't make the cut. He got rolled out. Hey, I got a question for you, schoolboy. From my man Prentice. Sure. My man Prentice Card. Thanks for the 10-piece, Prentice. You're on one tonight. Appreciate the love, fam. He says, schoolboy, which was better, alien or his brother bullshit? And for J-Bo, this one's right. for you. J-Bo, did you ever see Black Rivers champion Leo go? We'll start with you, schoolboy. Okay, I never saw Alien. I saw Offspring off of him. I saw Bullshit, seen him roll, and then I seen him win his second match. I like Bullshit better. You know, uh, just, not just because I seen him, but because his Offspring, to me, were better also. Okay. You know? More, more of a complete dog, kind of a workhorse type, you know. He had big ass teeth too, man. So he was smart, rough, real good dog. I could have bought it for two hundred fifty dollars after they took yeah. two dogs. They rolled him, two dogs, and the guy Tony, his owner, needed money, and he just asked everybody there, "I'll sell him for two hundred dollars." He was two and a half years old, just been rolled. Well, Steve Dunlavey bought him, and then when Dunlavey got out of the dog, that's where I got the Jeep Red Boy dog from, and he gave bullshit to Steve Hendricks. Okay. And then he sent him he sent him to Oklahoma, and uh, Joe Bill Woody matched him and matched uh, Alien both. He won his first one in 19 minutes. Then he sent him back to California. Steve matched him into Willie Poole. Willie Poole came from Oklahoma out here. And he beat Willie Poole in an hour 19. Then he beat, uh, he beat T.L. Williams, uh, Taylor in two hours and 33 minutes. And then he lost to Champion Beast in almost two hours. But he, shit, he was old. He was about eight, nine years old, man. Amber. He was old. He was a good dog. Two hundred fifty bucks. I snatched him up. I just didn't have no money on me. I just happened to be there. But uh, that, that's that's how he got him. I just wanted to point out to you guys who was watching me doing playing around here. I was trying to find. I thought I used to have him in here. My little Bosco mail in there. But yeah, that surely two shit. This is this. Look what Pope said. And you know this is Pope writing. I bred to Abernathy's Monty. You know what I mean? He's making it clear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because him and Kimsey Woods was real good friends. Yeah. Okay, j -Bo. Hey. Did you ever see Black Rivers champion Leo go? No, man. I, I used to hear them stories boss was telling me about him. I used to love him, boss stories, man. I wish I could get him on here to talk one day, man. See if I can run it down for you. But I've seen a couple of dogs down from the that Badger dog. The Captain Badger dog? 
Okay. Oh, dude, that, that, that bald head and that was some bad ass motherfucker that dog. Man, I heard you talking there about that. There you that. go. There you go. I told you I had him on yeah, there. That was, uh, See? that was Smith and Walton's badger. He was a... Oh, what, what, was he white? Yeah. No, yeah, he, he was brown and white. white. Okay, well, this is a dog with red and white. Man, man, he was bad. Yeah, but that, what, 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 wasn't that a, wasn't that a Boyle's dog? No, Black River had him. He had a uh, son of bad. Black River Kennels. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was, uh, he was off of that Reuben. Oh, okay. I was, 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 I was, was, was here, boy, I don't know how he was breathing. No, the, the, the badger dog I'm talking about was, was off of Reuben. It's that yeah. buddy. They spelled it. Yeah. 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 Do you remember his name? Oh, um, no, I ain't that boy. He had him all. Uh, we had these. We had these King Joker, one of the dogs on the black paws. We had my back when he got him. The little Joker dog looked good on the first one, but uh, he got he got a little mild with Black River. Black River got him. Yeah. He had the dog, and yeah. that was cool 15 minutes for God. Dang. Hey, yo, there you yeah, go. Mark, is, he the, is he the same one had that boiled dog, a black and white dog? Yeah, you got that great campus for Oh, okay. Hey, schoolboy, y'all, there you go. There you go, little Bosco. I did, I know I had it. He was in there some down where. There's little, this little Bosco. <laughs> Bred off of Bosco and Cheryl. Is it going hard, Kennel Bosco, Little Bosco? Yep. Yeah. Going hard, little Kennel Bosco, and then there was another one. The one that we went two hours with, man. I told you I left the dog down there too long. That was this yeah. bitch. She was off for of Shirley. That's the I red and white. She lost the Brick Kids Kennel Hussy. She beat, didn't beat the clock at 2.05. What did you do with those dogs? No, they didn't make the team. She they didn't make the team? Nope. They were they was they was game, but they didn't have no ability. I mean, the, well, I mean, we putting them on this goddamn dog. The judo was a hair riding. Then we came in there with Mikey and, and Timex in them, and them dogs was totally different. These dogs right here got bred out the yard because there wasn't enough match dogs. I always told Mike there wasn't enough winners. Uh, you know, Dusty. I mean, Pope used to get mad because we was gonna we gonna kill off his yard. We would have killed all that shit off. Remember, he was. This was Joe Red. Remember, you heard him talking about Joe Red, right? This is Joe Red, little man's sister. And we stopped him in 19 minutes. I mean, he was he swore him down. That mother was the greatest in the world. He was until he ran into us. Yeah. No shit. That's what he got mad about. That's what he got mad about. <laughs> <laughs> you run around and tell everybody. Yeah. You're not even talking about his goddamn Joe Red champion. Joe, Joe Red and all that shit. Mother. That motherfucker quit in 19 minutes on a dog that he bred and we had. We right. beat him with his own shit. Ratchet. Mm. So did. I mean, this dog right here was game as hell and she was a whole lot gamer than goddamn Joe Red. And she would have won that match. I'm as young in the game, y'all, when I had these dogs. Maybe I was putting them down too much. But maybe, I'm going to tell you what, they got to stand up to the test of time when you're dealing with a youngster don't know no better. And they couldn't stand up to it. Look like this should have crossed with them dogs. Cool, cool, boy. You had you had Comanche school? What's that? You had Comanche school? No, I seen him go. Mm -hmm. no, I had I had the early boil stuff, the more Bogio stuff, the Commander Whitehead, Bobby Junior, Dirty Mary. Remember I told you I said I had the dirty teeth in them. I had to literally make the black I like matches, them better. You know what I'm saying? I told you I had to literally make the goddamn black jack grandma. Actually grad it was a black jack mama. I gotta make sure now, cause Bosco Jr. was definitely in the same damn litter as Amber, Woods Amber. And Woods Amber should be Black Jack's mama or grand. No, it's Black Jack's mama. That's right. Yep, Pope read Black Jack's mama. Where the hell at? Look at that. See, there you go. You got the same stuff Bob has in my hand, huh? Yes, sir. 
Dan Poe had the shit. Yeah. Bro, that was the same thing that Dan Poe had. Yeah. Bro, Bread a little different, but similar. Yeah. I had the, like I said, the, the, <laughs> that stuff, and then I had a, a real uh, bitch off of, uh, Bread off of that Smokey Dog. It was off of Dutch Boy Jr. to Dirty Mary. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I had a real heavy, uh, yes, Dirty right. Mary male. I named him, uh, Blue Eye, because he had that one blue eye. He come up with that blue eye. Mm-hmm. I was one of the most of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was some decent dogs out there. They, they ain't been here a lot of, a lot of game. Well, they used to turn it right, too. They, mm-hmm. Yeah, they didn't do that. They, 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 they didn't do that, but I know a lot of them did. But look like with it, the, 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 the back calls into the Bible Ball Jr. stuff was real stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. SPP had that stuff. Uh, what, what's her name? Vaughn? I think Vaughn had that stuff too. Could, uh, down this way, uh, got some to them, got them to the ham. He got Grand yeah. Champion, Real Fun, Champion, Wonder Woman, Dee's King, King Joker, Champion King Joker. Oh, that's the two They only a couple of states over, you know. Uh, uh, I used to go, I mean, you used to get up and buy up every day. Oh, okay. And we had dogs with Richard Griffin, too. Yeah. Well, there's no some good dogs Richard had. I thought, matter of fact, I was on the phone. Richard, he told me to call him the next day. He had some fun, I never had to buy another dog again. And I called him the next day. His wife told me he had just died like a minute ago. Oh shit! But he had yeah. like some stuff here. He had some of the same stuff. Yeah, some, some, the, the same stuff right here. Yeah, maybe they had some of that stuff too. And uh, dog named Ace, two-time winner. His son Moon was a one-time winner. He he crossed it with Fat Bill stuff. Yeah, I seen yeah. Fat Bill bring to to Bonnie. I see that. I remember they had a big dog called Rumble. Back then, we were like 50 something pounds, it was over two hours. And I could never find, no, they had breed, they would breed it to the local stuff. That's the call of time stuff. Yeah, the oil. Uh, uh, um, but I see that they used to breed it to the, to the body dog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Russ, TVK, he bred Ace to that, to that stuff. I forget what it was. It, that bill is probably with Bolero in it, but mm-hmm. it's a bit of right? Yeah. I wanna know what he got out with that's the same stuff I had. I had the stuff from the rainy dog, which was also by me. We go I just pulled up I, I found out what I was doing. Okay, it was Amber Bread to Big Casey that produced Black Jack's mother. And you already know Amber and Bosco is the one that produced Amber. So, you know, he, my boy, rest in peace, James Pope. You finally got a great one, boy. You know what I mean? He left a great one but in his legacy. You know what I'm saying? I got to oh, give him yeah. that. He left a great one in his legacy. But, yeah, man, he had me out there breeding that rascal shit. I had bred to a grandson of a... Uh, I had another one, man. He was uh, damn, it, it, a... Damn. TKO. Remember I was telling you about TKO? Uh, a yeah. schoolboy? I got a picture signed by yeah. him of Roscoe when Roscoe was 11 years old. I know I got it around here, yeah. you know, so. Well, yeah, he, he had a son of Roscoe, didn't he? Yes, sir. I was bre- I bred to him. That's who okay. I was breeding to when he gave me the picture. What was the dog's name? Roscoe. You remember? Roscoe. Oh, he had Rascal, right? Well, he had yeah. Rascal, but he had a son of yeah, Rascal. That's right. You're right. Remember that yeah, good right. that good years Rascal three? Yeah. Yeah, that's who I bred to. I bred Dusty to yeah. Rascal and had Crybaby. Right, right. Yeah, Ben Tofino had a ton of that stuff, man. Yes, sir. I and had Mm hmm. And Jackie she, Sheriff, Deputy Dog. Yep. She uh, won too, but uh, she died. She died in the winter, man. Bad, bitch. bad little bitch too. She was bad as hell. And I gave Pope a puppy, and he was feeding one night and sold the damn dog. She won the same night, and he sold the dog for two hundred dollars. A one-time winner. 
You know, he had a, he had a bad like he had a bad habit, but and look, I got the Jeep, bitch, right? Chipper bread Jeep. I got it for three hundred dollars, y'all. I gave him three hundred dollars. Like <laughs> sure that, did. That 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 Bimmy Junior dog that Jago was talking about, I sold him to Rudy for three hundred bucks. He was grown already. <laughs> yeah, I gave him. Yeah. There yeah. she go. That's the little bitch right there. Yep, Rascal. That's her breeding right there. If y'all see it, y'all can see it. That's her. Bad little bitch, bad little bitch right there, y'all. I mean, when I say she was bad, she she gave me hope. And guess what? That hope got shattered. In Ohio. She won in Carolina. Yeah, she won in Carolina, too. I took it down there because that's where the dog, I, I had moved all my dogs down there because Akron had banned all the pit bulls. They're trying to make us wear green collars and have signs all over our house and shit. No, I just moved them all down in the Carolinas. And that's where she was. But that's her right there. If she was bred to dust. You see, I was, I, and people think I just had Mayday shit. No, that, was a, that was a bad little bitch, man. I, was, I bought that bitch up. And she didn't even make it through the winter. Mm. I mean, I love it. I mean, she was a bad little bitch, too. She had a little man's sister one the same day. And I gave her to Pope. And Pope sold the dog. He didn't even have the dog 48 hours. And then when he got the money, he disappeared on his family for about three days. And this was another badass dog from James Pope. Another bad dog named Ratchet. This is the dog to stop Joe Red. You see he got some shit in that and you see what he had in him. He had, you know, I mean, I had them black motherfuckers. I mean, and he was game. He didn't, I mean, he, he was game and he had a lot of mouth. But I just felt like talent-wise, talent -wise, they just didn't impress me. I'm looking at the, at the Abrahams and McNasty and them shit, right? And I'm scared to put, I wouldn't dare put these motherfuckers on them dogs. Them dogs will run through my shit. So I was like, I know I need better dogs. These dogs was okay. And I, and I blessed James Pope Hart because he this is his shit. These are his lines and these are his breedings. But them dogs got weeded out real quick when we start bringing Timex in and, and, and Lord knows when we went into that Red Boy shit and started bringing them through and Mikey and them, they, they just, Judo, Judo stopped everything that had anything to do with that line of dogs. He stopped, he stopped the North Carolina shit that we had and he stopped all it. He, he didn't stop him. He didn't stop Ratchet, but he took his head off. I mean, when I say he took his head off, he, he, he damn near took his head off with that head riding shit. The whole side of his face was messed they, up. They, they just slow or what? What was it? They, they was game. They had mouth. It's just that they couldn't handle that head riding motherfucker we was putting on them. Yeah. I mean, Judo was a head riding, and maybe we made mistakes putting Judo on them. But if you're going to be matching the dog, you got to be able to handle that kind of shit, right? Yeah. Okay, so I mean, what's the purpose of me being, you know, being shy about it? He can, if he, if if y'all can't handle judo, why would I want the shit? Yeah, you need a throat dog for them type of dog. Man, judo was he, he couldn't nobody beat that dog. Man, that dog was a head rider. He, they, we called him Kung Fu because he was he he. The dog had some ability. That's the dog. My first time matching up. Yep, I, I mean, a head dog that could walk the walls like the Matrix. Put them legs back behind his back like one of them ice skaters. You couldn't touch his legs. <laughs> I'm not bullshitting. I am dead ass serious, y'all. I'm not playing. But look how he was bred. I lost my first match. I matched him at 47, 40, what, 47 pounds, 46 pounds, y'all. His first time out, my first time matching a, a, a real, real match. You know what I'm saying? A Ohio, you know, where they, you had to, you know, everybody gave me eight weeks and all that shit, right? So I'm thinking, yeah. you know, 46, yeah, I can bring him to 46. <laughs> and, and, and end up picking him up. But he was a 35-pound match dog. 
Yes. He was 35 pounds. That's, <laughs> yes, it's, but I didn't know no better. I mean, I, you got yeah, 30. Do that. You know what I'm saying? So, I've done, I, I, I done it too. Ain't no thing. But look how he's bred. He was Molly B and Snooty. Inbred. Yeah, buddy. That's the dog that Alice Brewer gave me. And he could, he stopped right. all that Eli shit, y'all. This dog did it by himself. And he whooped one of the so-so boys two times when he got for his championship. He beat him in like 27 minutes. And we went down to Carolina. He beat another one in less than 30 minutes. Because once he shake your head off, I mean, he one of them kind of bite you under your earlobe. Like right up under the ear and right there into the jaw and just ride your ass. Legs way back there behind his back. But when all fours came down, when all fours came down it, you, it was over. When he came down on them all yeah. fours, you was still. Yeah, it's hard to get out of that one. Went to jail, came back, they stole him and Mikey. Mikey was the best to show. Mikey was the one we beat Legion of Doom with. And, and you know, and the only dogs missing when we get out of jail is Mikey and Judo. So I, I, was, at, I was at a standstill and had to start all over again. But thank God, you know, you know, I, I, when I started over, you know, I, I changed history. Because once we got that red boy, that damn, we call it a red boy. And that was Amber. We actually bought my boy, my again, my kennel partner, bought her out the box. She was losing to Champion Stormy, y'all, and she thought she was winning. She was scratching like she was winning. She was getting murked. And I told you, my man was like, man, my boy was like, man, I'll buy that bitch if you pick her up. Don't let her get killed, man. That bitch still thinks she's winning. And he said, man, you want her? Pay it off and paid her off. He picked her up. We took her home, and that's the beginning of the new going hard line of dogs. And, and she threw every, all that red shit came right off of her. Champion Wrangler, bred the Grand Champion Ace, and it's, that's where it started at. So I had a little history too, but you see what kind of dogs I was getting. Everybody thought I was just a Mayday man. Man, I was, man, there was no Mayday around when I had these dogs. James Pope was around. James Pope had a lot to do with the, my breeding, learning how to breed dogs and knowing what dogs, how dogs was bred. At his brewer, he was just promising Sheriff Paul that he was giving us some good dogs. But keep in mind, under one, me and Sheriff Paul was the one that bred those two brothers and sisters that created Tornado's line. Some black guys. <laughs> Some black guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I bet you nobody heard that part of the story with Tornado. Yeah. A sheriff and a dummy. That's what I call it. A sheriff and a dummy. It's one of the, if we had a, had a video, y'all would have been, it went viral. The way that big fat sheriff tried to hit that fence when that dog came off that thing. You know, them dogs bit. They Them Hetry dogs bite people. They was real, they was mean, both of them. The male wasn't as bad, but the female, when she was getting bred, she became aggressive. She was aggressive. So Mike was trying to pull her through the chain, chain link fence, trying to hold her head against the fence. And I don't know, he must have put that little, you know how to put the clip on there? And you're trying to pull the clip through the fence? He must have hit that clip on the fence rack. And that clip opened up, and that bitch came up off that motherfucker. You should have seen us run. I, man, let me tell you. I mean, she was a people biter. She was a people biter. She was one of them kind you see on the TV, Marlin people. That's the kind of dog she was. But she produced tornado. She's a, and she had, and not only did they produce tornado, up, up north, Sam Lambert had her. Had them dogs, man, and, and they had uh, some great-ass dogs, a seven-time winner. One of the baddest bitches they ever seen through a collar came off in that line of dogs. That's how I knew about Hetrick dogs. Because I noticed James, and, and did none of them mess with James Powell. Them dogs that he had, they would not put their shit on him. We in Carolina. We in Carolina. 
They did not fuck with them dogs. I'm telling y'all, they did not fuck with those dogs. I seen James, I seen Alice Brewer, I seen Mr. Triplett, I seen Stevenson's Big Ben, I seen Tom Garner, I seen the Robinsons down there in Jacksonville, and with nobody put their shit on them Hetrick dogs. They could keep your ass up, huh? They would not only I think they were scared to get in the box with them motherfuckers, man. Them with them kind of motherfuckers <laughs> you just throw in the box and let them go. I ain't I ain't nobody handling shit. Cause who wanna get in there with some dogs like that gonna attack you? They biting the dog and the people. Yeah. Yes. I'm telling yeah. you. Roca Craig Roca bred uh Zebo to Cherry Bomb, right? He said that was the best bell he had. That, he said, but he was a man by the man. He fucking attack your ass. So maybe he was catching it from both sides, you know? Mm-hmm. Cause that's I'm telling you that them Hetri dogs was they was people biters. And and, and when we the old yeah, man, you should have seen the way that dog grabbed that sheriff. He he was he was a big guy, so he couldn't get over that fence. Me, I came up over that fence in fear. I didn't even touch the fence. <laughs> I did. I high jumped that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I high jumped that man. Ain't nowhere in the hell. I'm too. I'm a little dude too. That dog would have choked, chewed my ass up. No, I jumped that fence, and I'm a dog trainer. You know, I don't deal with pit bulls in that bite. Mike on the. He was already on the other side of the fence, pulling the dog's head to the fence. So when that dog turned that head over, she turned her head, and next thing you know, she was off that chain. Shit, you should have seen how we cleared. That we sheriff got caught her. though. Yeah, we had to break her off. Yeah, we had to break her off his off his thigh. He she was on his thigh. He screamed, God! Man, we had to get the state and, and had to break her off his ass. Yeah, he tried to get over that fence. He got one leg over and then the other leg got snatched. And it took us a minute. He man, she got in that meat, boy. She was in there deep. And, and every time we tried to dig the stick into her mouth, she was shaking it. Yeah, yeah. Motherfucker. I would have told him, man, shit, you need to go over there and grab one of them dogs and just cut that motherfucker loose. And I guarantee you, she cut his ass loose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> man, but look, I'm going to tell y'all a story, man, about this one dude. He had a dog. Now, we stopped this dog. And we told him to kill this dog. He was off of, what was it? He was off of, was he off of Bully Son? He was off of Bully Son. And his, the dude's name was Kane. And he had his dog name was Buster Buster Brown. He was off of Low Posse's Buster. That's who he was off. He was off of Low Posse's Buster. And he called him Buster Brown. And we put blood on him. Blood stopped him in like 20 minutes. We tell him he's a cart, so you might as well kill him. No, he wanna give him more time. Okay, you wanna keep this cart. One morning, y'all, like seven o'clock in the morning. Somebody's banging on my door. I go to the door. Here this dude is at my door holding the dog in his arm. And, and, and he's carrying the dog. And the dog is locked in to his bicep. Mm -hmm. He is locked on the dude's arm in his bicep. Shaking it. And he's carrying the dog. Telling me, kicking my door, banging on my door. And I come to the door, and this down, and he's up here carrying this dog that then locked on his ass. So, see? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this motherfucker done walked a half a block carrying this motherfucker down the street to knock on my door. Get this motherfucker, man. That's what you get. I told you to kill that piece of shit. Show sure did. I'll never forget it. He was off a of low posse's buster. <laughs> so what? Uh, low five, I'll never forget that man. And he ended up having to shoot him too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, BA, we had one, the blood brother was like that too. You know, we didn't even put, the, when we put him in the box, y'all, we, we didn't climb in there. We just throw him in there and let him go. You know, don't handle your dog, just let him go. Because if, if you're, you're either going to kill him or your dog going to quit. That's how we used to do it down in Carolina. We, every time we rode him, we would throw him in the box, and we would tell him, don't go in there. We, we, need, to, we need somebody going to just throw that dog in there and just let him go. If he quit, he quit. But I ain't getting in that box with him. 
And we just throw him in there and let him go. And then nobody stop his ass until we put judo on him. We put judo <laughs> We put we put judo on him. Yeah, goddamn it. I think some of funny shit for my my kids or something. Yeah, they got passed by you walking and dog. You know, he was, you know, I trained dogs, and this was a riot dog. See, this is the kind of dog, when you go get him, you you, you go get him, there's not much training to him. You know, you I got to go in there with a bat, or I know it's got to be something strong, because you got to give him the bat to bite on, you know, to get him, you know what I'm saying, so we can get the leash on him. So you got to hit him a couple times, get him to settle down, because as soon as you walk up in front of that gate, he's going out to the gate. So I got to open the gate and get in the house. Get in the house. And I would bust him with the stick and he would run in his house. But the whole time he's in his house, now keep in mind, y'all, this, this wild water is like a 140 pound big ass rock. And he's growling. You sound like a lion inside. That. I get him. Once you get him in the house, he cool. I take him in the house one day. And I got a house full of people. I'm in the kitchen. 
trying to give him some medicine. And I got the muzzle on him, right? I'm trying to get this pill down in his mouth without taking the muzzle off. So I'm getting frustrated. He's sitting there all cool. I'm talking to him. He don't seem like there's a problem. So I said, well, maybe if I take the collar off of him, maybe he'll settle down because I keep grabbing him around the neck with the collar and he keep growling. So I take the collar off of him. And as I'm putting, the, you know, and, and as I'm trying to get the pill in, I said, well, shit, he's sounding good. I take the muzzle off. Oh. Man. <laughs> Motherfucker changed up and I come running about that kitchen. I said, Y'all, Gizmo is in the kitchen and he is loose. Man, there was like 20 people around the house. Man, I swear to God, bro, it was five seconds when they heard Gizmo loose in the house. The house was empty. <laughs> and when I say empty, I'm talking about that house got empty, me included. Man, it took us an hour to get that damn dog out the house. He went into all the doors. I, I, got, I got my big stick that I usually beat him with. I got it in the house. I can't even get to it. So we trying to get people to, okay, you, show, you act like you're going in the house. When he come out to you, I'm going to run to the back door, and I'm going to go grab my stick. Man, you see that big ass dog come around that corner? I'm mean, ain't going to. Because you go down with that motherfucker, you dead. You know what I'm saying? It took us an hour. I screamed at that dog. I was getting ready to shoot him. I ain't going to lie to you. I was getting ready to shoot him. But I had made me a pole with a rope. You know how you know the rope? You know what they use to throw the rope on the dog and put a stick on him? That's, that's what I did. I, I got me a rope and I made me a lasso through a pipe, one of them, you know, water line pipes. I made me one of them things, put the end on it, and when he came at me with the thing, I stuck it in there and put it around his head and I tightened it up. And now I got that stick stuck in his neck where now I can get him out the house. The problem was it took me four days to get his collar back on because all I could do was walk him back to his cage and just throw him in there. He was so fired up and so mean and so mad that it took me four days. And the only reason I think he calmed the fuck down is because he got hungry. Because long as he was acting like he was, man, I used to throw people, and I, I swear to God on this, y'all, tell him, like, didn't I throw people in there? I would throw people in there, man, that didn't do things, that, you know, you owe me money, and, you know, I got to go get you to get my money. I would throw them in there and lock them in the cage with him. And you could just, and he would just eat their ass up. I'm talking about, I'm telling y'all, man, I was a vicious dude, man, with this dog. And I threw about three, three or four people in there on him, man, and he did not disappoint. One dude came over, he saw, I'm back there with, 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 with my boy. I told him to come by. I said, look, if you can't pay me, at least stop and talk to me. Don't make me have to come get you. You know what I mean? So he had heard the rumors that, you know, twin throwing people in that day with that damn Rottweiler. So he came by, everything was cool, and he came to the cage, and he saw Gizmo, and he was like, man, that's what you be doing with that dog, man? That's the dog you be throwing people in there with? I said, yeah, man, I'm a cool person, but you pay me like I'm a weak-ass dude, you know, and, and act like all I ask you to do is come and talk to me, you know what I mean? If you got to run out high, I'm going to come and get your ass. You going up in there. You know, that dog saw that dog, man. He paid me right then. He came to give me an excuse. But when he seen that big ass rock come about that damn dog out, and he said, that's what you be putting in me? He came right, right in his pocket, came out there with that money. He go, man, here's your money, man. Because he came over to give me an excuse. See, man, look. Look, man, that was one of the biggest wildfires I ever had. Anybody, and look, he was, we had a, we had a big block party. And things got out of hand. Oh, yeah. Now, we've got two trained dormermans that we can control. But the crowd was so out of control. And they were like, uh-uh, we'll just go get goddamn we Gizmo. We got Gizmo. Jeez. Man, you talk about people stop fighting and start running. People was getting hit by cars. Cars was trying to oh, zip up out. Man, they was getting hit. By, people running in the moving cars. People, cars running in the people. Man, look, I had this big-ass... 50-foot leech, man, and I just cut him loose into the crowd. 
Now, damn y'all ain't fighting on my block. Everybody went, ah, hey, man. Y'all cut that big motherfucker. <laughs> if y'all seen Damien, y'all seen the movie Damien, The Omen? That's the kind of rock he was. But he was 140, and I'm talking about condition life. He wasn't no fat dog. This dog was muscled up. Came from one of the best, one of the biggest kennels in the in the country. It was called Kimball Toe Kennels up in PA. Pretty ass dog. But he was cut up. Meanest goddamn dog you ever want to see, man. He bit a two by four, bro. He bit the two by four twice and broke it. I swear on everything, man. He bit a two by four. It took two chunks. He hit the first one, he cracked it. The next one, it broke. I used to use bats. I didn't use two by fours. I used a bat because I would have to bust him. You know what I'm saying? I used to either take it and when he go to bite it, I would stick it down his throat. You know? I mean, it was always a bloody mess when it come to dealing with him. See, I didn't have to go in his cage to feed him. I would just take the water hose and spray out his shit. You know what I'm saying? Spray it out. If he needs some water, I'm spraying it to the bowl. If he needs his food, I, 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 I go in there with my stick, make him go in the house. Now, he was trained to go in the house when I came in his cage. Because if he didn't go in the house, I would beat his ass with this bat. So, <laughs> <laughs> so he learned how to go in that house when I walk in that cage, get in the house. And the whole time he in that cage, in that house, he you can hear him growl. Uh, uh, you just better not come out that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, I never went in to spray no shit. I was sprayed out with a water hose. If you needed some water, I spray it from the outside. The only time I went in there was when I had to go get his pan. And, you know, his pan, I couldn't tie it to the fence because he would snatch it off the fence. So he would always have a reason for me to go in there, but I would go in there with that bat. I mean, we used to have some help. Before he learned how to go in that doghouse, I had to break him down. I had that dog. I mean, I was I I knocked him out twice, y'all, and he still got up trying to get me. That motherfucker woke up, and you know how the person when you wake up when you dazed. <laughs> I hit that motherfucker. He fell out. That motherfucker woke up and he was dizzy and he shook his head. Man, I thought this motherfucker was Cujo. This dog acted like Cujo. He shook that shit off, man. And he was ready for round two. That motherfucker bit that damn fence. I tell you what, boy, that shit hurt, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that hurt, man. I ain't lying, boy. That shit hurt. I might have hollered. I might have hollered at that motherfucker. Boy, that shit hurt. Man, we put him on a sleeve. You know, we got body suits. You know, we have attack suits, right? I put a body sleeve, body suit on one time, man, and he bit that shit. Man, I thought he was going to break my arm. I ain't never put that body suit on with him no more. Shit. No, we didn't even play with him, man. He wasn't nothing to play with, but he was called the riot dog. And everybody knew when I said the riot, I'm coming through here with the riot dog. They knew who Gizmo was. He was one of the most popular dogs in Akron. Because everybody knew. Twin, <laughs> twin, twin throwing people in, the, you know. I mean, even the police dug up my yard, dog. Look, the house I was in, they tore it down and they never put another house there. They took the address and all away from them. They went out there and dug up the yard looking for bodies. They, because people were telling the police that we were feeding people to the dog and and, and burying their bodies in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, man. When I moved out of that house, man, and moved to Florida, because you know it was time for me to leave, y'all. The FBI told me, gave me a chance and an opportunity. And I took it. But they cut, they tore that house down to this day, y'all. To this day, that house, they have not put another house on that block. They refused to put a house on that on that on that lot. No shit. Because the spirit of Cujo is there. That's man, right. Man, the spirit of Cujo. man, I am a me let me tell you something about <laughs> twins, man. We some funny, we some wild dudes. When you hear LeBron tell y'all his story, right? LeBron has a story about his streets. You remember, he's just a kid from Akron, Ohio. Well, we all went into the Marine Corps. You know, this was in 79, 78, 79. You know, we, you know the, the rubber factories was, going, was leaving Akron. So a lot of us went into the Marine Corps. You know, the, the Army wasn't good enough. 
You know, we, we wasn't we was smart, but you know, a lot of the thugs on our that we grew up with, they just they weren't too smart to go into the Air Force. Man, Mike could have went, but you know, we was thugs with the thugs, you know what I'm saying? So we all went into the Marine Corps. Biggest mistake they ever made. Too many Akron people went to the Marines. Because a lot of us got out. And now you putting all these Marines on the streets of Akron. And this is how LeBron James was raised off the city of Akron, Ohio. He was raised off the streets. And what we used to explain to these dudes, because we gambled on everything. We gambled on everything. And we started gambling with the, you know, the kids' youth basketball teams. You know how you had those community basketball things? Well, that's that's where all that came from. You know, we, we started... We started gambling with him. You know, we west side go against the north side, north side go against the east side. You did it in football and basketball. But in the in the process of doing that, man, we we these kids started LeBron and this little team that we put together started being good. So what the drug what all the drug dealers did, you know, I got all the drug dealers together. I swear to God to this y'all. This is a true story. We got all the drug dealers together, right? And we told him, man, that we're gonna invest into our neighborhood. This is when crack was bad. I'm talking about now, now, now we got crack out here. So everybody, everybody's on crack. I mean, so it's, it's like, you know, his mama was on crack. His daddy was on crack. You know, Maverick's daddy was on crack. Everybody was on crack. But, you know, I wasn't on crack. And we got a lot of the guys that used to be high-level guys, you know, they, they started smoking. So what we did, we started telling guys to invest in your community. If you see somebody's lights getting cut off and you ride across the street poisoning the neighborhood, then they, you should be able to at least go over there and get those people's lights back on. Invest in your community. If you don't, they're going to call the police on you. They, and, and no crack house safe if you don't take care of the neighborhood. And that's how it started going. We started taking care of our neighborhood. You know, we started making, you know, guys started cleaning up their crack houses, you know, and putting little lights and flowers and shit around their house. And then you go over there and you do two houses down on one side and then go across the street and do those two houses over there. People, are, as long as you keep it calm and cool, ain't nobody going to tell on you because you're benefiting the neighborhood. And in that same instance, we started put, we had a fund, everybody was putting their money in and they started, you know, investing into the neighborhoods. And this is no bullshit. So when you hear LeBron tell you, you're going to hear LeBron tell y'all this story. And the certain people that he was talking about is these certain guys weird. To this very day, these are the same, deep, deep, like like Maverick, you heard of Maverick, Maverick Carter, right? Well, his, his daddy was one of those guys. His daddy was one of those guys. You know, how did those, how did those kids get into a Catholic school, y'all? How did those kids get into St. Vincent? And St. Vincent's a private Catholic school. You know, y'all know you heard the story about his mom. You know, she was a good girl, but she had a problem. And a lot of a lot of guys, you know, there's certain people who actually took care of these guys. You know what I'm saying? When they, you know, when the moms and them disappear, all we need is the food stamps. You can take the check, just give us the food stamps. As long as we can feed these kids, they, they, they won't be running wild in the streets. And then we started taking the community centers and using them as places for kids to be safe in there. And while everybody, you know, we, we're still drug dealers. You know, these are still drug dealers. You know what I'm saying? It's just that let's take care of the kids. The kids are suffering. You know what I'm saying, and 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 we built yeah. on that shit, bro. When we and like we said, if you stick together, if we can get these kids through school, we can have our own lawyers, we can have our own doctors. You know what I'm saying? We can have our own. Uh, our, we can, a lot of this shit, we're on ourselves. And, and and I'm gonna tell you, you know, who, uh, let me tell you, um, you know Barney Five, right? Right. Barney Five's daddy was a judge in Akron, Ohio. Yes. Barney Five Daddy was a judge in Akron, Ohio, and he was a mean-ass judge, Judge Colopy. He got mad at Mike one day over these damn dogs, pit bulls, and he, Mike tried to show him that we had 
uh, registered dogs. We had the rabies tags. We had them registered with the county. But, you know, we was pretty popular there. You know, we was, you know, some people just didn't un didn't like us because of what we were doing. And he told Mike, I, that wasn't good enough for him. Mike went and went to the Supreme Court on him. The Ohio Supreme Court, after he, he, he found him guilty, then we appealed to the Supreme Court and won. And we won. Bayless versus Ohio. Yeah, Bayless versus Ohio. And, and, and that just caught me. <laughs> Bonnie Daddy was mad as hell. He still told Mike, I don't like you. <laughs> I don't like you, and I don't give a damn what the Supreme Court said. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. That's exactly what he said, The man. Supreme Court said it was injustice that he did, and they sent it back to his court. I had to go back in front of this man. Now he's even more, more madder. I don't give a damn what the Supreme Court said. Damn what the Supreme Court said. You either gonna take this plea or you gonna get, we're gonna go to this city again. We're gonna go through the, we're gonna retry your ass again. I'm like, oh my God, what I gotta do? Yep. And so it was time for us to go, man. That's how we ended up in Tampa, Florida. Yep. They were like, Lady yeah, you, it's time for y'all to go. Y'all have done y'all job. Y'all did good, because we didn't, y'all, I no, tell you, bro. We didn't get no jail cases. Didn't no we? drug cases, nothing, nothing, because what we was doing for our community wasn't no killings. And look, we got rid of all the snitches. We took care of all the thieves. We took care of all the robberies. People was not getting their waters cut off. I mean, I mean, the, the, you got a drug problem. You know, but we was helping them. We wasn't just taking the money and going out buying big pretty cars and all that shit. We was take, teaching the kids trade. We were opening up stores. We opened up a record company. We had opened up a, a, a appliance stores all over the place, taking kids, teaching them how to fix appliances. You, you know what I'm saying? A car wash. Having the kids go out there on the car lots with this uh, deionized water. You know, putting the big out deionized system on the back of the truck and we was going out to all the damn uh, dealerships have paying the kids to go wash the cars. They didn't have to wash them off. All they had to do was wash them off because the ionized water, when it evaporates, there's nothing in it. You don't have to dry the car off. So we had, we, we it was like, that's the why the, the feds didn't fuck with us. They, they, I mean, the people was nobody telling on us. And in that process, we just built a relationship with the city, man. You know, I haven't been there in 30 something. Years. I left there in 97. And you know, everybody in that city still talks about us to this very day. You know, they tell their kids and their grandkids about the twins. Because what we created was we brought a group, a city together, you know, during a real bad time. And we built we built stars out of there. Not LeBron was not the only bad motherfucker that came out of Akron. You know, there was a several. Tell the story. Yeah, it, man. It, yes, Tell it was. Story. Yeah. And, and you, could, you could listen to his story, and you will see. When you see our jackets, you, you know, the minimum jacket I had with the joint on and stuff all on the back of it and shit like that? It, it was designed by the guy who does LeBron time. You see a Nike swipe on that shirt, on that shit? You don't see it on our shit because we don't want it on our shit. We don't need no attention. The guy that designed that shit for LeBron, and he designs, you know, he designs for them, for LeBron, and that's LeBron time is LeBron shit. But he's the CEO because he, he, it's his shit. Right. He designed that shit for us and gave it to us. And that's the shit that we're going to be selling y'all. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that's why, man. Right. And we still go home. We just don't get in no trouble. You know, they tried to convict right. us to dogs. Yeah, and they tried to convict us up there. Yeah, they tried to convict us in, in the dogs up there in Ohio. So if you don't go up there messing with no dogs. But see, if you could get the game back to just what it used to be with the camaraderie. Right, you need people to come together. And as you notice, as we move through all these pedigrees, gentlemen, you got to understand that a lot of the relationships that we have with these people was through somebody knowing somebody who put in a good word for you through this somebody 
which gave you the ability to do a lot of the breedings that we was actually doing. Yeah. Schoolboy, you did it. J-Bo. J-Bo did it. If you look at J-Bo's pedigrees, J-Bo, for those who don't, you, we've heard J-Bo a lot, but tonight you got, got a chance, chance to see, see J-Bo, who the why J-Bo's, J-Bo's a legend. Who he was and why he's a legend. Nobody, and I mean nobody, nobody ever. Back in that day, was going into Louisiana thinking you were going to be whooping up on some ass. Nobody. <laughs> Am I lying, schoolboy? You was closer than we was. You're right. Cajun right. country. I've been down there. Cajun, Cajun country. I was, was down there now. I was down there in August. And if you took a shower and walked outside, you would sweat. You yes. Sweat. I'm right. Cajun country they live, nuts. They live like, like, like just, it's normal for them. And the dogs, dogs were so, they were so tight and thin, you could see every bone on their body mm-hmm. and every bone was covered with muscle. Yep. I'm telling you. I want to give a big shout out to my boy Jay. He got to be from the Chris Eye. He said, North Hill, down to the odd corner in Brown Street, all the way down to Lover's Lane. It was going down. Going down. You yes, know sir. It. Yes, sir. They know it. Everybody know us because of this shit that we did, man. It was just, you know, I lived a very interesting life. I, I have I've had fun. Very much fun. Didn't grow up until I got sick. My boy Scratch Line knew said, twin, Apollo Beach, that lot is still vacant. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. where we had all the dogs at when we got to Florida. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, we we, we just we were wild. Yes, that lot is still vacant. That's where I had to farm. I was right across the street from lions and tigers, y'all. When I had the dogs, I was right across the street from Barman and Bailey. They, where they farm where they had all the lions and tigers and shit. And it wow. was, it, yeah, it was, man, I, I just had an interesting life, man. I mean, the dog catcher would come. They, they started fucking with me, so I put a fence up. Now nah, they mad because they wouldn't even take, they, they come to my house. We want to do a welfare check. Well, you know, okay, here's the welfare check. Okay, everybody's okay. Well, we want to come in. Well, you know what it's going to take for you to come in. Why do you always put us through this? Because you ain't got you know what it takes to come in. You go get a search warrant, you can come in. Other than that, you know, we, you're going to stand on the outside of this gate. And if I catch you calling on my fence, I got cameras pointed at their ass. If I catch you calling up, because he used to stand up on my on my fence. You know, he, he would stand up on my fence and go looking over my fence. And I caught him on the camera. I told him, do that again, I'm going to call the police. Because you ain't allowed to stand up on my fence. You ain't allowed to look over my fence. If you got to look over my fence, that's like you doing, you, you're, you're surveilling my yard without a search warrant. So if I catch you over him looking over my fence, I'm gonna call the police. I called down there to the dog catcher place and told him, "Hey, you you better tell that guy to stay off my fence, cause they're not allowed to do that. Most guys don't know that, but they cannot do right. that. You can't go to the neighbor house. If you go to the neighbor house and say, well, I want to see, can I can I go to your house? Can I come over here and see? I just want to check on these dogs next door to you. They're not allowed to do that." You can't go in somebody's house and go looking through their side window, looking all in my yard. That's against the law. You can't go to somebody else's yard because the fence is over there in their petition of the yard. You can't go over there and look over their fence and look into the yard. There's a lot of things a lot of dog men don't know. I mean, everybody's hiding their treadmills. Everybody's hiding your, your, your working equipment when you shouldn't be hiding it. You should, be, you should just keep it out there. You take care of your dogs. You know, it's not hard for them to sit there and say, hey, you, it's all right to have a treadmill. If you got tra- you got dogs on chains, your dogs need exercise, you have a right to put your dog on a treadmill. I mean, we see treadmills on TV. We see dogs on right. TV on treadmills. So why you think because you got a pit bull, you can't have a damn treadmill? No, that ain't the problem. The problem is your asses go out there and you roll these dogs you get out there and you put them back on the damn chain and you let them heal on the chain. You're asking for trouble. If you cannot roll your dog and put your dog in a box, in a garage, 
in the basement, in a crate for about 10 to 14 days to clean them up, heal them up, then put them out there. But to go out there and, and they walk in the yard, your dog got these big ass swollen legs, cut the fuck up. You going to get your shit took. And not only are they going to take your shit, they're going to say that treadmill's illegal because of those cuts on your dog's leg. And you're going to have to go to court and fight that issue. That's the part that these guys ain't getting. You're not taking care of your dogs. You, you, you're rolling them. And this is where the, this is where it really gets funny at. Because all these guys and these breeds that they're doing, right, they ain't matching shit, but they rolling shit. But you ain't taking care of shit. Do you know how to stitch a dog up? Do you know how to put staples in your dog? Can somebody help me with this? If you staple your dog up and stitch your dog up, 10 days from now, when you go to take that shit out, you don't see nothing like you would see if you left that dog untouched. Am I correct? Yeah. j -Bo? <laughs> You still with us, j Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I have a reason. Oh, okay, but you know, yeah, yeah, you got to clean your dogs up. A lot of guys are not doing that. A lot of guys are not doing that. And then you got dog shit, and if I can walk down the street and smell your damn house from the street, you're going to get a visit. You're going to get a visit. Yeah. Yeah. They know where it's coming from. They know where it's coming from. Hey, Jay Bo and, and School Boy, while I got y'all on here, we're going to be closing the show now. But one day I would like us to get together because there's enough experience in this room, this chat in this room right now that can help people with the actual aftercare of these dogs. You know, uh, we all deal with sicknesses. Yeah. We, You know, we all deal with uh, kennel accidents. So, but, you know, you get a lot of different versions of how people do certain things. But I always felt like when you got the most experienced people in one place who can give you these tips, you're going to notice that everybody going to almost have the same remedy, right? Yeah, right. And that's it, what... It, 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 it makes it hard to get now, man. Yes, yes, yes. But see, that's where that commonality comes together because... Why they trying to make it hard in some places, man? You know, there's there's people out here, man. You know, old school vets and shit like that. Just to be on. Remember, I'm back in my day now. Just keep it in my day. We still over here in, on, 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 in the in the den now. Now listen, there's vets out here that understand certain things. You spend enough money with a vet, cause my vet was a good vet. He gave me prescription drugs. He gave me IV bags. I had a, when they took the dogs out away from my house, y'all, they took three IV machines from my house. You know the IV machine you use in the hospital? I had, I had three of them. <laughs> okay? So, and, and guess what? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get found guilty of that. I got found guilty of having steroids. Two bottles of steroids is what I was found guilty of. No dog fighting charges. Just steroids. So that tells you. Get the steroids right now. Yes. Yes. It, because that's what they're gonna. But. I mean, back in my time, y'all, Dex was not no damn steroid. But dexamethasone is the word itself is a steroid. But our purpose for using it, you know, is not for the type of steroid that we use. Right. But yeah, that shit, you can't get penicillin off the counter now. You're okay. You can't. You can't. I'm not going to tell Combiotic no more. Nope. Can't get that no more. Can't get Cortez eight twenty, so we we'll Delta Cortez, none of that stuff. Nothing, nothing. But as we you can't get, have the JK word here no more. You show sure okay? Because this is a prescription now. But you know what, guys? Yeah. There's ways and means, and you know there's a way and there's a means. 
you just gotta have the right people in place to help. I remember when Babiza was out, I'll never forget high tech kennels. You know, they was getting this shit to Russia that you the FDA would not would not approve. That was getting rid of that that Babesia when it was really going rampant. High tech kennels was the one that actually had the shit coming for Russia. You wouldn't believe, guys, the dogs that I saved because of high tech giving me giving me that shit. He wouldn't open himself up to the public, but it was Ozzy Stevens that turned me on to him. And, it's, you know, high tech kennels had that grand champion grip dog. Yeah, I was getting the Belbizia medicine through him. So I had people from all over the country getting that shit from me, but I was getting it from him. And see, if yeah, I get all the day for one shot now, and they ain't saying if you think you don't get it, or don't even worry about kicking them, just give them the shot for Yep, yep, yep. And it, and it was like a three, it, I mean, it was stained, you know, it was a three, it was a three process, it was a three process step, but it literally got rid of Babesia. I mean, May to have Babesia, and he was treated for it. And look what he went on and had a good old career, you know what I'm saying? So you can't I tell me this shit wasn't working. I got a bitch that had it and she and it's been two years now. And she really ain't shit all the way back from it. Yeah. 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 She still has it. Yeah. 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 Because, but the FDA will not will not uh, approve it. See that medicine that we were getting was not approved by FDA, so you cannot get it here. It has to come from Russia or somewhere, you know, come into the country. But the, the United States don't have that medicine, and it does work. It does work because when I say I treated maybe over a hundred dogs with it, and it was a hundred dollars, uh, it was. You know, it was a hundred. He gave me a hundred dollar bag, and that hundred dollar bag would cover three dogs, three treatments. And he, I, I tell you, I, I know he it gave me about shot, 50, now. 60 dogs. 50, 60, he gave me about 56 of those things. One shot now. I mean, if you can find a one shot hit or splitter, that would work too, because it's a, it's a blood infection. But Beasley is a blood infection. And it destroys the blood cells. It literally eats the red blood cells. That's why the dogs get pale in the gums. And they never can get their blood count up. And the white blood count goes rapid. And while it's doing that, it's destroying the organs. That's why the dogs be, starts to get skinny. And when you breed to their ass, or breed a dog with it, you, your dog got it. Yeah. If you fight a dog, any blood connection is like AIDS. I used to call it doggy yeah. AIDS. Yeah. But guys, that's I how they pass it on from dog to dog. Yep. But that's how I beat it, y'all. And it was thanks to high tech kennels. The guy that had Grand Champion Grip, he had the medicine and he made it available. He didn't make it available for everybody. He made it available for me to make it available for everybody. And I saved a lot of dogs with it, guys. Not only did I save the ones, because I lost a few before that, but once I got it, I saved a lot of them. I saved my yard, then no more dogs died from Babesia. And there was not a dog that got treated that, that, that died from it or continued to have it. Now, I used to know what it was called. And if you do your research, it's a Russian product that's not uh, approved by the FDA. But it would give it to you, and you would know that name. And just it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a medicine that if you just hopefully you can get around, and then maybe we're still available. But there's a lot of things that's available. You know, guys are still getting steroids. You know, back in my time, they were getting steroids. And, you know, and I had a vet that, that would still give me medicine. You know what I mean? I had a yard of dogs, my man. and I'm trying to take care of him. He's going to give me medicine. My man Frederick Hasbard. What up, Frederick? He said he got his from South Africa. My man Doc Holliday said it's called Animec. That's it. That's it. He said Animec. He said 
Can't get rid of it, though. He was talking about the doggy age, but he said the name of the medicine was anime. Yeah, but I, I know that, that that's anime, but the one I was using had the acute on it. It, 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 had a, it started with a D, and it had the, the A-C-U-T-E. Now, that one right there, it, it, it literally gets rid of it all. The one that you're talking about, the dog still has, the, 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 has it, but it won't kill your dog. But it don't cure it. The medicine I used was curing it. You know, that anime, it, it doesn't cure the dog. It, it, it doesn't, your dog won't die from it. You know what I'm saying? But he'll still have a BZ in his system. Right. You know what I'm saying? No, the shit that I was using, no, it got rid of the Babesia altogether. Hey y'all, it's hey, hey man. I know we didn't, you know, we didn't hung out till one o'clock, y'all. We just just really hung out tonight. I'm so sorry, <laughs> y'all. I got the we got the bullshit in. Hey man, it's been a pleasure. Schoolboy, thank you for keeping keep standing up with me. J Bo. Hey. J Bo, I just introduced you to the world. Everybody got you on the show, but guess what? They have really got a chance to find out why you're a legend. You know what I'm saying? Now you know why I call you a legend. Now you know why I call you a legend. Okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna remember this you do. Well, uh, well, guess what? That's because to be a legend, my friend, to be a legend is not self-proclaimed. And I understand that. You know, you're not self-proclaiming yourself anything. But through your accomplishments and you have proven to us tonight, you know, better than you have improved it to, to show Everybody out here, since you've been, everybody love you on the show. But tonight, they got a chance to see why j Bo is so knowledgeable. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? And it's been a pleasure. Yes, and guess what? When you talk, guess what? We listen, don't we? When schoolboy talk, we listen. And we, heard, we listen, and we hear a lot. We saw a lot. I got a chance to pull up pedigrees. Hey, hey schoolboy, you know, now one time that we pull up none of your shit, we were so stuck on J Bo, you know, but that's not, we, 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 you know, we got other days. Right. We, we was too busy. We've we done it before. Yes, sir. I wanted to hear J Bo's story. I'm glad, I'm glad you gave the opportunity to be in the, in the, on the panel with him. Much respect to J Bo. And uh, thanks for having me on again, guys. And uh, much respect to the chat. Y'all keep bulldogging, man. Yes, and thanks y'all for hanging out here with us tonight, y'all. We, we, I'm just gonna let y'all know, y'all. We're gonna, we gonna make it a short one, so we're gonna get, make it a quick buy because it's one o'clock and we all old men. So I'm gonna say thank you again, guys. We gotta do this again. You know what I'm saying? J Bo, don't be no stranger. Yeah. Please, J Bo. All you gotta do is tell me you, 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 you enjoyed the night and you will be. Let, let us know that you'll be back, man. You are always a welcome uh, guest. Anytime you call, anytime you call, I enjoy it. I had the professor. I had the professor and J Bo on on the show. Okay, y'all got the I, I, look. It ain't no competition thing, y'all. Okay, but this is what you call a triple play. This is what you call a three call Molly. You cannot beat a hand like that. I'm just letting y'all know. Okay, <laughs> don't get mad because I'm not trying to rub it in your face. But I was trying to help y'all. That's all. I'm giving to the game. I gave you some some of the the best tonight. And you heard the best. So for now, guys, now when y'all see J-Bo and y'all see what he was doing, all you got to do, if you didn't understand, just rewind and hit play again. And just keep doing that until you get it down pat. Because what you don't get, you will miss. And you will miss a lot. And I thank you again, J-Bo. I really do. Big brother. You already know what's up with you, schoolboy. You you know, I, you, you like my daddy, man. So you already know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jay bo he going to be my uncle. Uncle Jay. What's up, Uncle Jay? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, I, okay, y'all. Y'all take care, guys. We'll, we'll talk to you, and I'll call you during the week. Yes, sir. Can y'all shout out to y'all? Hey, 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 can y'all say right. bye to the crowd for me, y'all, before y'all leave? Please, Steve, y'all shout out your final words, and we'll shut her down. Jabo, go All ahead, right. sign up, big bro. Yeah, I, I, I ain't gonna do nothing until I see you crash the wheel. Okay, mm -hmm. hold on, wait a minute, Tim. All right, for everybody who's still sticking around, hanging out with us tonight, 
Y'all know I got J-Bo the schoolboy up in here. What a night. Come on now. I need to get them goddamn thumbs up, thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Muscles. 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 No, 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 no. I need pages of them. I mean pages. I'd be able to see a bunch of pages. Y'all ain't never seen no shit like this out here. So I'd be able to see a whole bunch of roses. Roses. I we need them damn roses. And by the way, don't you ever forget this. Don't you ever forget this. A three-card panel. We always, always. Scratch the wind. Yo, best, you, you hear what he said? Yo, better act like y'all heard that. Y'all hear that shit? Y'all heard that shit. Don't hate on it. Don't, don't hate talk it. about it. Be, Be about, about it. it. Hit him with it, J Bo. <laughs> you got your scratch the wind, baby. Scratch <laughs> the wind. That's it. You got it, big boss. Big shout out to the Shark Tank and everybody who hung out. Appreciate the love. Dog of the night, y'all. I'm going after it. Jaybo, what's the dog of the night, Jaybo? Which one you want me to pull out, bro? I need a dog of the night. Don't worry, I'll find her. Who cares? All right, brother. We'll talk soon. You gotta take care. All right. Okay, thank boy. you, Zuboy. Take care, bye. Uh-huh. Okay, which one, Jaybo? Boot camps click cotton mouth. Boot camps click cotton mouth. Um, oh, yeah. can't click. Okay, that's it right there. They got cotton mouth. Okay, there she is. Okay, brother. Mm -hmm. Yes, she is. Dog of the night, fellas. This is going to be the dog of the night here. Boot camp clicks, cotton mouth. Register merit. Man, look at that breed, man. That's a nice ass bread, too. Hey, guys, dog of the night, y'all. We'll see y'all. Hopefully, we'll see y'all live Friday. We don't know. We're going to be on the road heading up there to that Carolina thing. So, we're we, 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 we going to be planning by here. So, but we're going to try to have it live so guys enjoy the show. So, hopefully, we'll be able to pull it off. We might even do a special day on Saturday to stop in. You know, while we're up there, we might do a live show a little bit on Saturday as well. So, guys, Stay tuned in. You'll know by Friday. Y'all stay safe. Don't forget. Don't talk about it. Be, Be about, about it. it. Peace. Peace. Oh, man. You go ahead and pump it up, Mike. I know you. You just a little late, man. We just had some. I like this cotton mouth, though, man. I'm telling you, man. Appreciate everybody who helped out with the super chat tonight and all that other good stuff. You know. Yeah, we still had 97 people in the goddamn room. Yeah. At one o'clock in the morning, y'all are yeah. soldiers. That makes a thousand views too. Oh shit, no shit. Yeah. Oh shit. That's just oh, no man. No shit. <laughs> Whoa. That was a great 
show, man. I told you I was ready for J-Bo. I knew that. You got I got legendary J Bo in the house on top of a schoolboy. I, I knew that was gonna be something special. Big shout out to the Shark Tank. Ready to go, fellas. Great step up and be up. Big shout out to all the body on the back street hanging out. Appreciate everybody who participated in the poll. For 243 votes. 243 votes. We don't need the results, Mo. Wow, 243. It says, is it safe to say some American pit bull breeds that were exported are coming back better than they left the U.S.? 41% said yes. 36% said they don't know. 23% said no. Here's my opinion. They love good. And the ones that are being imported back are better than they are now. You know what I'm saying? They're better than the dogs that you have now. Because you're not testing dogs like they are over there. You see, they're still having dogs. They're, they're sending back over here. They're sending match dogs. They're sending, they're doing a lot more checking and a lot more competition compared to what we're doing over here. So you can expect those numbers to be different because a lot of import dogs over there where laws are not cramping their style, where they're still being able to match their dogs and, and, and breed their dogs and actually learn by way of what we have given them years ago. They have man, have made it better for the now because you guys aren't in, y'all don't have those kind of capabilities. You're not, you're not in that position. So I, I wouldn't want to know, you know, because the dogs coming in are better than the dogs that you have now. On the now, not better than the dogs back then. They're better than the dogs that we have now. I do believe that. And if I remember correctly, I think uh, Schoolboy and j both said the same. No. I said better than the dogs. That's, yeah, they're showing them now. The dogs that left were great dogs. They got over there, and through all the years, they've been able to maintain that. Why? Because they're still matching dogs. Right. And they came back better. They came back be not better than the dog back then, because they were already they, good. They come back better than, than the dogs that we have. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. over the years, they have kept those dogs. Right. And they just kept breeding those dogs, and now they're like the Eli dogs are coming back now. But they're not better than the dogs back then, right? No, but they're better than the dogs we have now. now. Yeah, that's yeah. because they're coming back into the now, and they yeah. are better. Definitely better. Yeah. yeah. That's the point. They are better. But when you read it, it's, it's like, you know, are they coming back better than they left? Well, the Eli dogs did. Because they, they, they've been over there all the years, and so now that they're coming back through here, they are better than the ones that we got here right now. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yeah, that would be on that, yeah. Yeah, because they are better. Mm -hmm. But then, like you said, if they pull up, and you need to go into that and show them, because they are actually doing the dogs. We don't know half the champions in No, we gotta go way back to know what they are, but we know that the match dog, right? And it's coming forward, you know, you know. And I think somebody made a comment about the best Mayday dog out here. I and mean, I don't know who you know about Green Bean. Right. But I mean, he was he was a grand he was grand champion yellow man though. Yes, Green Bean is also yellow man. Mm -hmm. I would think that would be the baddest motherfucking melee dog still around. Yeah, green being, I mean, a yellow dog, he would be a melee dog because they don't think how melee is. Right, right. He would be a yellow dog. Mm -hmm. uh, that's melee dog? That would be, dude, that's a tough one. 
because when you say mayday, you know that no. To be a good, good mayday dog, you have to be just as good as the mayday dogs there was in the past. And, you know, and those dogs racked up numbers. You know, so you got to, if there was a real mayday dog out there racking up the numbers that those mayday dogs rack up, you would know about it. It, it wouldn't be an argument. You know what I mean? It wouldn't even be an argument. It's not enough of them out there to really stipulate who has the best mayday dog. You know what I mean? It's got so many other mixtures to it. You know? Bro, I like the way they would, they would bring that red boy and that beef shit back then. Yeah, I mean, what I saw Jay Boy and them doing, man, that was better like a movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They did it in a different way, but it was shit. I've seen Zebo. I've seen uh, a whole bunch of Red Boy, and I've seen a whole bunch of goddamn shit in that shit. Yeah, they, 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 they were sleeping on Jay Oh, yeah, they were sleeping on Jay But you know you were saying, like, they were sleeping on Jay Bow. I told you, I told you, yeah. They gotta understand yeah, what is so important Jay-Bow about that Cajun cut. They really you need to go here and get Jay Bow here and start showing his shit so they need to know who the hell Jay Bow really is. There's a reason why you don't fuck around in that Cajun cut. That's right. Yeah, and I showed him tonight. Yeah, I'm right. And a lot of people knew them dogs. They yeah. just didn't associate. Hell yeah. They just started associating Jay Bow to those dogs. Talk about him, but then he has every right to talk about him. I mean, look at look at look at him with schoolboy. Oh, schoolboy, schoolboy hands down. He's a professor. Right, that's a professor. But nobody, you know, I I just always put schoolboy on that level. Me too. And he really, you know. Everybody knows J Bo in the Cajun country. Everybody knows J Bo in the Cajun country. Everybody. Everybody knows J Bo. Like I said, you know, that, that's how I be looking at J Bo like another professor because y'all don't think, you know, real dog man knows there's nobody fucking around in the Cajun country. You really thought you had some shit and the only time you just took your ass down to me. That's right. Yeah, that's for real. You better have some badass shit. You better have some badass shit and you're gonna mess around out in that area or your ass is just gonna be. Sit home to change in the hand. Yeah, that's what we yeah. mm-hmm. Good show, man. I didn't know where nowhere close to that lady. God damn it. Two hundred and forty-three boats. That's a lot. Big Rob hang around down in there, man. You know, that's a bad motherfucker there. You know, to be 
had to survive down that bitch. And he, he got his ass with more than he was getting his ass with up, in, up, in, up in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, man. Play with the big boys, you gotta get with them. You gotta get with them, so you know, that, that was Cajun country back then, and that, that's, that's, that says a lot. That says a lot of value. I mean, that sense of peace. Like you said, damn, I mean, damn. We should have been down in that motherfucker trying to breathe. <laughs> For real, you gotta even breathe that shit. You heard what school boy said. Damn, man, whatever happened to us? You should have been breathing. I mean, you right over there where you at. Good show, man. I had a chance to give James Pope some props. Well, we always gave him props. He was just a funny guy. Yeah. They take away from where he was as a dog, man. You know what I'm saying? I just think he's gonna pick a better dog than Joe Ray. <laughs> yeah. The ride. Right, he's gonna be, you said stuff for sure. Right. <laughs> right.
like to give a big shout out to everybody who showed up, showed out. Definitely had the triple crown in the, in the house tonight. Definitely had the triple crown in the house tonight. Big shout out to my man, Mr. Richard Garcia, AKA Schoolboy, the professor. And my man, the legendary j representing hard. I, you know, and it, it's such a pleasure to have j you know, on the show tonight. Because I, I follow j from way, way back. And, you know, kind of knew about him. Heard a lot about him because I got family down there in Louisiana. You know, and then being in the game, you know, people just didn't fuck around. Caves in country and always wanted to know why. You know, but if you lived in the Cajun country, down in that New Orleans area, you don't know who j was. And I just thought people out here, you know, you heard the man speaking, but you really didn't know who the man really was. And we just had the opportunity to bring him on and just give you a deeper look into who the hell j was. And you got to admit, man. You'll understand why you didn't fuck around down there in Cajun country. He was one of them legends down there that he speaks still highly of to this day. So, me, I, I, I'm overlaid, you know, and, and blessed to just have him on the show and give us a chance to take him back down, you know, history lane to show you why we call him. The legendary, representing Cajun country, New Orleans, Louisiana. My man, legendary J Bo, hanging out with the legendary professor, hanging out with Going Hard Kennels Reloaded talk show. This is one for the book, fellas. I'm gonna just put it out there. Big special shout out to the Shark Tank for representing tonight. I seen the lights was up. Good kind of uh, conversation, you know. Another big shout out to my homie, Big Bruh. You know I'm older than him. I always call him Big Bruh because you know he represents my other big brothers. You know over seven eight sports. So in this game right here, we call it the internet world. Then my big brothers because they introduced me to this on how to do this. And they always represent with me, and I'm always gonna give them the respect they do. That's why I'm giving out my big shout out to my big bruh. Walking down Ram, big stepping. My brother for stepping in. Sharing a little bit of our past together. Cause it was always funny to me when I thought I knew who he was until I really got in the, you know, I know who you really are type of situation. And we laugh about it because, you know, we was young and in a different world back then, having fun, kicking it with each other. And I know we run back into each other all these many years later. You know, it's just a small world. But, you know, that's what it means for me to be blessed by and being having an opportunity to be around good people. You know? And that's just spreading the love. You know, just spreading the love. You know, you never know what your future is until you live the past. So... Good show tonight. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Still trying to figure out what we're going to be doing for Friday night. We'll figure something out here. But for Saturday, you know, for all those who are going to try to make it to the pig picking, I'm looking forward to seeing in everybody who makes it down that way. And I just look forward to meeting a whole bunch of you guys face to face, taking a bunch of pictures, making a memorable moment for us. And again, you know, you're not always promised tomorrow. So you got to live your every day like it's your last week. You know what I'm saying? I've always did that anyway. That's probably why we have so much fun in life. But, you know, it's just a blessing to have a show like this. It's in the record books now. It's going to be out there for as long is YouTube exists if you don't have it. This is one that I think you should download because one day, 20 years from now, you can always pull it up and say I, w- I was in there when they did that show. You know? Who knows? But it's 
good to have it. So at the end of the day, it's not a weekend day. I'm going to close this sucker down. You know I'm going to rock out with you. But I'm going to show my appreciation. You know the little ticker that runs across the bottom of the screen. That's the information for our cash app. Again, we appreciate any, anything that you had to give. I wouldn't give a damn for with 99 cents. It's always going to be appreciated. You know, show the love. You know, I think we can still do super chats. Even after the show's over, you hit the little heart button if you still want to donate something and help a cause because we really are trying to get out of here. It's Friday, you know, it's already in the making. You know what I mean? But again, I was trying to get some merchandise to bring with us, so baby, the handout with a couple of the fellas, you know, timing is a little pushed up on me, so we're going to do the best we can, but appreciate everybody who helps the cause again. Not a matter of how much you give, it's just the fact that you give. How can you not be appreciated for you doing something? Much love for everybody for showing up, showing out. For all you new viewers who come in, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And for those who want to sit back and just watch the show, don't forget to hit that like button. Again, it don't cost you nothing. So, until Friday, everybody stay safe. And you know, I can use it. Let me rock out with you. Yeah.
Appreciate everybody for showing up. Enjoy the rest of your week. I'm out. Peace. Deuces.